got the chat on there now? Yeah, well, we have it up there. This is the second time we've kept it up there, and it's kind of distracting. We're going to see how it works. If it gets too distracting, we'll take it back down. But okay. um, it does – it can make for fun. Yeah, for sure. Like in here, but I don't know how it sounds like on an actual podcast, like if you're a listener. Like Are we uh, on right now? No, not yet. Okay. Are you yeah, I just I over just live? It, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I guess right. we're on right now. Hey, everyone. <laughs> Hello. Everybody's mic's in. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we're good. All right. Nick, thank you for coming, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, dude. It's awesome. Uh, got on an airplane to come do a podcast. Yeah. Um, so uh, my schedule is pretty, pretty busy right yeah. now. So I um, mean, it's gonna be right busy. Just move it towards like you can take it, move the mic around. Okay. Kind of like Mike's doing, you know. Yeah. Do a little Axel Rose just fucking as I move. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like the leasing or a corn. You can just take it wherever you want. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So my my schedule's super busy. So um, I had vacation this week. So. Mm-hmm. Figured if it lined up, you know, I just Perfect. got the books. So, well, these are supposed to come in like February, right? <clears throat> yeah, so I obviously hadn't written a book before, yeah. So, um, the writing part was probably the easiest. Um, cool. yeah, dealing with everything else, all of the finding a publisher, finding a you know, someone to edit it, um, is so difficult, For especially real. so like. You're a painter. You have someone, um, let's say you have a pinstriper. You say you don't pinstripe. You have a pinstriper come in and like, oh, yeah, hey, I painted houses. Um, like, I'm sure I could do this. And then they go, yeah. to, go to do it, and it comes out just different, different mm-hmm. languages, right? <clears throat> so the person editing, there's no one in the FXRs that does fucking book editing. Yeah. Right? <laughs> they don't know the lingo. Yeah. They don't know, you know, all of the, you know, 99 down, 2,000 up. Like, they're yeah. correcting all this stuff to where it doesn't really make sense to the people in the community. Yeah. <clears throat> so that was a real challenge. Um, and then the other one was um, finding a, you know, a printer in the United States because mm-hmm. that was really, like, one of the things for me. I, like, all the stuff that I, that I do, I really want it to be, like, the best. Oh, um, yeah, definitely. And so, you know, I got a lot of quotes, samples from different printers with books that just it didn't feel good. You know, when you're holding that in yeah. your hand, you feel This like is definitely you're coffee table worthy. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, you, f- you feel like you're holding something almost regal, right? So Yeah. Um, the initial kind of concept was going to be, um, it had a different name, and yeah. it was kind of religious, um, so I wanted to look, look like oh, that. Oh, more like biblical kind yeah. of thing? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so then s- another book came out, took that name so that's how the bizarre book of fxrs came about i think it works it's fitting because like i said the fxr bizarre instagram page like that coming along really kind of yeah thanks man (laughs) i guess he's responsible for that he's got this this i can't i can't grinch like grin is it yeah (laughs) i remember all right i remember all right i mean you chose it well but we threw out a lot of names yeah Yeah. (laughs) but just when it came along it was just like uh you know it was kind of like that separation from the you know the Dyna and FXR because everything uh, leading up to that point was like FXR Dyna, Dyna FXR performance FXR Dyna. You know what I mean? It totally. was always, and you know not all the parts are crossing <laughs> over, not all the products are crossing over, and the people don't cross over in For some sure. aspects. Yeah, so. and I feel like um, the separation really did good things, um, but it also kind of like divided the whole like community. Mm-hmm. Um, if it were FXR and Dyna, right? Because you have yeah. less numbers, stuff like that for shows or whatever. But um, I do think that, like, the FXR people are way different. <clears throat> oh, yeah, for sure. And um, there, there's so much – there's such a broader spectrum of people from in the FXR community. I mean, like, last year's East Coast Jam, you know, just sliding through there, it's like, God damn, like, there's, like, this dude, like, he's about to die. Oh, totally. He's that old, you know what I mean? Yep. But then he's also ripping an FXR, so power to him. Yeah, and he'll pass you yeah exactly so there's like these this, well, this wide that. range yeah. <laughs> you know um, yeah so uh, i feel like they um the fxrs definitely needed like their own kind of like community niche and if i mean i when i started the page like i felt like that could be the catalyst <clears throat> and i just kept running with it um i was um i think i explained it on the last podcast but yeah how the book kind of came about is i was doing all this research anyway had a bunch of information on either Facebook pages or like old forums that just wasn't correct or yeah yeah you know 
contradicting to this other page. And then this guy says this, this guy says this. And so, um, uh, you know, this guy says that, you know, he's had his bike, he bought it brand new, and the guy told him that there was only four made. Well, it turns out there was 130 made or whatever, mm -hmm. but that was probably a sales pitch to get the guy to buy a bike. Buy it, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and so um, I feel like, or I felt like I really wanted to get to the bottom of those those questions, you know, you urban know. legends and yeah. shit like that. Yeah. And so that's when I started doing all the research. And then once I started it, I even, I think I remember telling Mike first, I'm like, dude, I'm doing all this work. I'm just going to write a book, you know, mm -hmm. like if it's a shitty little binder, like then yeah. it'll be a shitty yeah. little binder. Um, and then the more and more that I got into it, I just, I just kept my head down. And like, once I got an answer, I wouldn't just stick to that answer. Yeah. yeah. I would dig even deeper and be like, okay, well, why that answer? And why that answer for this year, but not this year or this model, yeah. you know, not this model. So, so there's so. lots of, it seems like the, you know, in the back you have a lot more statistics, or not statistics, more, uh, you know, like the codes and the color codes and, and the years they came on and how many units and blah, blah, blah. But then in the front it seems like you have more stories or what would you call it? Is it more just information <laughs> about like the paint and decals? And yeah, so um, essentially how this works is it's um, the first section is the history, right? So okay. um, that's kind of the story on how the FXR came about. Um, and then... And you said you got to sit down or you talked with... Uh, with um, all the engineers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, everyone that I could find. Um, Which is just about everyone. Just about everyone, yeah. Bill Brown, I, Bill Brown I couldn't find just because on Google searches, like there's a million... Bill Brown's apparently, yeah. you know, um, but um, there's a guy in the community. I'm not sure what he does, but s I put out a LinkedIn thing saying like I needed help finding someone on LinkedIn to mm -hmm. connect with them, and I didn't have like a corporate account or whatever it yeah. was. And this guy hit me, hit me up. Hey, what do you, what do you need? And I mm -hmm. told him I was like, hey, I need this guy's phone number or contact information, any way I can get a hold of him. And he's like, sure send him the, any information that I had. Mm -hmm. He's like, here's his address, uh, last three phone numbers, you know, like all this information. Called it, cold calling these guys, mm -hmm. you know, that are like 70 years old now. And like to talk to you about your <laughs> extended warranty. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, and they're all yeah. they're all like landlines because that's yeah. what, you know, comes up and on. you're con. Okay, can I talk to you about a project you worked on 40 years ago? Yeah. Yeah, so it sounds sketchy. Like. I mean, this was, th this was going on for like a year and a half or something. He's just calling yeah. all these random people trying to get a hold, calling this guy to get a hold of that guy to yeah. get a hold of that guy because he might have this engineer's number. Totally. <laughs> mm. Yeah, and it was like that. Like to understand the amount of work that went into it's getting It's like so many done. people do that same kind of thing to find a rare part for like an old restoration project or oh, some shit sure. like that, you yep. know, or but to do it to just literally find the person to get the official narrative basically. Like yeah. that's, that's interesting, <clears throat> man. Yeah. And so then it almost felt like um, – you know, some kind of like mystery movie, right? You find a little piece of information and this guy says that, oh, this guy was actually, I remember him because I was friends with him, you know, him and him and his wife and me and my wife, they went, we went to dinner, like that was, you know, however many years ago, but his name was, and then, so then I hit that dude up again, yeah. the same guy that helped me out before. Hey, I have this. I think that he lived in Milwaukee, mm -hmm. around Milwaukee. He gave me a phone number, hit him up, like, you know, and once I'm calling these guys, it's not like, um, it's not like, hey, um, I have a couple of questions on the FXR, right? And then, well, what the fuck? Who are you, number one? Yeah. And then number two, why should I talk to you, right? Yeah, yeah. And so you could really hear, and I think that this is pretty um, cool to be, to like put yourself back in that time, Yeah. Um, is that those guys, you could hear it in their voice that they lit up, mm. right? <clears throat> so... Back then, they were working on skeleton crews. You know, there wasn't a bunch of people, yeah. um, you know, help and, like, big funded projects and shit like that. It was literally, you know, a team of maybe five or six that, hey, guys, here's your project. This is what you need to do. Get it done. Report back. Whatever. How and much of the conversation was, like, revealing of that whole time of the transition from AMF back into yes. the hands of Harley Davidson? Um, so one of the guys, um, it's, it's in the book, but... Um, he said that one of the key things was instead of being like, oh, you guys are on the um, on the FXR project, right? Yeah. 
Von Beals, um, who which was which was the um, the president once Harley came back from mm-hmm. AMF, he came in and everyone spoke super highly of him. Like that guy was the best leader mm. that they could That's have cool. had. And they said we're changing <coughs> changing the project to FXR team. Everyone is on teams now, mm-hmm. and for whatever reason, in people's mentality, I don't know if it was like some kind of like you know, like Salesforce now or whatever, yeah. but like some kind of gimmick to get people motivated. But everyone was super prideful in, in their job oh, and what cool. they were doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And working together instead of like, oh, hey, I got my work done. Like, I'm going to be over here chilling while you get your work done. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's like they finished their shit and they went and helped out other hey, people. Hey, what are you working on? Yeah, let me yeah. help you. Or yeah. like, hey, I think this would be cool. Mm-hmm. Like, it was very collaborative from mm-hmm. what I've gathered. So, um, but yeah, talking to those guys was awesome, dude. And like hearing... You know, at first, hey, what's up, man? I want to talk to you about the FXR. They're like, yeah, I don't, like, yeah, it was, who are you? Yeah. So I start giving some information that I know, and then even um, dropping names of, like, hey, I talked to yeah. so-and-so. Oh, how's he doing? You know, like. Yeah, yeah. And they're getting Familiarize them. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also show them that I'm, like, putting in the work and actually, like, somebody doing something mm. um, or, you know, going back and calling out dates, you know, that I have all in my notebook. Of, yeah, yeah. Of events and stuff like that. So um, it was it was definitely one of those, like, it's le- it felt like a movie mm. being, finding out this information, then taking it, going somewhere else with that information, and then just building this whole, you know, storyline, yeah. basically. And it was all from the actual people that were there. You know, yeah, that seems, ah, man, that seems daunting, like, to even, like, jump down the task. But yeah. But at the same time, like, I mean, you had an end goal, and so this was a means to an end to figure it out. And the good thing about this book is, uh, or I think about FXRs in general, was it's not like this ongoing thing of like, okay, well, we're expecting the new model to come out this year. Like, you didn't do it on the low rider. You know what I mean? Right, right. So it's like this, it's got a finite start and finish as far as like the, the I guess not necessarily finish because we're still a part of the history totally. of it, you know? But, but the history portion, definitely, yeah. right? So. Um, and people are making history, you know, uh, when your guest, uh, Corey did, you know, he's putting an M8 in, yeah, yeah. You know, in an FXR. So h- history f- or the FXRs are still like keep being changed, being yeah. you know, messed with and improved or whatever. But um, it was cool having kind of a start and a finish mm-hmm. for sure. You know, like there's a finish line um, and there's still like I could probably continue on and do a bunch of more information. But it would be really like in the weeds. Well, yeah, I, I mean? think that the only thing you can actually add to it is kind of like, what was the bike scene around it like in the '90s, the 2000s, the the teens? I guess, like like, you know, because every once in a while, I, I feel like there's got to be this major dude that comes along, and and I wouldn't say the word revolutionizes, but it really revitalizes the bike. Totally. It's usually like a group or a person or a scene. It does that, and then it sweeps nationwide, and then it becomes a thing again, right? Yeah, I mean, it's like that with cars, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, in one of our groups, we're always talking about, you know, oh look at these different cars, you know. The um, worst cars, not, so not, not what anyone else thinks. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and <laughs> like people listening, watching, or whatever, um, we're into like the weird cars, right? Yeah. The ones that like weren't huge, um, but were built with a purpose, and you know, I mean, in the '90s, like we grew up in the '90s, yeah. '80s, right? Um, and so like one of them for me is like the typhoon, right? GMC typhoon. A lot of oh, people yeah, never yeah. even heard of it. Um, and, and it like was, a, that was to compete <laughs> with the, uh, lightning, right? Like, no, that was even, be, well, I guess the, before, I think the, lightning the flare, yeah. maybe the first Ford, well, lightning, they had a, the it was a flare one. side or lightning, something yeah. like that. And I'm good. Um, I'm trying to keep it together today <laughs> oh, Okay, <laughs> for a while at least. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's stuff like that. Like, I just feel like I've always been to kind of not the norm mm. um and then yeah. so you're totally not the guy that likes the the famous band right well i do but i heard him before you oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> i heard him, i heard yeah, their definitely. first album yeah. and yeah like yeah and once i heard album, it it wasn't yeah. cool anymore yeah, it wasn't yeah. cool anymore i know but, the feeling. Um, yeah so um but yeah so uh, the first section is the history um and then it goes into you know deciphering different um vin numbers uh vin codes um, paint description down to, you know, what decals were used in what year, photo examples. Mm-hmm. Um, and then 
another really cool section in that book I feel like is the interviews. So actual like Q mm -hmm. and A interviews with Okay, yeah, I see it right here. Not only the um the engineers and people that worked um on the FXR. Yeah. But also, you know, original owners, um built famous builders, you know, from back then and now and then um you know, guys that just lived lived their life on FXRs over the centuries, you know. Mm -hmm. Or decades, sorry. The original owner parts are my, those. Those are my favorite parts of the book. Definitely might have been because I learned the history while you were learning it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I mean that part is exciting. Yeah. But the original owner stories, like every one, like yeah, when I read, it, I was just like, you read one, like, oh that's the best, and then you read the next one, like oh dude, that's like, the best. Yeah. Yeah, it's super entertaining here. Mm -hmm. But I and mean, what he means, the original owner, dudes who like bought it and like still own it, like 20, yeah. 30 years later, oh, guys cool. who same had this same FXR for thirty years. Yep. You know, most of these guys got. You know, roll the odometer over numerous times and oh, stuff, that's cool. and just hearing—I mean, people who grew up on this bike yep. and have had it, like you know, one of them. He's like, "Dude, I've had this bike longer than anything else in my life. My wife, everybody. <laughs> yeah. This bike has been with me my yeah. entire life. It's like a dog that never dies." Yep. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's that's just cool. Just it, cool just, story to hear. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. So, um, and it was just going to be like uh, initially, kind of a. Like I said, kind of a shitty binder, mm -hmm. it, worst case scenario. Uh, but then once I started putting in all the work and everything, I'm like, you know what? Like, the community could really use something that would last. You know. So how how does it work with like production? I mean, is this something you're going to be able to? I know that you got a, a limited number up front. So how is it moving forward? Are you going to be able to produce more of these? I mean, it the <laughs> file the file can be produced right yeah like i have the file like it's just a phone call away but i really don't i don't want it to be one of these massive where, yeah like, yeah where you could just buy it um and there's a couple of reasons why um inside of there it's like for me anyways keep in mind that i'm yeah. an xr nerd but for me that's like the holy grail yeah that's the production numbers how many you know whatever color, whatever year. Oh, there was only one made? Well, yeah. guess who's looking for that one? Me and now everyone with the book, right? Yeah, So yeah. that's even more so, like, then everyone's looking, right? Yeah. So that's one of the reasons. And then the other reason is that <clears throat> um, I feel like the people that that want it now will get it. After that, I don't – I think it'll be done. Yeah, just keep it like a small legacy, amount. Legacy it, style. You know? Yeah, I think that'd be cool as shit because, I mean, what if in 30 years we're, we're walking through a swap meet and... Even cooler, explain the multiple colors. Oh, yeah, so this is... Um, uh, but, yeah, look at what you're saying. Going through a swap meet and seeing, like, you know, oh, that's that's one of those, right? Yeah. Well, then, oh, it's a red one. So um, the first 100 copies, I did, like, an Instagram Live kind of um, explaining what the book was. Mm -hmm. And so the first 100 people that signed up you know in the comments or whatever mm -hmm. pre-ordered um get a red um red with gold um mm. book and so those will be limited to um 100 and then i do have some extra red ones for um guys that have helped me out on the book mm -hmm. um and there'll be some uh different like number or keyways so that way people know how rare their book is you know the people oh, that cool. that actually did interviews for the book will get a different numbering mm. system inside. So so um, there's inside. a number system in it? Uh, not yet. These oh. are I just grabbed these um, leaving this morning, so I haven't even signed those yet. Oh, that's cool. But, um, but yeah, so then uh, that and then um, the other version will be black. It's black with um, like a silver leaf instead mm. of a gold. gold. Uh, and that will you what are you thinking about doing another hundred or what um no so i ordered um i think there's like on the comments there's like 600 copies Fuck. so yeah i got my my work cut out for me for sure yeah um i'm only one guy i'm trying to fill you know orders as i you know as yeah. i can I should mention that six the comments you've got you've already got books like anyone who's commented is yeah. got a spot for yep. a book just yep. to yep. clarify that because I know people are wondering yeah but you have enough to fill all the orders yep. that people have said they wanted and the um, yeah the DMs are like flooded like hey I didn't get you know a notification or anything like am I still on the list anyone who commented on that original post is on the list they'll get a book yeah um, and then I did order some extras right so um, I'll try to everyone is who wants one now I'll try to get it to you. Um, 
And then... Um, oh, so you're saying the first 100 books yeah. get the will red. get the red. The red, okay. The black. Yep, that's the rest cool. will get the black. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing uh, for the red, or sorry, um, yeah, for the red ones. So since day one, like, I've always been, like, be a good person in the community. Yeah. Right? So decals was the first thing because it was, like, yeah, I remember that, yeah. low budget, right? Yeah. The only way to get a decal is... Um, either help someone out in the community when you can, like hook someone up, mm-hmm. say someone goes down or, you know, needs a fender or something like that. Um, the least that I could do was send them a decal, right? And that's the only way to get them, either that or a giveaway. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that example mm-hmm. um, carrying forward has just kind of escalated. And so, um, you know, writers go down yeah, yeah. instead of like GoFundMes or. You have some more beer over there? We got a whole case right here. He's on oh, oh, yeah. Okay. No, that, you know, as soon as I got that FX started down there, a dude started reaching out to me, man, hey, what do you need? Yeah. I, I got some leftover parts from my build, and, yeah. you know, I'm like, man, this is way different than the last time I did. I fucked with an FXR, but I think that that has actually bled into a lot of people's uh, mentality yep. to, uh, you know, the, the, obviously we, we kind of, I think me and Mike were kind of dabbling on it the last time we was here a couple months ago, but, like, I feel like, you know, you have those people that jump in because it's hot, but then you have these people that get into it and fall in love with it. Yep. And then they kind of are, you know, they, they meet guys like Mike or yourself or, you know, these other guys that are really great ambassadors of the uh, of the platform. And uh, I think it bleeds over to who they are, and say, you know. Yeah, for sure. And then they're genuinely, you know, um, genuinely into the bike instead of yeah. just, like, looking for likes on Instagram or whatever. Well, right? speaking of the give- <coughs> giveaways and people going down, you got Trevor on there. Shout oh, yeah. out to Trevor. Yeah, strong work, <laughs> Trevor. Um, and yours will be in the mail once I get home. So, um, yeah, Trevor, for example, um, a guy, uh, PKP up in Oregon, yeah. um, tragic accident, ended up dying on, on his FXR. Um, he was a supporter of the page, bought shirts. I talk to him all the time. And then all of a sudden I see a post on Facebook, and I, d- I knew the bike, and I'm like, hey, man, did you sell your bike? I you know, message him. Obviously, he didn't come back to me, right? So, um, turns out that he ended up dying. And so, the original, you know, I wrote the book on a laptop. Printed company sends me one proof, right? Mm -hmm. One proof to read through, make sure everything's cool before the print, and then, you know, give them yes or no, thumbs up or thumbs down, and then they print the book. Well, that was one uh, of one copy, just stapled together. Yeah. Um, And... Uh, Trevor ended up getting it, so oh, I, I did cool. like a like, yeah. an auction, twenty four hour to auction. help. Yeah, yep. All of the money went to his wife, um, you know, to benefit, help funeral costs, whatever needed. Yeah. So, and she was super grateful. Like, super rough story. Um, yeah, yeah. But she was so thankful um, that uh, you know the community was there for that for her. Yeah, you know I, mean? I mean, that's awesome, man. Like, I feel like it's. Uh, that's the that's the risk that we all take riding these damn bikes, man. It's a scary thing, you know. Yeah, definitely. I, I think that most of us have been pretty fortunate, or at least when I say most of us, I say like the people that I know. You know what I mean? Um, but pff, you never know, man. It's just like <laughs> it's a weird weird subject. But I was like driving, <clears throat> I think in the rain like two or three days ago, or whenever it was raining here last. I was like, what are the odds of me getting struck by lightning right now? Like. That just happens. Like, yeah. you don't see it coming, and you can make a, a move. It just happens, yeah. right? And then I was thinking about it again and, and uh, or something else, some other kind of scenario like that when I was riding to last night. I went to a little bike night. I was like, man, I, I'm, I'm a pretty aware rider, but there's these things that happen that are just completely out of your, your totally. you know, ability. Yeah. So don't fuck up that book, man. <laughs> yeah, that's your copy. You can do whatever the fuck you want with it. <laughs> this is my display copy. Uh, I need a reading copy too. Right, okay. That's fine. <laughs> um I don't want all the pages to get stuck together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, I'm stoked like uh you know when I got in the trip when Mike picked me up, he's like, dude, does it feel like you just had a baby? I'm like, yeah. But the thing is is like I mean uh, how I would imagine that a yeah. woman, right? No woman watches <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Um how I would just imagine just don't say they have nice tits. That's right. Like <laughs> They get pissed about that. Um, so how I imagine this happening uh-huh. is, you know, you have a baby or you're, you get pregnant, 
you're pregnant for nine months and then the baby comes out and you have a baby. Yeah. You want to show off the baby, whatever. Well, this has been like two years. Over. Over two years, easy. Yeah. Where, and it's not just like, I'm, I've been f- like forming this whole book. Mm-hmm. And I'm a super critical person, like of myself. Um, yeah. And so I'm like changing things, you know, constantly. And like, I'm stoked to get it out to everyone just because um, not only the like factual stuff, but also. You know, I know that people are really stoked about, you know, FXMs yeah. in general and kind of sharing that knowledge and stuff. So mm-hmm. yeah. I didn't think he was actually going to follow through, honestly. Like, at first, when he said it, I didn't believe him. And then, like, halfway through, he started getting real low. He had all the interviews and stuff, but he just kind of hit, like, a dead spot. And I was like, yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. And then he started to back up on it after putting it down for probably, like, a couple months. Yeah. And I was just like, dude, by the time this book comes out, nobody's going to want an FXR anymore. I'm like, yeah. gonna, <laughs> they're going to be completely dead by then. But then, like, all of a sudden, like, I guess you said with, like, COVID and stuff, it kind of lit a fire on his ass. And yeah. Yeah. he started really pushing it out this last year. Because, yeah. well, after the – I feel like, I guess, the, like you said, the research part was probably the fun part. So you were moving along there. And once you got the research, I felt like that's when it started just – Yeah, You're totally. like, fuck, now i got to, like, do homework. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, man, that's – but, I mean, like, I can imagine, like, right now you're probably, you know, living in the high of actually see, having the completed project in your hand. Just like if you were building a bike for a couple of years and you finally get to have rip any it. any of us spent three years building a bike? Dude, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Patience. I don't know if I have that patience. <laughs> yeah. I lose interest, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, like, that's – to me, like, this is something I would love to do myself. Like, not just for the tangible item that you create after it's done, but the fact that, like, you push, like – you push past that part of where you normally would probably lose interest in something. You know totally. what I mean? Yeah. Because I don't think I can, you know, I can't build a bike like and that. If I lo- if something doesn't happen quickly, I lose interest, totally. right? Because, like you said, you're a very critical person. Well, so am I with my time and, and my where I put things and, and whatnot. And so I'm all hyped up about building this bike. But if things don't start rolling, yep. I'm like fuck man I, I don't know i, I could that, be doing something else yeah. better like more productive or whatever yeah, yeah i probably need to spend i need to fucking buy more computer shit or something for yeah. this and let me just sell this bike and i'll get another one later and then the project never happens yeah you know and so that lull that lull was real and i think i, I haven't really like uh put a like i guess a topic behind it or the reason why mm-hmm. um but i think it was probably because i did all the research and then at that point like it's almost like damn, now I have to do my homework. You know, like, I have to go write. And yeah. which I'm I'm really not a writer. Like, the last paper that I wrote was probably high school, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I did write one for work, and it turned out that I did really well on it. So I was like, you know what, maybe I will do it, you know. Yeah. And so um, that was kind of, like, my motivation to, like, get creative and stuff like that. But in reality, it's not, like, it's not my story. Mm-hmm. Like, this, um, this book is not from, like, first person. There's like maybe four, four or five sentences probably where I interject and just put like my um, Two opinion, cents. yeah, opinion in. Right, it's all factual. Yeah. So, um, it's it was really more like a research project it, more than anything. You know? Yeah. But the writing thing though, that like that's something I've always wanted to get into, man. Like I, I think Mike talked about it a while back about just writing things down. You know, uh, I remember having a conversation with you about that I at mean, one I point. Right, like story right but i write everything like i carry yeah. a, a little tiny little book on me all the time and i just write down things i gotta get done and yeah so just yeah. So i don't forget anything Dude, like every day like i'll write down my agenda for the next day or i'll just end up doing nothing uh-huh. it's the only way i stay productive so but that's not like that kind of writing yeah. like i'm with him i haven't written a paper since yeah, i mean yeah. some of my instagram posts could probably be considered a paper because <laughs> yeah, i'll ramble sure, on yeah but <laughs> I haven't actually written any yeah. kind of thing yeah. since and high school. And in college. reality, yeah, like my last time I probably wrote something was freshman year because the rest was all like either plagiarized yeah. or you know, like <laughs> just like, you know, cut and paste yeah. or whatever. But um, yeah, but yeah, it was fun, man. I, I really had a blast doing it, and um, like I said, I'm stoked to get it out to get it out to everyone. So I don't think anyone's gonna be upset after they read it. Yeah, yeah. That. like I yeah. mean, like what I mean. I'm interested to hear what different people's favorite parts are, whether it's the history, the production number part, or the stories. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. th- I mean, I, that's what I was telling him about. Like, that's what I love about it. It's like it's not even – because, you know, I've read a lot of different books on Harleys. And stuff, and usually they're yeah. kind of focused on this or that and everything. And if this one's got, like, a little bit of everything. It's like you get 
through reading about the history of it, and it's like, okay, that was interesting. And then, like, it's a whole brand. It's almost like a brand new book that you're getting into now yeah, with all yeah. these stories. Mm -hmm. And then it's like a whole third book when you start looking at all the production numbers and things like that and the paint codes. And yeah, uh, it, it's just it, – it came together so much better than I expected. Man, you know, it kind of goes in line with this, you know <laughs> – this, this idea I've been having, you know, because I, obviously I've been enthralled with photography lately, but it really is that tangible thing, man. Like, this is knowledge that usually is in a chat room yep. or a story on a podcast or in something like that. Now it's a physical form, and I feel like the effort it takes to open this book and, and focus on it, it makes you absorb it in a different way, the same way you would absorb a real photo yep. and not just scroll and pass it on your phone. It's like... You know, uh, I think I was posting that picture. I posted a picture of that one the other day, and I was, you know, just talking about how, like, walking in here every day, like, I'm not trying to see that photo, but it's there. So it puts me back there with those dudes and th that situation every time, you totally. know. And, and like, when you have something like this laying on the coffee table or in your study or your wherever you would keep it, in your garage with the rest of your, you know, books and stuff, yep. you know. That's why these things, like, it's a lost art. But it's so valuable now that, like, yeah, you probably can't do a magazine and throw it on a, on a Barnes & Noble shelf and make money like the way that they did back in the day. But if you create something that's this quality and it's tangible, it's just such a market for it yeah, right but, now. But uh, Harvey Moore, like you said, like, the quality. Yeah. Like, not just, like, the quality. Like, the book is quality as far as, like, you know, the printing and everything. Mm -hmm. But just, like he said, like, this is all as good a facts as you can get from yeah. the people you know, who were there, you know, not opinions or not, oh, I heard it from this dude yeah. who heard it from this dude, or this guy was riding bikes in 83, and this is what they told him. No, these are like the guys who actually were in the meetings building yeah. it, yeah. testing it, you know, figuring out the problems and stuff. And I don't know, that's that's super cool. Like, you don't get that in oh, a lot sure. of things. Yeah. I mean, how, I don't know what else, where else you've got a book. I mean, I'm not into a lot of things to know, but I feel like that's not a common thing to have that much information especially I'll give you a perfect example out. I'll give you a perfect example so I I've you know like I said I, I'm gonna relate it to my photography again but yeah uh there's this lady that's a very famous photographer I started uh watching interviews from her on uh YouTube she kind of grew up in San Francisco was a part of all the Rolling Stone the beginning of Rolling Stone yeah. uh, Annie Lebowitz is I think is her name just real famous photographer for pop culture music <laughs> She shot the last photos of John Lennon before he was shot. Uh, like, a lot of shit, right? And so I watched all these interviews with her, and I was like, fuck yeah, like, she has books. Fuck, I want to yeah. go get her book. Totally. I went and got her book. It's all the fucking interviews I just watched. <laughs> I yeah. was like... Well, that's what's cool. None of this uh, stuff yeah. came from yeah, previous yeah. interviews. It's all yeah. brand new stuff. It's I like, I, new, I'm literally new, reading this right. book, and I'm finishing the sentences because I've heard her say it on a on an interview or through the YouTube. So it kind of ruined that aspect for me with that. But, you know, I just bought this book like three weeks ago, four right. weeks ago or something like that. Yeah. And you're stoked the whole time. It's, you know, in yeah. the mail and everything else. Yeah. And so, um, like I can kind of relate to that. Um, just recently I was in this, I was looking for something, probably like a paint shop for this bike that I'm building. Mm -hmm. And I got into Frazetta, right? Yeah. Like the artist, Frank Frazetta. Right? Yeah. yeah. And so there's so much information on, right? Mm -hmm. Frank Frazetta. And like, He's one of the artists that ended up buying all of his art back, if he could, like mm -hmm. um, commissioned art. And so, um, you like for me, I research if I'm into something, I yeah. research it till the Dive end. Dive in, I'm not sure yeah. You could tell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I research something like as far as I can. You know yeah. what I mean? And then it seemed like everything was like a copy of this interview, and then that one was actually like. Uh, perspective on that same interview and everything like you're saying you know it's like yeah and i want i want something fresh but at the same time it's like how are you gonna get something fresh from someone who's yeah something that's already it? happened yeah. you know and and now that like once media became so quick and social and, and digital it was more like everybody was like okay well I, I don't create anything in life so i'm gonna go find something to yeah you know just to to present to the world right, right. and not not to say it's a bad thing but i mean like everybody's doing it man yeah. like you know yeah, and so um, people have, you know, in the comments, like, oh, dude, are you going to do a um, PDF version, like, online? No. I'm like, no, nah, man, I don't I don't want that. Like, that's yeah, the last thing no. that I want. That's the complete opposite of what it needs to be. Yeah, like, I want this to be, like, you're sitting down and 
that's why you know I pick like the you know linen, linen style cover. You know yeah. what I mean, like the foil stamp and stuff like that. Like that's something that it was um, ingrained in my mind how it will look. You know what I mean? And yeah. when you hold it, you could actually feel it on your fingertips, like the little texture when you're reading it. You know, mm-hmm. like quality pages, all that stuff. Um, and then as for the photos, like I took photos back in high school, mm-hmm. and then. Um, I've had a camera just shot a little bit, but I shot a bunch of the fo- photos in here too. Mm-hmm. Um, That's cool for bikes Jay that were around. One. Yeah, Jay shot shot. <sighs> it's one of your photos is in there. It, I appreciate sure. you yeah. letting my photo be in there, but it's like the growth of my photography since I shot that. Yeah, no, like I'm critical good. of that. And I'm yeah, like, fuck, man. Like I, it's not so much the shooting; it's the editing. Like I know I can edit yeah. it with so much more quality and, and things like that. But no, I, I'm super appreciative of that opportunity, yeah, yeah. and I appreciate you. You know, appreciative of you guys. You know, taking the pics taking the time to take the pics and there's a lot of people that i mean i don't have all these fxrs yeah yeah you know and yet i need samples of all of these photos um Mm -hmm. and of bikes certain num certain color certain yeah year certain you know parts or whatever so i'm hitting all these dudes up in the like the whole community a lot of people were off facebook a lot of people on instagram Mm -hmm. uh, but the community is like dude absolutely is this good like you know editing photos or you know taking yeah. you know really quality photos of like a derby cover you know it's like yeah, s- yeah. stuff like that so um yeah i see uh mickey on here um speaking to your like getting a magazine off of you know the um barnes and noble shelf. yeah so i got um i got a um tail light nest tail light mm-hmm. from miyagi and he sent cool. in Dave Perowitz, I haven't even told you, <laughs> I didn't send you a picture of it. It's a Dave Perowitz um, cover page of, I think it was um, an old hot bike, which I'm mm. s- like, I yeah. open it up and like, I'm stoked for the tail light, and then I'm like, what is this? You know, underneath, yeah. like, it's just, it's awesome. So, dude, no, you know, I, I've saw, I've talked about it many times, but when I was in New York with the Clems dudes and we went by this dude, Chris Kutis, mm-hmm. uh, his house, I didn't want to leave. I wanted. I want to spend the night. Yeah, you know what I mean. I yeah. wanted to. He has this garage where he, he was building a, a, a defender a, or a Dyna, the police Dyna, yeah, Dyna, defender, right? Yeah. And uh, you know, I'm a magazine dude, and he had this fucking whole shelf all of Japanese hot bikes, the right. original show classes when they like look like little fucking yeah, the mini mags. Yeah, the yeah. mini mags. Like I was like just sitting there, not even paying attention. I was like this. Yeah, this is badass. I could I could come out here at night turn some music on, and just look at magazines. And I used to do that shit so yeah, much. Oh, I mean, sure. I got some of my magazines here, but I got boxes at yep. the house from the other scenes I was in, from yeah. the sport bikes to the lowrider shit and, you know, things mm-hmm. like that. But, you know, it just – those magazines, in my opinion, are worth so much more to, like, flip through and, and see where society has changed as well. Because totally. even those Easy Riders I've been picking up, like – Looking at a 2001 Easy Rider, like where people's minds were in the building, like you can find the inspiration in that shit too. Oh, for sure. Because yeah. it gets, you know, like there was no social media. You can't scroll back and check out what, you know, bikes were the hot shit in 2001, you know? Most definitely, yeah. So, and yeah, and that's, it, it's almost like um, a time machine, right? So you yeah. go back and you get to see all the ads, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, ads for parts of, now, you're trying to find. Exactly. <laughs> exactly, right? So, yeah. like, um, Chris, uh, he's building that orange. Did you see the orange FX right there? Yeah, actually, uh, when I was at Hot Dog Shop, I was we were talking about Chris, yeah. and he's like, "Dude, I just just shipped uh, was, yeah. something back to him. It was either a frame, yeah, or something." But he's doing a he did a flame job on it. It's fucking sick. Dude. Yeah, I think it's in a wrap, so we won't say too much. But um, <laughs> it's I orange this, it, uh, paint codes. <laughs> yeah, um, but like he's doing a '90s bike. Right? Yeah, like, and that's what I'm building a bike now. And kind of off of that um, style, I guess you would. Mm-hmm. A kind of like muscle tough bike. Mm-hmm. Um, and probably because that's just what I'm into. You know, like yeah. reading through all those magazines, like you still have a soft spot for, you know, whatever the tuners are or what, what yeah, you're yeah. working on. You know what I mean? Like you see one on the street and you're like, ooh, that I remember that tight. life, like, yeah. You, you know, he's even got the freaking whatever bumper came on, you know, the special yeah. edition or whatever. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's what like that's what I'm building now, and like, it's finding well, it's all of those parts, hunting them down in good condition, or rechroming them, like all that stuff. You know, what was really weird. So when I was at Ness, um, they took me downstairs and they showed me this uh, this section. It's probably 
it's probably the size of my downstairs, like the open area. Yeah. And it's all the parts that everybody's looking for, mm-hmm. but not complete. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like they'll have the, you know, the triple trees that, that they were selling for the FXRs, but they don't have the stems yeah, or they don't have this. So it's like. Yeah, I got a box of those, actually. For real? Yeah, I bought, yeah, through, somebody was selling them. Through me? Yeah. yeah. It was like <laughs> a box of half-completed trees, and yep. I threw them an offer. He took it, and I was just like, I don't even know what I'll do with them, but it's like uh, it's a whole box full of just half-completed nest yeah. trees. I have, I have like 40 <laughs> uh, left-side nest covers. Yeah. <laughs> from the same dude, you know, it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's the same it's thing in that same warehouse or whatever. But. Yeah. And they were just, you know, they were just saying like, we had all these parts and, you know, the kind of scene went away and we just stopped, <laughs> yeah. you know, we had these made, but we didn't go ahead and order more of these. And right. now we just have these things that are kind of halfway done. Yeah. And it's not, it's not super crazy shit. Like it's like, it's like a machine shop could make these parts to kind of oh, complete them. Those. Yeah. Like most of just, like you said, Triple trees that need stems, yep. maybe like you know the riser bushing holes, yeah, yeah, you know, drilled out still. Yeah, so I was just like, I was like, yeah, that's cool. Could be a fun project and one if, day. Finish those up. And if Corey or Zach are listening, you know, like we know we know a guy, you know, yeah. that can help you <laughs> help take those things off yeah. your hands. So, man, yeah, that whole up. my NorCal trip was a disaster. I got two podcasts that I've I really felt great about the Nest one and my buddy Brian. Yeah, um, but like I was supposed to go see Tom Jessup. I wanted to go see John Long. Yep. Uh, I wanted to at least see you and fucking uh, and yeah. Josh while I was up there, but I made it to like Disco Bay, and then it just stormed for two days straight. Yeah, I know. You know what I mean? And so I ended up. Your weather, man. Yeah. Fuck, dude. It's like that's why prices are so high, dude. <laughs> like great weather. <laughs> yeah, if anyone doesn't know, it's hot in California too. Yeah, it is. I learned that one. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> People yeah, but, still tell me about that, that story I made. I, I, someone brought that up just recently about me talking about how hot it was out there, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's yeah. it's a lie, man. They don't have great weather. Man, I don't know. They just it it rains once a year and then it rains a lot for like a couple days. It rained yeah. when I went too, though. It rained you know? and then it was like 120 oh, yeah, it did degrees. Rain. Yep. <laughs> In the actual bay, though, like you never the weather's always weird because of being on the ocean and and being a pocket of mountains. Yeah. So like there'll be times where you're in Liver Livermore there and it's beautiful sunshine and then you cross over into like Hayward yeah. and it's fucking it looks like you just crossed over into like you know Narnia or some shit like yeah, it's, it's a different fun. world yeah. you know or yeah, flying in like you you see the tips of the buildings and the uh, and the bridge yeah the little lights. and then you just like go through the clouds and like hit the fucking dude, I used to scare the shit on me back yep. in the day I don't like flying man no, I'll do I don't it either. if I've been flown a lot. Well, I don't want to talk about because you just got off a plane. You no, got to get back on the <laughs> It just gets weird because, like, I feel like every time I'm about to fly somewhere and I'm watching a movie, it becomes one of those like the plane's going down kind of right. movies. And I'm yeah. like, and then as soon as I get on a flight, I'm like, is this plane going down? Yeah, <laughs> oh, I was like, right above the wing, and I'm like, this thing's like this, you know? Yeah, like, oh, dude, I I never sit behind the wings. Yeah, I never do because I'll pay a lot of money to stay in front because. Sitting in the back and you see the plane doing this shit, just wiggling right. back and forth. I'm like flexing. I'm like, is this supposed to do this? Is this like, a Dyna? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this thing's wobbling <laughs> all over. Dude. Fucking crazy, man. But yeah, it's just uh, kidding, Dyna guys, just kidding. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, let's see. Uh, yeah, I got the bike going together now. Um, oh, yeah, I fe- the, the red books too about not just giving away with the good things, the awards. Oh yeah, so um, thank you, Mike. The um, yeah, the red books will also be trophies for um, F- best FXRs, you know, shows across the country. Mm-hmm. So um, I did talk to um, like Jeff Holt, who he's doing all the V Twin Visionary yeah. stuff. Um, so I'll send him some books um, for the best FXR, and then I'm going to be you doing Sturgis. Yeah, I'm going to be at Sturgis. So um, that's hopefully this bike will be done. That'd be cool. Like, yeah. it's coming up. Yeah, I know it's coming up quick. Yeah, and um, so that, and then um, I'll bring some to Born Free. I should have a booth there, um, which will be cool. So, yeah, it's it's really one of those things where I want it to feel special. You know, yeah. like I want the red, at least the red ones, to be like, oh, dude, you got a red one. You know, like yeah, yeah. You know, when when your buddy comes over and I'm like, oh, dude, you got a red one. Like I don't know, it just seems cool in my head. You know? Oh, it is. Well, it definitely it, is cool. I think it'd be cool what you brought up. We talked about this and like 
30 years, someone comes across one, and there's going to be a lot more of the black ones, and someone comes across a red one, and you got a new Nick who's, you know, just being born right now, and he, you know, he gets on the FXRs and stuff. He's 20-something yeah. years old, and comes well, across a, comes across a red one maybe, and he's just like, wait, all the other ones I've seen are black. What's up with this red one, you know? And then yeah. he starts researching just on Nick, and then Nick's the seven-year-old dude sitting there getting a call from getting a guy a like, yeah. hey, man, I'm really into FXRs, oh, and... Uh, <laughs> Like, Sit down, you little faggot. Book. <laughs> it's like Inception, you yeah. know. Like. Yeah, exactly. Who? No, that's exactly the that's exactly the thing. It's like you know, I think sometimes we get so wrapped up in making things for now that we don't think about the legacy of what we make, and you know, the legacy of this two year endeavor that you went on needs to be, uh, you know, like this red book is. Um, I think it makes it special. You know what I mean? And if it's not, whether it ain't like you put Supreme on it and now it's worth forty, you know, more dollars. Yeah. It's like, no, like, it's worth more to people that know. Yep. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yep. Exactly. And that's where it really matters. It's not, you know, somebody that doesn't, it's yeah. not into this shit. It, it, who cares what they think? Yeah. It's the, the people in the know. You totally. know what I mean? Yeah. No, so. and, and that's that's the whole kind of reason behind it. So, um, but yeah, I'm stoked. I'm stoked on how they came out. And um, yeah, I, like I said, I got my work cut out for me, man. Yeah. So, what's next after this? Um, so, those who follow the page, yeah, the windshield um, is in production, and um, guys are running them now, getting really good reviews on it. So we can bring it over here. Yeah, got it? I think yeah, I got it. <laughs> Let's all put our hands on it. Um, I got it. Fucking laser engraved too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little. Hot and these stamp. are going to go on the nest fairings, right? Yeah. So um, I'm sure a lot of your listeners have at least seen a nest fairing. Um, it's timeless. You know, it's been yeah. on on bikes for. The rifle, Century. right? Is that um, what it is? Is it a rifle or no, is it? No, it's a nest. The, they're OG nest fairing. Okay, okay. Yeah. OG I know the fairing. I painted them before, but I just don't know the, yeah. the, the. I didn't know if they had a name. They did have a wide glide version too, mm -hmm. which I really don't feel like a lot of people run the wide glide or want the wide glide. So that's the reason why this is for the narrow glide. Um, How does one get into the. So, like, where do you even find the foot in the door in the right place to get something like this made? Um, Not saying, like, tell me how you did it, but like. Yeah. Well, so the whole reason behind it, here I'll describe it first so that way people aren't in the dark about what we're talking about. So yeah. the nest fairing um, usually has a um, windshield that comes straight back, yeah. which looks fucking cool and looks cool in all the magazines, you know, and what after, you know, a um, couple beers, you know, with my buddies in the garage, hey, how cool would it be to have this thing actually be functional? Right. Yeah. And so um, after riding, you know, RT fairings or T Sport fairings, just convertible windshields. Yeah. We get kind of spoiled. Right. We're like, fuck, man. Why? If you, if you don't have a fairing or windshield on your bike, like, fuck this. You know, it's like. Yeah. It's just fighting the wind. Yeah. Everywhere. If it's windy. Right. Yeah. You know, like it could be a pain in the ass, especially long rides and stuff like that. So um, that's really like kind of the concept of how this came about. Um, so it mounts up straight to any narrow glide nest fairing. Um, and it comes in, this is the tall version here. So mm -hmm. tall version is um, kind of set up to be at stock height, um, stock headlight height. Yeah. Um, a lot of guys are running Ventura mounts. Yeah, been seeing that. Um, up higher. So it raises the headlight and the fairing up. And so I have one um, two inches shorter. So it's still got the recurve, mm -hmm. um, but it's two inches shorter. And then it comes in um, clear, light tint, or dark tint. Mm. Um, and so what it does is... it creates a nice little pocket right here. You mm -hmm. know, it's not, it's not a full fairing. It's not going to, you know, block everything. But what it does do is create a nice little pocket around yeah. you. So that way It'll take the wind off your chest and your, and your and face. Your yeah. yeah, and there's no buffeting. Yeah, either. I say for anyone who can't see, or people, I guess you are watching, it's like quarter inch thick too. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's thick like if you've got yeah, uh, I think it's thicker than RT the actual fairing. <laughs> it's actually, d it's double the thickness. Yeah. So, so it has a lot of rigidity, which yep. helps with all the buffeting. Yeah. Because if you've ever had any cheap fairing, you know, they just, they flap around and everything, and then it creates a real weird, weird wind situation on mm -hmm. you. Yep. Um, yeah, and it'll throw, you know, with the buffeting, it'll throw your head, you know, yeah, your helmet all over the place. Um, at least if you're wearing a full face or whatever. Um, but, yeah, so what I did is um, had the concept, obviously. And then got, you know, the movie poster, um, like, frames that you get at, like, Michael's oh, yeah, or fucking yeah. Walgreens. Mm -hmm. So I had an old one of those with, like, some band um, 
Post Do, I don't know if, yeah. Yeah. I don't so, know the band because uh, I'm not cool. Enough. Right. No, you will in a couple <laughs> years. Yeah. <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll hear of them. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so what I did is I cut that out, had my prototype, and then kind of formed it. Mm-hmm. And then um, Clearview, actually, I reached out to them. Um, they did, um, like, a, it was Dirty Dixie. Now it's Denton. Yeah, Denton. So yeah. they have a, a windshield as well. And I hit them up, and I was like, hey, like, what was your um, your – process like with Clearview he's like dude they're fucking awesome so I hit him up um, shout out to Craig for all the help and um, at Clearview and he basically made a prototype um, had like fitment issues just because the um, like over the years Ness I don't know where they're made yeah but over 30 years, they're not going to be the same drill holes, right? So yeah. um, we honed that in and then um, did a little bit of more recurve at the top after some testing. And then, yeah, now they're in full production. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm slowly trickling them in. That still makes that fairing, right? Yeah, you can still order them new. Yeah. So, and that's the other thing. Like, they're not only on FXRs. They're on FXRs, Diners, Diners Sportsters, yeah. you know. And they'll pull right up. So if you've got one, <coughs> yeah. you, you don't need to get anything else. They just go right on school. Exactly, yeah. Um, and like I said, the shorter version is for the Ventura mount. Mm-hmm. Just that way, the top of the windshield is not in your line of sight. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, gives a little different protection profile. Well, it's crazy. I like, what what inspired you to go this route? Is it just filling a void, basically? Like, I mean, to, I mean, uh, essentially, FXR Bazaar was a, a repost parts trader page, and totally. now it's become like this this uh, this brand. brand it actually is, uh, you know, like it's more focused on just FXRs and not like, I want to make parts for all bikes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's like, no, let's fill this void and and accentuate some of the parts that we already have and make them better and make them more usable. Yeah, you and, know? S- and so I really feel it's more like um, me having the chance to do the shit that I want. And mm-hmm. if other people think it's cool, then fucking yeah, we'll, awesome. we'll do it. You know what I mean? Like, um, and by we, I mean just – the community in general like mm-hmm. l- let's make it happen so um yeah this is like i said one of those things where i always wanted to do it um and with like shirt sales and like the page and like just the yeah following i was like you know what this will be the time like if there was any time now is the time so let's do this you know so yeah i mean the nice thing is is nick doesn't want to make parts like we've talked about this before he doesn't yeah. want to so it's not like he's just I mean, I know Bare Knuckle Paul says before too how he's not just gonna make a derby cover that everyone else is making. You know, he's con- he every week he's dropping a new part yeah. that no one is already making, but people need. And Nick's saying, well, he's not doing this because he's always said like he's not doing it to make money. He's not just trying to get into the parts game. It's just parts that are functional that that we should have, but nobody's making that he comes up with that yeah. now he can make because there's more parts. Well, yeah, that's what sucks but about wait, like. There's more, not just <laughs> windshields. Yeah, um, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, so that's that's wait, you're on the spot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing is, is um, so I have. Uh, have you seen the Chopper guys swing arm? This is breaking news, uh, by the way. Breaking news. Yeah, unreleased, untalked about. Nobody. Nobody I don't knows. know if I've seen the Chopper guys one. Okay, so the Chopper guys swing arm is I'm essentially you talk yeah. show. is essentially um, uh, you know a billet pieced together well as swing arm yeah that chopper guys made um back they still make them you can still order them but mm-hmm. they're big in the 90s 2000s um but they have full cutouts oh okay yeah i've seen this did you have one on one of your bikes no i got a nest one on my flame one that's right so, yeah the um, nest one's like tubular yeah looking right double rail yeah no that's dope and so um they have full cutouts kind of like a rectangular slant Mm-hmm. Right, and so um, I'm making struts like that, um, you know, with full cutouts on the backside, so that way you can see whatever paint job, mm-hmm. you know, whatever color um, the bike is, and also something that no one does in the industry. All these struts have been made, but no one makes something that you can universally change from the forward shock position to the rear shock position, yeah, and run bags at the same time. Mm -hmm. So if you are running a naked bike for the majority of the year, but you have a trip coming up, you want to throw your RP or RT bags on, Mm -hmm. um, you can change the shock position and throw those bags on just for the trip. Then you're done. For anyone who doesn't know, the shock position changes your height by roughly three-quarter inches, so it gives you a little adjustability on your height as well. Yeah. And and 
Did, did so you got two positions on most are all the frames, but three positions on the uh, RP frames? No, just no, two. There's still only two. Oh, only two. Okay. But you'd have to like as it as it is right now, you'd have to find either we call them RS struts or RP or RT struts. Okay. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So um, you'd have to number one either have the struts in your garage and then pull them off. You know, do the whole like ha- imagine that you have five hands, hold the fender. Hold the you know sissy, sissy bar. Yeah. Hold the you know the frame, the strut, yeah. and then try to get that bolt through. Or you could just get these struts and take out the shock bolt, put it in a different hole, and then you're good. Done. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, it's one of those things where, like for me, I've always been like, why why the fuck hasn't someone made this? Um, yeah. And now it's makes sense. Coming to fruition. And so um, I had um, how like how you're asking how someone goes about doing something like this. Well, mm-hmm. um, Brian, TPJ, mm-hmm. TPJ Customs, um, I literally drew it out, you know, on a piece of binder paper. Hey, dude, I want to make these. Like, I know that, you know, you have the ability, capability to do it. Um, he's like, dude, that looks awesome. Made a couple renderings, um, 3D printed a couple, mm-hmm. and then um, we were hoping that I would have them in hand to show everyone right yeah, now, yeah. but it didn't. Didn't work out just because of schedules and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, he's doing some kind of like a rally or what? Is, what is, what's he's Brian a big doing? Motherfucker. Yeah, that's he's, all I got. He's always doing something. Yeah, it's yeah. like he's, he's trying to do something up there. I forgot. Was, I was just in solid chat. dude though. Shout out yeah. to Brian. Yeah, yeah. did me a big. He did me a big favor a couple weeks ago. So, <laughs> yeah. shout out to Brian. Uh, that's right. Yeah. 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 I was in, I'm gonna. I wouldn't call it a group chat, but every once in a while when, when the topics arise, me, him, and Justin from Torch oh, yeah. end up talking shit in a three-way. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, I was yesterday, we were just, for like hours, we were just talking shit to each other. Yeah, Because I had mentioned them in the Brian, uh, high-class Brian, uh, the the modified vision dude. Uh, that, that we just I just released a podcast yeah. yesterday, and we were talking about Brian because that dude, Brian, has the sunglass company. He's been around in the NorCal, you know, worked for Oakland Harley, Nest for the last like 15 years right and then um just recently kind of got out of the motorcycle thing and started doing other shit so lots of stories man like yeah, it's crazy sure. like when you're up there you know like me and brian were talking pretty heavily uh over the last couple of months just because of all the history of even like the performance bagger movement and how much how much was going on in like oh four with that oh yeah that was just completely off the radar for the rest of the country obviously and um, now how it's blowing up, it's like, yeah, we. I, I want to know. like, Just like you want to know about all this FXR history, I'm like, dude, I want to know who the first two to put T-bars on his goddamn bagger was. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's just the same shit, man. I, I, I go up there and I sit down with people and you start hearing stories and putting shit together. And, you know, I, I hang out with my buddy Steve that had that trendsetters and he's, you know, He's a shit talker, but he'll sit there and tell me all these stories about Jessup from way back in the day, and because his dad and them, they all used to fuck around with each other and shit yeah. like that. And it's like, okay, oh, yeah, shit, let me hear this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. John, he posted up that picture not too long ago uh, with the fringe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Have you seen that picture? Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. classic, dude. Yeah. How do you? How does it feel like having John across the country now? Like, you feel like you lost um, a piece of. Dude, I know I was, he's still back so much. But, yeah, yeah. You and know. honestly, I've been super busy with all of this stuff, um, my busy work schedule, and then this stuff. Like, I haven't done shit else. You know, yeah. Like made a uh, Monday night taco thing, you know, riding a couple times with my buddies, you know, just in the past couple of weeks. But that's that's pretty much it. But yeah, um, I do stop in the shop usually pretty regularly. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I haven't been in. This Where are you at? So. Like, I, I've, I feel like I've asked this before, but up there, like, what city is it? <laughs> it's Galt. So, so yeah, G A L T. So it's um, basically goes Stockton, Lodi, then Galt. Okay, okay. Yeah, so so you're right up there with especially all those t- those taco Monday night taco guys. Yeah, yeah Monday night yeah. taco gang. Yeah. Yeah. So M N T A. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to say gay. <laughs> it's that beer, man. It's got me got me getting weird. Yeah. But you, when I was up there, you were like leaving work, and you so you you work all the way in the bay. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, but you're yeah, there so for I a couple commute. nights, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, like, I just found out that you guys have traffic here too. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's y'all. Yeah, you're, you're here. Yeah, no. and uh, <laughs> well, no. Last time he came, he found out we had homeless people. Yeah, I was like, damn, and you guys have homeless people tra- here too. I thought it was just, <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was just California. I don't know if he'll say he was joking now, but he sounded a hundred percent serious, <laughs> surprised. I mean, when he saw that we had homeless people. Yeah, dude, have you been to Austin lately? 
it's ridiculous. No, but I, mean, I drive on 35W every day, and it yeah. takes me an hour and a half to go 20 miles. So. No, I'm just talking about the homeless people. Oh, yeah. Like, it, it looks like Venice in Austin now. Yeah. Or... When Which, I go to Austin, Austin I stop at Cedar Park, so I don't actually get into Austin. I never, yeah, I never, actually, <laughs> I never actually go all the way. I actually stopped, like, I was just having this conversation where it's like, look, I don't, I don't do shit in Austin anymore. Like, I remember back in the day, you know, there was so much stuff going on that, like, I felt like I was in Sixth Street every once in a while, but like, I, I try to avoid that area because there's just so many people, and it's like, I don't want to do lines and shit. Yeah. And masks and be around, you know, people that are on that extra shit. Oh, yeah, totally. I'd rather just, you know, stay on the outskirts and, yeah, you know, Cedar Park's just on the right side of the town where you don't have to get deep into Austin, so, yeah, you know. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah, we have all that here. Yeah, we got everything. Yeah. And in and out <sighs> I told him, man, he was hungry. I was like, dude, we got this burger place. Yeah. Probably haven't tried it yet, <laughs> but it's called in and out <laughs> <laughs> and it's supposed to take him to Clown Burger. Well, they, they close at like three thirty. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. I, I still haven't had a Clown Burger yet. No, because when I, I went to that, another one of those. Yeah, when I went there, but like they ran out time. of yeah, they ran out of burgers like well, an I, hour and a half into. I didn't expect it. that many people, and they definitely they're closed Sunday and I think Monday, and mm-hmm. that was a Saturday, so I don't think they go into their their weekend. Yeah, yeah. Expecting an extra like three hundred people to show up at their door yeah. wanting burgers. <laughs> Everyone ordering triples yeah. cheeseburgers. Yeah. yeah. Was the last time you were here the Giddy Up trip? Yeah. Yeah. So you need to don't take him to the rodeo. Yeah. No, or no, no. you don't go to the you rodeo. Did, yeah, you don't take me to the rodeo and then me honey dick you into getting on the bull. <laughs> and then you don't ride the bull. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you went all summer off again. Hey, hey. It worked was, out. <laughs> it worked out splendidly for me. Yeah. I got no I got no regrets. <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah, and then um what are you doing? What what's your what's your FXR? What's your plan? Man, I was I was trying to leverage, I think it's the right word to use, a couple of different things because I want to build it. I really want to build it out. I want to. I don't want to do a full fairing one, though. I want to do something different, uh, something skinny, something tight. Um, I still have the dreams of the chop FXR, mm-hmm. you know, but that's that's an 82 project. And people send me 82s all the time. They find, but and they're clean as fuck, but they're like, I'm not, you know, 82 is not very special in general. So like I'm not spending seven. Ones? <laughs> no, <laughs> not online. Uh, but like it's special to me. But I yeah. just I don't. I, what I want to do with it, it's like I don't want a nice one. I want a fucked up, cheap, yeah. good deal. You yeah. know what I mean? And then from there I'll build that. But this one, um, the thing is that it runs and rides. It leaks everything everywhere. Yeah. But I was just telling him yesterday. I rode it back from the house to here. And I'm like, I hadn't rode this thing in like three weeks, and I just go in the garage, turn the key on, choke it starts right up it's like it's it's like the bike that you feel like it's always going to break down but it gets me everywhere yeah you know when i first bought my rp that's how it was i mean that was my only vehicle for like the first nine months i had it and when i bought it it leaked out of i think every possible (laughs) gasket it could leak out of but i put probably twenty thousand miles on it those nine months yeah just because it's my only vehicle so i couldn't Mm -hmm. even tear it down to fix it i was just like well well let's see if this works and it just it, it never even died i just eventually swapped the motor and everything but it, Originally, yeah. I wanted to build the bike or, or customize it and take it to Sturgis this year. That was yeah. my goal. But um, all the people that I wanted to work with on the project, you know, a lot of people don't have products, you know. And, and the way I want to build it, like I need, you know, I need a motor. I need a tranny. I need this. I got this and this. And there's so many things that I need to come together. So, you know, I just don't know. Whenever I decide to do it and actually tear it apart, I got a couple parts for it, but not yeah. much. It's like when it actually happens, it's like then it'll happen quick. But last time, the last FXR I had, I bought like a thousand dollars worth of shit, but I bought a thousand dollars worth of shit that I don't need till the end of the project. Right. So I had like she had everything. Yeah. You know, I think I hit up you because I was like, "Hey, man, who has that Brembo rear caliper?" Oh yeah. And I ended up buying the one from a power plant. Yep. And I'm like, fuck yeah. I'm like, I don't need this right now. Yeah. <laughs> I need so much other shit. Right. And I just, and I, I bought that and I bought some fucking boosted Brad pegs and, and a shifter arm. I'm like, cool. why did I spend a thousand dollars on two things that I don't need till the end of the project? Right. You know, I could have upgraded the suspension or got all the primary stuff dialed in, things like that. But I just. Totally. Yeah. And I feel like, so this is the first um, FXR that I've, like, I just got the frame. I'm, you know, different motor, yeah. different. Everything so clean slate, and I never really. I mean, working on bikes, I feel like I've done pretty much almost everything. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but this on this bike, this on this bike, this yeah. on this bike. So this is the first time where I'm like, okay, I get to pick everything. But the fucked, pu- fucked up part about that is that you actually have to pick everything. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you don't just have the whatever rear fender. You're like, but okay. But the first one you're doing that's not a stockish either. Yeah. Because usually, you're, yeah. I mean, all yours have just been like super clean, slightly modified stock bikes, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's true. That's true. It is the first one you're actually stepping out. Doing yeah. some things I think could be questionable, you know, might work, might not. Paint the I'm, yellow, I'm still dude. on the, uh, I'm still on the fence on. We'll Are see. you really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, okay. I told you that. I told you okay. I'm not your big thing that you got going on. This I'm not is, a big was, fan of. This must mm, be like what it's like to listen to a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, that's uh, <laughs> that's yeah. I mean, building a bike. I mean, starting. I mean, you're picking everything, and everything you yeah. decide to do. It affects the other things, and you got to make sure that everything is cohesively working together. Correctly, yeah. You know, it's it's a it's a daunting uh, task. Yeah. Well, the working together thing, I think that's a big key that I feel like a lot of people miss. We talk about it a lot. Yeah. Like I've said before about yours, like, I know you know about flow, and mm-hmm. I talk about. I always bring up Jessup. He's one of the few guys I know who can drop serious money in a bike, yeah. and it still looks so good because it all works. When yeah. so many times I see guys with deep pockets throw money at bikes, and it's like, well, that. That well, part doesn't really flow with that part over there, and I feel like well, there's a lot of thought that goes into that. Yeah, I know? used to tell when I used to actually do a lot more customizing for people and customers. I used to tell them like, "Look, pick, show me the three things you can't live without that yeah. you want to do on this bike, and the rest of it, it has to work with those parts." Like because, and I always say like this: like if a customer builds a bike, you see it because they got nothing that goes together. Yeah. They just like, buy they shit they cool like. Parts yeah. Too. Totally. yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't work. They got yeah. chrome wheels, contrast cut shit over here. Right. You know, this. And it's like, dude, like, you need to find things that look like. If you want to build an OG bike, like an, o, like an OG, like, Pro Street style, like a 90s style bike, yeah. you're not putting fucking parts that just came out from, you know, somebody recent. Like, it needs to have a flow and a style that fits yeah, that. Exactly. The calipers need to look like those Nest ones, or I think Nest made those old. Yeah, yeah. Nest, like, PM. Nest, yeah, PM. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the PMs. Yeah, those. Right. They need to have that look. You yeah, know what like, I mean? Like. You don't throw a fucking MJK swing arm on a For fucking... Sure. Yeah, and it might even be a cool part. Yeah, but it's it, badass. Yeah, but it doesn't work with that build. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just... It's, it's all that stuff. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, trying to map it all out, making sure everything fits, um, and then, you know, hunting down the parts on top of that. So. Yeah, so this this look, is it... You know, you're going for a 90s vibe, right? Yeah, so it'll be um, kind of, I guess, quasi-90s, um, not as low, just so that way I can still, you know, Ride, ride it. it, yeah, rideable. Um, Air ride? <laughs> no, <laughs> but um, yeah. So it'll have. Um, I'll probably end up posting a picture of it, you know, on the page, so that, just so that way you guys can look at. I feel like I'm talking in code though, because you haven't really posted yeah. a picture. That's why I want to throw out there what mm-hmm. I was talking yeah. about. <laughs> um, yeah. So it'll have um, chopper guys swing arm chromed. Um, I found a screaming eagle Ness uh, diamond cut top end Damn. on eBay, and it turns out that it was like two cities over i hit the dude up i was like hey man i'll, I'll give you x amount um and i'll just come pick it up if that's cool with you he's like Psh, dude for sure yeah i got the whole top end i think it was like 450 bucks with the pistons oh shit you know it's it's all obsolete shit. jugs and uh, heads and everything heads yep yeah, all right. that that's fucking and it dude he, um so i took it to um a motor guy after and he, to clean up the um valve seats and everything like that make sure everything was good before mm-hmm. i put it together and he's like dude this thing has probably 300 miles on it like everything's brand new, Damn. so I was stoked. Um, and um, to tie in the diamond cut, because diamond cut, it was really popular back it, then. This is what I'm talking about. Since yeah. he's talking about, I just said he hadn't posted, so I didn't want to blow him up. But so um, I'm not generally a fan of diamond cut, but I think he might be able to pull it off. Yeah, so, I love when people pull off stuff I don't like. It definitely happens. Yeah, yeah. So uh, contrast, you know, black motor diamond yeah. cut um, fins on the motor. And then I got nine spokes and diamond cut just the lips mm-hmm. where the contrast would be. So had those diamond cut. Isn't the company lips. that does that, are they out of California? I couldn't no, remember. Um, well, the place I went to was uh, Diamond Heads. Yeah, where are they at? Vegas. Vegas, that's right. I yeah. knew it was somewhere west. Yeah. so It's kind of um, easy to say from here, though. N- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that way, right? <laughs> right. It's over there. Um, but, uh, yeah, diamond cut those. And then I'll have um, Ness fairing with uh, that windshield um, you know a bunch of nest parts um, kind of a different it's almost like a ducktail nest rear fender 
Dude, I'm into that right now. So I it's don't, not a full. It's not a full duck. You know, like yeah, a yeah, full yeah. fucking. Sleep. I just I don't know what it is. I don't. I think it's when that new uh, Fat Bob came out, the new Soft Tail. It just kind of had that Bob rear fender. Mm-hmm. I was like, fuck, I like that. And that last FXR I had, the low rider that I got from Brad had a duck tail fender on it, and I just kept sitting in the shop, and I just the way it was sitting there, I was like. I fucking dig that. You know, I know it's not popular. I know it's not the look, but it you know, it. I f- yeah. Who is that? The the dude up by you. He did one with it recently. What's his name? Um, which one? He's up near you. Oh, okay. And, no, no, I have like, I have like you know, that FXR guys dude oh, in Northern yeah. California. Yeah, like he just used one on his build. He was like, kind of like a little '90s inspired. I just think it's different, I right? It. I yeah. think it's different. It's like a, you know, like. It's kind of like breaking the norm, like, you know, because I, I have all these preconceived ideas of what an FXR should look like based on my limited time that I've been involved in liking yep. and knowing about these bikes. And so, like, when you see something like that rear fender sitting on it, but it has the bars that I want, you know, and I'm like, fuck, man, I, I, I feel like that that skinny, narrow vibe with that fender fucking works. I don't like the tail, the tail light being tucked up in it. Like, I would have... That look, that fender with some like a little bit of fabrication to make something nicer for a tail light. So, I mean, like, so this, so this one is actually it's a fiberglass nest uh, yeah. rear fender, and it kind of has like, um, as you get to the the top, it swoops down, kind of has like almost like a, um, a, not a coffin shape, but kind of like a oval shape on the yeah, top. Yeah. Then a Lucas tail light fits in there, and then there's a flat part where the license plate is. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and then that little hump. Um, matches the front fender, which is a um, XLCH mm-hmm. uh, front fender. Wait, which sportster. one is that? So it's essentially a Sportster or FXR front fender, but it's got like a almost like a um, a, a ridge. ridge. Yeah, okay. a ridge on top, and so that coincides. This is how my brain works. I have to like match that front fender yeah, to yeah. the rear fender. Like if it flows, at least if I have a reason to why I chose mm-hmm. those things, then that that's how it works for me. You know? No, it makes sense. Yeah, it works together. Yeah, and um, like it's funny because my wife will be like, "Why do you have this on here? Why do you have this? This is ugly. This is dumb." You know, I'm like, "You don't get it. Watch this yeah. matches this. This process. matches It'll this. Work. This matches Come this." Come together. You thought the book was a stupid idea too. You know, like no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, she's been su- <laughs> she's been supportive of me Hi, the Daisy. whole time. Like, yeah. <laughs> Hi, babe. Um, yeah. No, but she's been she's been really like on that topic. Like, how many hours I have into this? Mm-hmm. Like. After dinner, kid goes to bed, and I was working on this for hours, like inside watching movies by yourself. You know, like I feel bad, like now looking back, um, but now like I've been watching movies and stuff, like kind of making up for it. You know, <laughs> but um, honeydews. Yeah, it's it's like she she definitely like allowed for the passion, right? Mm-hmm. This takes a lot of time. The page alone, the book, yeah, like yeah. all this other shit, like it takes time, and. Like time is that one resource that you can't get back mm-hmm. ever. Like oh, trust me, I know. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it, it's it's valuable, at least to um, life in general. You know what I mean? Just yeah. Like well, that, that's why works. you know, like not to go down that rabbit hole of the the ladies and and our and and our passions, but you know that's why I've I always press uh, put pressure on my wife to understand that every it, that we have so much going on. Like just same thing with you, man. Like this podcast. Mm-hmm you know, has its, you know, like we've been doing podcasts almost twice a week here. To, I mean, yeah. his lady's pissed. My lady's pissed. Yeah. We're up here getting drunk and she tunes in on, on YouTube and it's like, oh, they're having fun. Oh, look at these guys just drinking beer. They're having fun. And like, no, this, this is a job, but it's yeah. just like, it's still, it comes off to the people because when you do something that you're passionate about, it is fun. Yeah, right? oh, totally. But between this, between like the events which you understand about, yep. uh, the the social media and being being available for that, plus the actual job that we do, yeah, you know, it's like it's very it's very consuming, man. And it's like I I, I try to like beat it down my wife's throat. Wow, <laughs> uh, beat it. I just try beat to it. tell her. Just, just <laughs> like, don't listen to uh, this. Yeah, <laughs> I just try to tell her like, look, we need to look at every moment we spend together, and instead of just frivolously like let's just not let's just be lazy days yeah. like ah we can do that but we're both not doing something right yeah, now yeah, like yeah. we can do the things that you want me to do whenever i'm doing something else totally. <laughs> you know what i mean yeah so yeah and i mean the way have you ever seen the show um homeland no i haven't okay so it's this about this crazy lady 
who she works in the CIA and she's doing all these like trying to find Bin Laden back in the day, right? Yeah. Well, she has a uh, like a um, a mental like schizophrenia or I can't remember what it was. Yeah. But you go into her apartment and she's off her meds and this is when she gets most of her work done and there's fucking pictures everywhere with like strings tied up here and here yeah. and here and here like all over this apartment and like I feel like that's how my brain works like I have all of this stuff going on yeah. and I'm like it all makes yeah. sense to me like don't like just don't touch anything yeah don't touch anything I know where everything's at don't fuck with it like we'll get this done and then I'll go back to this or whatever but yeah like I'm the same way like I I can't think about a lot of different things at once I have to finish like if I'm if I'm doing something, I have to see it through. You yeah. know what I mean? For sure. It's like some uh, you know I was explaining to one of my customers today uh, on a bike paint job that I'm doing. I'm like, because I wanted to start on Monday, and then I started looking at what I had this week and what I got to do next week. Next week, me and my wife's anniversary, so it's like a half work week for me. Right. I'm like, well, if I just put it off another two weeks, then I have two solid weeks with no interruptions. Yeah. And therefore, I won't, you know, because it gets kind of weird when you're you're in the groove. Totally. And then you got to stop to do this or go out of town, in which we travel quite a bit. Yeah. And um, you come back and you're just not in the same. Yeah, place. it's like yeah. it takes a little bit of uh, it takes a l- few days to get the momentum back into the movement and grooving and working and things like that. So, yeah. And I mean, trust me, like it's you know we have you know me and my wife are I'm pretty excited because we're actually taking a real fucking vacation. Nice. And uh, where it's not like, hey, baby, let's go on a vacation. Two Sturges. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, right. no, we're – I've actually had a point. I, I was telling her last night, I was like, I think for the entire time, like, I want to log out of all my social media. Yep. And I, I know that a lot of people probably do that, but I just don't. You yep. know what I mean? And, and like, literally just not even touch it and look at it and, and be a part of that for, you know, the three days, three nights that we're going to be on. Yep. You know? Yeah. And uh, – then we come back and we're riding to Maine. Oh, nice. Dude. So it's like that's going to start getting closer, and I'm going to start getting antsy, yep. wanting to make get that trip going. So it's, uh, it's a pain in the ass, man. You're stoked, dude. You're oh, stoked, I'm super you're stoked for vacation and then Maine, obviously. But. Yeah, I mean that. And then, you know, after Maine, after the, the Maine trip, we're back here for a week, and then we're in Salt Lake for the uh, bagger race uh, right. there, and then home for a month, and then Sturgis. And it's like, yeah. Shit. Yeah, you know it's see, miles got the triple crown thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's you wanted, you wanted to mention. Let that. me go get another beer first, real quick. Yeah, yeah. Sax, you need a you, beer, dude. I would like you look one. Thirsty. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm pretty. You want one of these Modellos, or yeah. you want to? I'll take a Modelo. Yeah. I drink all go. beer. Young Sax. Thank you, sir. Uh huh. Like I said, I didn't know if it was a, like a rap name, you know, like, is it Y-O-U-N-G, is it Y-U-N-G, and then S-A-X or S-A-C-K-S, you know, like. Well, you know. I'm, I'm definitely not, a, I keep knocking this shit over, it's pissing me off. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm definitely not a rapper. You're not? I can't rap for okay. shit. All right. Uh, yeah, the, last, the last guy that was in pseudo that position was a rapper. <laughs> I don't know if you know that. Shout out to Jesse. So Jesse. <laughs> We remember yeah. Giddy Up 2019. I don't think he watches Come this. on, Rabbit. <laughs> Anyone who was there remembers that. Yeah. Had a little rap battle. At he, did, he didn't rap for us. Right. Yeah. Well, I heard uh, it was him and fucking Joe. Yeah. And Joe just, like, went off, and yeah. he didn't do anything. Right. We still love you, though, Jesse. Yeah. Miss you. Looking yeah. swole. <laughs> yeah, I've been seeing him do his. Uh, he been lifting. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah, he, good. he's all about that now. Yeah. Yeah, he's all in the gym. <coughs> um, we got quite a few people in here saying, what's up? Yeah. You got, see that? Oh, yeah. Seen uh, earlier Lumpy Cam commented. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I like that guy. Yeah, he's got sure. a great Hello, YouTube dude. if Thanks. anyone is interested. He does a lot of good how-tos. He knows what he's doing yep. with uh, the mechanic side. So we'll give a little shout to him. Go check him out. Donnie Hill, what's up, Donnie? Donnie Hill hooked me up with some side covers, I oh, believe. Tight. He's kind of wrong on his burger opinion, but we'll, we'll let it slide. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, and Bishop, no, you're uh, right. Uh, <laughs> give, give me a text me or something, crazy? man. Maybe we'll link up when we get out of here. Yeah, what's up, Bishop? So just send me a text. So I don't forget. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, last thing, Triple Crown. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna talk about Triple Crown. So, so wait, first before we get yeah. in that. We need to talk about the uh, West Coast FXR Jam. Yeah. And so, 
without getting too, I don't know the deal, but what's going on with the whole East Coast shit right now? Um, I really don't know. So <laughs> I feel like the whole, like, before Instagram, like, was um, at least popular or whatever. Like, yeah. um, kind of a hub for FXRs. Yeah. Um, Facebook was the go-to. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. the um, Alpha page, the FXRs, the California page, the garage. Um, that's where all of the information was shared, you know, pictures and all that stuff. Um, and I have, I really don't know any of like the agendas, mm -hmm. but for some reason it's like split, right? Yeah, it's split. It's, it's split. So some people you, wanted to have it in one location. Think, do you guys not think we could really use a real fucking chat room like the OG forums back in the day? No. Off of like Facebook? I mean, no. there's pluses and minuses, dude. I don't, it's not got to fix any. A yeah. lot, of, a lot of. If that you have to physically go to something that's not an app on your phone to be a part of a community that you can get kicked out of by being certain ways or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like Facebook obviously killed the the, the old forums that people used to be a part of yep. because anybody can make their own forum, right? Mm -hmm. But now it's like, fuck, I'm I miss like a real place where people can go and talk. Yeah, but that whole split has nothing to do with the whole. Yeah, yeah, Facebook not the split. Thing. I'm yeah. just saying, like, it's. Yeah. Yeah, that's just a different thing. and I, What I think it was was just certain people wanted it to be, because it moved around a little bit for a year. Just once. Just okay, only so yeah. once. It okay. was always at the Holiday Motel until we it moved it to, to Arkansas the one time. Okay. Bad vibe. Me and Glenda's wreck. Yep. We just agreed to throw it back. But then, I mean, I, the way I see it, a big part was, I was a big proponent. Like, I'm not even going this year. But when they came up about moving it, I know I was a big proponent saying we should move it up north because I always liked the idea of moving it around, especially up north, because mm -hmm. a lot of the diehard guys for the FXR Jam live within 100 miles. Uh -huh. And it's like, yeah, I've been to every one. And it's like, hey, you live right there. Right. I ride 1,000 plus miles. Yeah. All the guys up north from New York, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, those guys are all riding 1,000 plus miles every year. It's like it's easy to be like, hey, I've been every year when it's like going to your local bar. Right. It's like let's see who's willing to go a thousand miles now and give all those north they like Chris and Jeremy and all them, they came down to Arkansas. They you know, they rode all the way down yeah. there, which was even further than North Carolina. So it's like, okay, now let's give it easy for those guys one time. Let's mm -hmm. put it up in New York is how that was my two cents on. I was like, I'm not even going this year, yeah. but if you want my two cents, these guys have rode far every year, let them host it. And let's see who's willing to go. What what of the Florida, North Carolina guys where it's in their backyard? Who's willing to actually ride to the jam further than yeah. you know a couple hours? And I guess kind of like assumed a lot of those guys were like, "No, nah, fuck that." You know, yeah. it's like we're, we're we're gonna we'll just keep doing it here. And so you know, kind of a split happened. And I'm still for it going up yeah. there. Like I said, I can't make it this year. It is too far for me to waste that much time this year. I just I got too many other things going on, but. I'm glad those guys get to do it because, I mean, it is – I like being able to ride to a jam. I mean, that is a big part of the yeah. fun. But it's nice. Like, when it was in Arkansas, I had never even ridden in Arkansas, but I almost felt like we were hosting it. Like, yeah. you yeah. know, when me and Mark rode up there together, I was like, dude, this is weird. Like, all the jams I've been to, I'm like, this is easy. We didn't plan yeah. it. Like, it wasn't some – you know, usually it's some big endeavor. Like, oh, we're going to the jam. Uh, you know, I'm planning this thing for months and stuff, trying to get ready. You know, mm -hmm. I got a week off of work. Yeah. But we went up there, and it was like – 300 miles you know it's like this yeah. is just like a day ride and that was really nice so now all those northern guys who've been a part of this from day one they get to do that you know it's have an easy gym where they get to hang out do more riding there because they didn't ride a thousand miles there a thousand miles back so they can spend more time in the mountains i think the whole point of all this stuff is for it to not be convenient because the whole idea is to ride to these things and see the country mm -hmm. and and then show up and and earn that good time with the homies right yeah and so like Seeing like we were fortunate enough to just it aligned with our trip to to basically crash the jam last yeah. year, and um, it was fun, man. It was a good vibe, you yeah. know. Uh, the the guy that I guess the guy that owns the property or manages wasn't really the greatest. He didn't really like it, but okay. at the, yeah, I mean, I, I heard that he was upset, like I wasn't there. But I mean, I know a lot of people were upset talking about how like they bring in so much money for that hotel. But yeah. I'll tell you from booking the hotel. They're booked because the last couple of years, I was the one who's blocked off the weekend. And we basically took the weekend that they said we could come because they're booked every weekend. So yeah. the idea that that dude needs us more than we need him 
is yeah. very far fetched like because that's a major destination spot. I mean, there's like a lot of carpet like, golf over there. I mean, <laughs> well, everyone on bikes goes there. There's yeah. a BMW yeah, meetup, a whatever you know, a Honda meetup, and then there's the S2000 guys who meet up, the right. slingshot guys who meet. Everyone goes there because yeah. it's. I mean, lots of people good, like it's to a go. Good location, yeah, yeah, it's a great location. So to think like he needs us, he doesn't, and that's why I think. I mean, I don't even know the whole detail of what happened, but he definitely doesn't have to put up with whatever he wants. They got plenty of people coming in there. That's why a does it feel like when? when I mean, I'm just kind of hypothetically speaking here, but why does like things always have to be regional? Like, like. Something started in an area, and it just, you know, like, this works, right? And then people, like, Sturgis. Like, no one's, like, well, we need a Sturgis in Tennessee because there's a Sturgis, Tennessee. You know what I mean? Like, why not just, I don't know, let it be and and just let that whatever. I mean, I don't know the whole story. I'm talking to the dude who started a second jam. So Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, mean, I, I remember talking with, uh, with um fuck, I, th- I think I was talking with uh, Victor, you know, oh, yeah. uh and he was talking about, like, man, like, we should do something here in, like, Pismo Beach. I'm like, dude, Pismo Beach is dope. Yeah. Like, that'd be a fun ride. Oh, for sure. And a dope little beach town to kind of party in. Like, So so initially, um, when I was, when John and I, um, and Dana, um, who was yeah. part of the FXRs of California, mm-hmm. um, Big player early on. Like big player. When I came yeah. in, she was already big. Yeah. So um, um, I met her. I met she, her. Yeah, at she John's hasn't been thing. very active lately, but she yeah. deserves the res- you know some yeah, respect for, sure, for being sure. what she did early, early on in the it's, FXR thing. Yep. And so I remember it the was modern like FXR thing. Super early morning, like um, of that locked and load eye show. She's like, "Hey, the show isn't going on this year. Like, we need to figure out something, right?" So we all kind of got together and we're like, "Hey, we need like let's do a, an FXR jam on the West Coast." So that way everyone can, you know, come out. Mm-hmm. And, um, well, explain who we were talking about. You're talking about, like, when they she canceled the FXRs of California. Yeah. Show, which yeah, was yeah. the third that was like leg of the Triple Crown. Yeah, September. that was. Right. So just to set it up for you. It was like know, the, the Triple Crown was the East Coast Jam, yep. the Sturgis FXR show, and the FXRs of California show, which Dana put on. Yes. Yeah. I, I've, I've had a lot of homies go to that. Yeah. And it, it, is that a, done at a drag strip, right, or something yeah, like that? Yeah, at um, Sacramento Speedway. Yeah, or whatever, yeah. yeah. Um, and it was always, I mean, Fucking great time, dude. Like, everyone came out. Yeah. It was, you know, vendors, all that stuff. Um, awesome show. Um, for whatever reasons, it wasn't going on anymore. And so we were talking about having a West Coast Jam. Um, Jessup and I kind of took that and ran with it. We were looking for places all over, you know, California. Mm-hmm. Um, and the original idea that I thought would be awesome would be to be, like, Central California. So that way you get the Southern California guys. Like, because we were, like... Let's make it semi central so that way everyone can go, right? Yeah. Like it's easy enough for everyone. Um, and so that was the plan. But every hotel there is like $600 a room for a night. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like Central California on the coast, there's no way you could touch yeah, dude. anything, you know? So that's how we um, uh, kind of stumbled into the Topaz Lodge. Yeah. Which is, I don't, you've never been there, right? I haven't been to Lodge, but I've been around there. So yeah, I, I but know like just terrain. that hotel, yeah. like it's it's fucking prime, dude. It is because like coming from the other one, the East Coast Jam, I always thought like the Holiday Motel. People probably don't like it now. I've heard people act like they don't, but everyone loved that spot. It was it I was like the awesome, vibe. Yeah, it was just it was a good size for the amount of people who came. It was a little bit of overflow, but like the whole setup was nice. We could party all night, uh-huh. rocking chairs. I was just like. You know, it was just well, no, it was, it was just a yeah. good spot to party all night in rocking yeah. chairs. I remember when but, I, yeah, and when then when I've thought about other hotels that you know, because I've always go to place on my man, this wouldn't make a good place. You know, it's hard to find a good place that's yeah. going to be that right spot. And the spot that they found though was just perfect. Dude, like the, it's the, a it's a different kind of spot. It's a much bigger hotel, yeah. with a casino and everything, but it works perfect. The yeah. vistas that I've seen of people there that are posting pictures of all the mountains in the background, it just there's good riding, no matter which road you hop yeah. on, leaving Dude, there. Dude, you could close your eyes, spin in a circle, and open them with a, you know, pointed finger, and you go ride that way, and you're going to have a fucking blast. Yeah. yeah. You know? Like, it, it's like that. So, um, yeah, great riding was number one, a place that could accommodate us, and then um, something, like, not too far out of the way. Um, I mean... The hotel has, you know, gas station right there. Mm-hmm. So um, on the on the in the parking lot in the parking lot. I mean, you can fill up right there. Yeah. I generally speaking forget and then have to, you know, tell the guys to pull over and get gas for just for me when they already gassed up the day before. <laughs> but um, 
Yeah, casino, so food all night long. Casino, yeah. Uh, food, diners open. Um, and like you were saying, um, or like you guys were saying, the um, the I think the hotel actually loses money when we're there. Because usually yeah. what happens is they get all the retirees on a bus, ship them out there. They go out there for the weekend or whatever and s- blow a bunch of money in the casino. Yeah. Us, we go there, drink beer, eat food, hang out in the parking lot, and nerd out on bikes. We're yeah. not spending the fucking, you know, like, we're not gambling. There's some guys that gamble yeah, and shit, yeah. but, like, everyone else is doing doing other stuff. So, Well, this is what I, I, you know, being involved in the camp out stuff that we do and then our other buddies do, it's easy to go to something and be like, you, you put it like this, Giddy Up, right? That was yeah. my first, like, chopper show that I went to, and I'm like, fuck, this is amazing. And then, so I wanted everything to be like giddy up instead mm-hmm. of like letting everything be what it is. You know what I mean? Like appreciating it. Appreciating yeah. It's it like for the this, yeah. you know, oh yeah, this is cool, but it's not quite the East coast jam. Uh-huh. It's yeah. like, well, yeah. let it be what it is right. though. You know, like, why does it have to be that? Totally. You know, you totally. can still, it's funny. You say it cause the East coast jam is the first one I went to that was at a hotel. Cause all I had done was camping shows before that. And I remember I was a little skeptical. I was like, a show at a hotel. Like this seems kind of lame. Like I'm yeah. used to like, yeah. We, you know, you pack what you can, your bike, you know, you yeah. got your tent and stuff. And mm-hmm. that's everything I'd ever been to. Never been to a rally or nothing even. It was all just giddy up kind of events. And I thought it was going to be, I was kind of half expecting to be super lame, but it definitely wasn't. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, it was. That's why it's like you got to yeah, really have cool an open mind things. to events and let yeah. them kind of show you what they are. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I, I feel like, uh, I feel like that whole idea of, of like that, old school style motel hotel kind of thing where the it's kind of like a horseshoe that opens up to the the center i feel like that shit's dope like i i can see performance bagger dudes doing that i can see so many different people going shout out on that i was talking to Corey Mm -hmm. at your camp out yeah and i was telling him i was like dude look around like how many people would you guess were there we th- we think there was about three fifty ish. Okay, so you say three to four hundred, three to four hundred guys, and a good chunk of them are on baggers. Whether they're just kind of newer baggers or newer soft tails or like you know newer baggers with thirty forty grand in them, and we get there and when me and Corey pulled up, it was storming. Yeah, it stormed all night, and the whole place was muddy as fuck the whole weekend, and it was just nasty out. A good time. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, I was telling Corey the, the day we were leaving, I was like looking around, I was like, look at all these bikes. You got like forty, fifty thousand dollar bikes, and these dudes all came out here camping. And cause I was like, how many guys do you think would be doing this if it weren't for Jace? How many of these bagger dudes who are like, you know, wearing even nice clothes on beautiful bikes, expensive paint jobs, camping mm-hmm. in, in the, the mud, mud yeah. outside mm-hmm. for a whole weekend? I'm like, I feel I just I, that's a shout out on your direction, just like getting. getting I mean, yeah, I mean, I feel yeah. like that's. Like, uh, how many of those guys do you think would be doing that if you hadn't started well, that? I mean, forget just your camp up, but, like, promoted that whole idea. Like, mo- I well, feel like those are kind of guys who go and do the hotel yeah, show. Yeah, I mean, stuff. they definitely are, but, I mean, same thing. I was that guy that did the hotel first until I met guys like you. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, but that's and super, so it's, it's, it's it always cool it's a way of uh, It's a way of paying it forward, but at the same time, you're trying to... Uh, it's almost crossing gen- um, genres. Yeah, you know, it is, It's like yeah. you're taking... You're showing... These bad guys, like, look, you don't have to have a chopper to go do chopper kind of event, you know, where you're going to play in the mud all weekend and stuff, you know? Right. It's like, you can do it on your bagger. It's still fun. You don't have to yeah. have a chopper, dress up this way and stuff, do your thing, but still go totally. have fun yeah. doing it that way. Well, so it the analogy I would use is this is the same way an artist becomes his own artist, right? Mm-hmm. Whenever you're into something, you're always inspired by people. Yeah. So you have your inspirations, that, and they're never like, if you're only inspired by one artist and you're just copying somebody, mm-hmm. if you're inspired by multiple artists and that helps create your DNA of who you are. Yep. And so when it, in my opinion, because I've been in the bike scene long enough to have experienced different scenes, I'm able to like extract the things that I find absolutely exhilarating. Yeah. Like, and not that, not saying that we, that I created this, I'm just promoting this. Like, Hey, let's do it this way. I feel like you mm-hmm. created it for that scene. Like yeah. you said, like taking from multiple artists, like, You took, like, look, I like baggers. That's the kind of bikes I like. But I like how the chopper dudes party. Like, I like how they do events. Right. And it's like, I I don't have to buy a chopper to party like that, do I? You're like, no, I can just, let's get the bagger dudes to do it. Mm -hmm. And look, at like I said, you had three, four hundred people from all over the country partying how you say to party. Man, you know, and I I I, think it worked. 
I commend so many people because they rode through some shitty conditions. It, the, everything above Interstate 40 in America was wasn't covered in snow, but it was snowing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the imminent rain that was taking place Friday and people still showed up and made the best of the situation. And that's what it's all about. Right. Yeah. You know, like this, this year's camp out, it probably won't be like that next year. As far as like the conditions, it might be much better or it might be much worse, but yeah. you know, that's kind of the thing. Well, it's that's like the thing that happens when you camp, you just, yeah, never it's know. like, it's the expectations thing, right? Like, Every year, it's like when you go to Sturgis every year, you can be like, oh, I've seen Mount Rushmore five times in a row every year now. Like, why well, do I don't want to go back? I'm like, because Sturgis is going to be different this year. It's different every year. It's the same, but it's different. Right. It's the same place, but the story is different. Like, you know what I mean? The whole adventure well, you is talk to ten people at your camp out, and they all have a different story. Yeah. yeah. Depending on different which crowd they were hanging out with, you know? Different yeah. experiences, you know? Like, some people are, you know, camping every weekend. And other people, last time they camped, they were, you know, 12 years I old. I mean, don't get me know? wrong. There was a couple, like, bougie motherfuckers that had, like, motorhomes. Like, because you, apparently you can uh, rent a motorhome and have it dropped off at the campground you're going to stay yeah. at. And there was a couple of those. Yeah. But and to they me, still rode their bike through that mud. Yeah. And their yeah. boots were muddy because yeah. there was no way of avoiding that shit. Yeah. <laughs> and that's kind of the thing that I think that uh, inspires me as well is, um, so, I mean, like, fuck, dude. Like, the last couple of years, especially last year and this year already, Last year, I mean, last year I think uh, I, I think I rode to California last year. No, I drove to California last year. Um, dude, I was on the road like five, like over a thousand miles away, like five or six times last year. Yeah. And then this year it's already online to do the same thing, and it's like, fuck, man, like, like truck and trailer is looking real nice right now. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah. just to be able to get things done because the obligations are becoming so uh, – Hard to Headed reach, yeah, chill, you know? Um, and, and I think the real thing is getting everyone together, for, you know, like, that's the common goal, right? So whether they're in a trailer, whether they're, you know, yeah. if that's what gets in there, hey, that's what fucking gets yeah, in there. Yeah, and I do the West Coast Jam, I'm flying and riding. I've got three bikes I can ride. Yeah. Maybe yours. Uh -huh. So, but well, that's how I'm going, because, yeah. I mean, I just, I like the I time, said, my, my, my time's booked this year. I but at the same time, like, you, you've earned the ability to, to, to have that opportunity, and that's what happens when you put in the time riding and being uh, available to meet these people and going to these things like campouts or jams or, or giddy-ups or Born Freeze. Born Free is a huge event that I love, but I feel like it, it, it's harder to get that, I hate to use this word, but intimacy that you would get at a, at a giddy-up campground, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, or a campout or a jam where you're kind of more forced to be in the same area. Born Free is a badass show, but it's yeah. it's so big. It's, it's, it's just sure. different things. Like, you know? yeah, yeah, it's different like, things. When we went, shit, we were... Checking out bikes in the parking lot, I think more than anything. Yeah, you know, like yeah. just checking. I out felt like it went by so fast. Like yeah. I was like, there wasn't even a done already. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you talk to like two people. Next thing you know, it's like and everybody's leaving. But yeah, somebody yeah. was like, yeah, it, it closed in like an hour, and I was like, holy shit! Like, there's some people hadn't seen, we hadn't seen Tony yet and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, dude, we gotta walk around and start finding people. Yeah, for sure. Did y'all see the butthole there? Uh, we saw. We're, we're there. <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, um, the, apparently the way you do it is you do a wet t-shirt contest. I can't talk about this on the podcast. Oh, the, the most oh, I titties I saw at your camp out were on your t-shirt. Well, you were in the wrong spot because uh, yeah, my chick showed her tits. Well, I, I saw it from the back, but yeah, that, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> she showed it to the three people on stage. <laughs> um, but back to the Triple Crown. Yeah, so yeah. the Triple Crown was something that, um, you know, East Coast Jam, Sturgis, West um, – it yeah. was FXRs of California. And the four people who did it. Yeah, the four people that did it um, helped Clint, me out with Joe. Yep. Um, Lump and. John. Who else? Did you say John Lump? Yeah, John Lump. And John Lump. Yeah. Just throw that out. Those are only yeah. four people who've done all three. To do it. Um, yeah. And so, I mean, looking at the posts, following the, um, you know, the adventure, it's always something like that's legendary. You know what I mean? Like something yeah. like it's the Triple Crown. In one year. In one way. year, yeah, right? Yeah. So same year. That means you have to take X amount They're of vacation. all right near each other, too. Yep. X amount of vacation. It's all within two months, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not like, if you're on the East Coast, you're going to the East Coast Jam, then going to the West Coast Jam, then going to Sturgis, right? Mm -hmm. If you're on the West Coast, you're going to the East Coast Jam, coming back for the West Coast mm -hmm. And then going to Sturgis, yeah. right? So that's you're going, all your vacation for a year. Yeah, you get a that's real a job. <laughs> like, you know, so, some people, you know, work their own schedule. Yeah. You know, can move it around, stuff like that. 
um, which is perfectly fine and fucking great if you can do it. But um, I just wanted to kind of shed some light on that and like sponsor it, right? So yeah, um, whoever does it will be getting a signed um, triple crown, you know, book. Yeah, and then um, if there's any companies out there, so that wait, wait, I'm sorry, I, I zoned out. So yeah. this year it's gonna be East which, Coast, Gen- East Coast, New York, East Coast, New York, Gen- York. Yep. Sturgis. Sturgis and, and the West, then Coast, West Coast. Okay, yep. yeah. same. And the, that the four people who did it did it the same year together. Yep. And nobody's done it since. That was three or four years ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got to give Joe a shout because he came to the camp out on a fucking fairingless, just OG fucking FXR like FXRC or some shit or S yeah. or whatever. He wrote a P there. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then P? wrote home on C. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Um, but no, everybody that rode with him like. I've been getting messages. They fucking are like, dude, this was fucking epic. Had, you know, they had some shitty weather on the way back. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, they're, that's what it's about, man. Yeah. Like, because those fucking bonds and friendships and totally the and breakdowns, the figuring it out, dude, whatever, you dude. know, don't know, don't have a place to sleep or whatever, figuring it out. You know, it's all part the of the hate adventure. you get for the people you're riding with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who's ridden a long distance with friends knows it can be your best friend. Yeah, yeah. There's a point in that like, trip where you're gonna be like, "This motherfucker, if he God even looks at me, it. yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna fucking light him up." He's like, "You want a burger? No, I look like I want a fucking burger." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it actually. No, don't good. fucking ride anywhere with Mar- or with a. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's why I ride by. Me. Is that not everyone? Maybe that's why I like riding by myself. I don't yeah. know. You have to have a. a, a you have to have a lot more patience to uh, do things with friends. That's why, like, I think some of us, like, find those those friends that we groove with real well. Yeah. And um, trust me, like, I got I got my boys that we do our trips with, and every once in a while, you know, we have a big group of friends, and not everybody's done the trips with us. And when one of them comes in, it really does kind of fuck up the groove because cohesively we have, like, six, five of us that are, like, in tune all the time. Mm-hmm. But we have, like, a mat, you know, we have, like, 15... 18 dudes in our like real Large good crew yeah. in our crew and just, a lot of them just haven't done the big trips with us yet and uh i mean fuck Jaden, you know we call him dragon he yeah. just fucking just disappeared last year <laughs> yeah i mean we're <laughs> we i don't know just, if you've ever ridden with joe for who? like gone anywhere with joe you uh, ride there with joe but then joe just like keeps on going like or if you've ever <laughs> rode with dan yeah, yeah. yeah, the yeah. same way. You, right. You're not staying with. Yeah, him. yeah. I feel which like is, his which mission is, is to lose everybody he's with. Yeah, like I, I don't, I don't know if I've ridden back with. I rode with Joe a bunch, but yeah. I've never ridden back with Joe because yeah. you know, like he's oh I, yeah, I'm going over here to meet with, with these people. I'm like, well, fuck, man, like I got to work tomorrow. You know, like I got to get home. Or yeah, whatever. but um, no, and and I hear you. It's it's always it's always stuff like that, and I feel like it's all part of the adventure. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's all part of the. Of the um, situation and just kind of enjoying it, dude. It's it it, you know, like uh, I think I was trying to articulate this the other day when I was talking to the to the homies, but it's like, man, like, is this not like a fucking awesome time to be alive? You yeah, know what I mean? Like riding sure. bikes and doing what we're doing and finding the groove and and having such a massive amount of, if not close friends, at least good acquaintances across the country. Totally, that you can kind of lean on and come hang out with or have a reason to go to that town. It's like. And the network ability, like yeah. think yeah. network. Think back, like there's no way that you would fucking meet anyone across the country unless you fucking knew them. Yeah, you know what I mean, unless you, had you their, went to a I rally, mean, unless you had yeah. their home phone number and then you called them and by chance they were home and you, they answered. I mean, you me know? and Nick, we we met on Instagram. Yeah, shit was bananas. Yeah, bananas. I remember that. <laughs> I think it was Facebook. I don't know. Either way, but uh, was that the which that was the podcast we that did was the in? First yeah. one. Was it the first? Official the, the first one? one that you actually released, okay, yeah, yeah. Or I, I, I did not do it very smoothly. Add five bananas mm-hmm. into the podcast, <laughs> but this is the Nick who put me up to that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that like the network ability, and then for you saying that this is a great time to be alive, it really so it made me think of something when I was talking to Ray Dre, who um, he's in the book. He's one of the guys that worked on <clears throat> the FXRs, and he's actually one of the guys that he was the painter mm-hmm. the one that came up with all the obscure colors you know um he actually did all of like the typography for the yeah, designed all the decals yeah. of the timeless fucking you know yeah decals that we know of um i was talking to him and he's like hey man you seem like you're in touch i was like ah, i wouldn't go that far you know it's like he's like i feel like you know what's going on what is if you were 
let me put this. Um, he's like, what do you what do you think about Harley Davidson and where they're at? And I was like, you know, the brand I love. You know what I mean? Like it's for my my soul. Yeah. Um, I love riding the bikes. I love all that, everything that comes along with it. What I don't love is kind of where, where I feel like they've been, and heading. You know what I mean? Like I feel like back then it was very um, passion based, rider based. This is the best. We're gonna do the best that we can and get it done and have put out a great product. You know, mm-hmm. no cost cutting, no anything like that. Whatever the fucking best bike that we can make is, that's what it is. He's like, dude, that's like I feel the same exact way. It's changed, right? Mm-hmm. And um, he's like, if you were king of Harley Davidson, like the, if you could change anything about Harley Davidson, what would you do? I was like, it, I took a while to think about it, and I told him. Like, you know that feeling. You know that feeling. I don't know you, but you probably know that feeling. Where you're on a fucking stretch of highway. It's hot as fuck. There's sweat dripping down your face. Smells like fucking sweat in your, in your helmet, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's hot. You're like half a tank of gas. You're like, fuck, I kind of want to stop. I'm just too fucking hot. I want to jump in a cooler. And then you look over, and your buddy's right there with you. Mm-hmm. Like, that feeling of being on an open road seeing like your shadow your buddy's right there you know riding Mm -hmm. in your shadow essentially that feeling if you could put that in a bottle and give it to the guys working at harley davidson like that's what i would do because i feel like they've kind of like they've kind of lost that you know what i mean i know that there's like incentives for those guys to get their motorcycle license Mm -hmm. you literally get like a raise or whatever it is you know like yeah and i feel like like Man, they should just they should be doing that, you know. Like, if you work at Harley Davidson, at, I, from my understanding, if you're at a certain level, you get rental bikes. Like, you could ride, pick a bike, yeah, ride it, you know. Like, and so um, I feel like that's that's the one thing that. Well, that that thing you just described that 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 person that homie that maybe not maybe you don't even know him that well, you know, that person you're riding next to. You know how many people go into Harley buying a bike and want to make that friend to have that. That oh, same yeah. feeling. Totally. It's like, it sounds sentimental, which it, it really is, but, like, that shit means so much. And it's like, it even means more to me. Even now, I, I'm so fortunate to get around with so many people that I, I find inspiring, badass, or, like, you know, uh, just, like, it's almost like I'm collecting Pokemon cards of dudes I've got to ride with. You and know all those mean? Pokemon cards, each one is a mile. Yeah. You know, and, like, yeah. you could think back, like, oh, remember that? Adventure when we were on, on here and so and so's bike broke down or it wasn't even a breakdown but we stopped here for whatever reason and then we saw the amazing view or whatever it is like I don't all those know about for you but my biggest one with you is riding back from Born Free and it, I feel like it's always that way because we've been on like I mean not a ton of rides I've seen we live across the country yeah but like you know we had a lot of fun rides at the West Coast jams and stuff yeah and then I guess we didn't really ride one we into Giddy up but then coming back from there and it was just so fucking miserable. Going, yeah, I know, yeah, dude. Like, I going know. through Central California, yep. and everyone's like, "Why'd you guys go that way?" And they're giving you, sh- they're giving you shit. That I'm like, "Why didn't you take them up the coast?" And you're like, "I was in a rush. I wanted to get home." Yeah, and but that shit was so miserable. But at least for me, I feel like those are always the more memorable ones. Because yeah. like yeah. we were riding through, and I was like, "Dude, this is the hottest part of my whole trip, and yeah. I've been across the whole country, right?" And this is it was the entire way it was so hot. It it's crazy nothing. that, like, in my in my memory, I remember so many details of your trip that year, of you leaving to go to the, I think you went East to Coast. Jacksonville first, right? Yeah, I went to Jacksonville and first. And then East Coast, East Coast Jam. Jam, and then you kind of. West Coast Jam. I dropped Glenda off at the yeah, house, and then, and then I changed my chain, because my chain had stretched real bad. Yeah. Then headed to the West Coast Jam, or no, then headed to Born Free. Born Free. And then up to Nick's house, yeah. and then the West Coast Jam. Yep. Yeah. I mean, like, that shit, I don't know, man, like. Those are the milestones I think that we all really want, and it, it's like it's trying to it's it's hard to articulate it to someone that, you know, we, we we do our little bike night every week, and you get these guys that come up, and we don't look like bikers, you know what I mean? Like, right. to the traditional sense of right. like if we went to a biker bar, right. like we don't fit the bill, but we ride so much and do so, and I, I think that we are the generation of bikers that Harley doesn't know exists. Because we look like everyday fucking people that that go to work and commute and right. things like that. It's like we don't have we don't put on a costume 
of rings and fucking this and that and wallet chains, yeah. You know? Yep. Yeah. For so sure. it's I don't know, man. Like when it you know, to your thing of like I it I would be fascinated to hear someone like the man you just spoke of you know, if he asked me that question, I'd be like, man, like, fuck what I think. Like, what do you think? Like, what do you yeah. think about Harley now, knowing that you have created a piece of Harley history? Totally. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And he, like, he was the fucking coolest dude, man. Like, just all of the details, right? Like, there's one, um, there's a bike in here. It's a um, two-tone root beer and, like, gold. Now, right? which guy is this? You want to clarify that again? Uh, Ray Dre. Ray yeah, Dre. so he's the one who uh, did Design. all the custom. Yeah. yeah. Um, really cool story. It's all in there. Um, really cool story about how he started working for Harley Davidson and stuff. But um, there's this one bike. It's an 84 FXRT. Um, we know of a couple. Um, and um, I was asking him about these custom colorways, right? Yeah. The low production. Talking colorways. about the orange or the yeah. tan the candy glass. Yeah. The, um, so it's like a root beer brown with like a gold ish orange. Yeah. Um, Two tone and. It's got a, um, instead of a decal, it's got paint transfer. So it's basically like a screen printing where they put this fucking thing on and then they yeah put on paint. Jason's like, I'm a painter. I know. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> and uh, anyways, he's like, yeah, I know of that exact one. I know yeah. exactly what you're talking about. And then I sent him a picture. He's like, dude, that's it. That's exactly it. And look at these details, which also are in the book. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And stuff like that where, like, he... You as a painter, I'm sure, like, you remember whatever job back in 2008. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you saw it on the street, you'd be like, hey, I painted that bike. You know, Yeah, I do that every once in a while. Yeah. And, I think I um, painted that one. And you're like, wait, is that a good one? <laughs> no, nah, that one's fucked up. I didn't paint that. You know, like. <laughs> you you, you, uh, you follow that uh, Scooter Tramp Scotty? You heard of that dude? You know what I'm talking about? He was know, on Dan's I know. podcast. I know yeah. what you're talking about, but yeah, I don't. He's I'm not a, sure if I follow him. I've seen his post. Yeah, he's fucking fascinating, dude. But he does this video that I always... I've probably shown 20 people that's come by the shop this video of him where he has these Polaroids or just like this these, these pictures, and he just flips through them on the video and talks about the person, the place, yep. the thing exactly. about it. And I was like, you know what? I have photo albums, right, yep. from back in the day when we used to have to paint the bike, print out pictures, and come up to your shop. Hey, uh, I'd like to talk to you about uh, your Lord and Savior custom right. paint. Yeah, I can do that for you. And and here's my portfolio. And it's like a binder yep. that you flip through, right? And I was like, they're in my attic at my house. I'm like, I should pull those down and just like, I'm talking like oh five yeah. shit. You know what I mean? Sport bikes and random little Harleys that I worked on here and there, and just talk about the photos and like, man, like I remember where I was in life when I did this and. There's a story behind every photo, you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. And yeah. I think that seeing them will take me back to it, if yep. you will. But I don't know why it made me think of that, but, you know, just the thing of... Uh, oh, totally. It, it's 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 life, man. Like, l literally living it, remembering mm -hmm. it, and making it memorable, you know? Yeah. Um, it's Life is short, dude. Well, that's about to say, that's like you always tell me, like, it's short. Yeah. Like, you don't you don't know when, when life's going to be over. Like, you wake up, no one, I mean... Maybe if you're like 100 years old and whatever your medical condition is, but you don't wake up thinking, oh, today's going to be my last day. You know well, what I mean? That's why, you know, my brand name, right? You know, when th I think traditionally most people think of the fast life as uh, as something kind of more like, you know, like you're living fast, like you're, you know, gambling, fucking prostitutes. Cocaine, I don't know. Hookers, Cocaine, yeah. hookers, that shit. But it's, it's about, to me, it's more about... Um, cramming in as much life experiences as you can in the time that you have. Yeah. And, um, you know, like I said, th that's uh, back to what we were saying earlier in the conversation. It's like, yeah, we ride these things that could take us out any moment. You yeah. know what I mean? But, well, and in reality, like, <clears throat> I see death a lot. Yeah. yeah. about to say that yeah. I don't think most people know because yeah, yeah. Nick doesn't brag about it. He's probably the only firefighter who doesn't, but, he is a firefighter, so he deals with that kind of stuff a lot, and that's why he's always telling me because I'll be super reserved with things and say, you know, just not wanting to go in on things, and that's what he's always telling me. He's like, dude, just you got to do what you want. Like, yeah, it can come yeah. anytime. Like, like even, you don't have to be riding a bike. You know, it can yeah. it can come anytime. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not just a bike. Yeah, you're right. And so it's, it's one of those things where, like, I really think that that put, like, life into perspective mm -hmm. of just the – not only, like, oh, like, maybe not necessarily being careful, but just, like, doing the stuff that you want to do while you're here. Yeah. Like, making your time. Like, 
Lee Bender says, say yes more. He's yeah. one guy. He actually got struck by lightning. You were talking about getting struck by lightning. He got fucking struck by lightning. He's been Lee. in motorcycle accidents. Lee is the he's, best dude. He, he's fucking like that dude. And so, he, he dude knows. who could tell stories. Yeah. Lee. And he's like, dude, just say, just say yes more. Like that's all you have to do. Yeah, say it's yes a movie. Yes, man. Yeah. You know, so it's it's. I've talked about that a lot, and I wholeheartedly try to do it as, as much as I can. Um, obviously, you know, except when I tell you to podcast Lee. Never where said was he? At? Never said yes. <laughs> he's been all over. He's always moving. I don't even yeah. know where he's at right now. Portland, he's up in, yeah, Oregon. You know, so I get a lot of people that hit me up and say I should do a podcast with so and so, but I have to find a connection in a way to that. But like this, I think Lee could connect to literally. He, yeah, I, I'm pretty does. sure. I mean, a <laughs> yeah. lot of people, but there, there's a nervousness that I have because I've sat down and do podcasts with people that I actually know. Yeah, and completely failed, and yeah. I've never released it. Yeah. You know, and it's, and it's like and that thing. I don't, I don't, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to do a bad job of sh- of sharing somebody's story because I didn't have the right way to bring out completely. that conversation. Yeah. You know what I mean, dude? If I if I released all the because I re- recorded all these you know conversations with these guys that I, I'm like, man, that one was bad. Okay, I would not release that one. I would not release that one. And then you know, because I have their phone number, I'd call them back. Like, hey, is it yeah. okay if I have some questions? I'll call you back. But there's a lot of them where I'm like. Fuck, man, I completely blew that. And like, just, th- this is just to make everyone else jealous that what you get in this book is just a tiny snippet of all the stuff Nick has. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like hours it, yeah. recorded, and you get a handful Dude. of paragraphs. Yeah. <laughs> so I you mean, guys can all be jealous of Nick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, that, that's kind of the thing, man. Like, so, um, you know, I was nervous to do the woman Ness. You know, oh, totally. I was very, yeah. very nervous. Where do you start? <laughs> Yeah, like where do you start? And like I'm not talking to Arlen Ness. I'm yeah, talking right. to his son and his grandson. And I didn't want to go in there and just be like, "So your grandfather, right?" You know what I mean? Like I but wanted. Then when you remember, remember when your grandfather did this? Oh, yeah, that was so cool. Like the like I wanted to Saturday try to live Chris Farley. You yeah. know, like remember when he did that? Oh, that was so cool, man. I wanted to kind of you know wrap him in, but give them more like they're the they're. The, they're the ones uh, leading the helm or whatever the fuck. I don't know. They're yeah. the, they're the fucking the lead. legacy. Yeah. yeah. So I wanted it to be about them. I wish I would have got that opportunity to hear the Ness version of Ness. Oh, you for know? sure, yeah. Uh, the Arlen Ness version of that. But And that's the kind of thing about like doing a podcast. It's like, you know, we do these ones where we get super fucked up drinking and, and partying, and it's great. But then it's like it's weird to be in the same space where next thing you know, you're getting some dude's fucking entire life on a serious, podcast. Serious well, as fuck, yeah. That goes you know? right back to this book I brought in. Oh, my before. God, dude. I'm sorry. I talked about the yeah, book. Yeah, yeah. But that's what that's we're here for. But Is he a silent investor or something? I, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not very silent. But, <laughs> but um, I said that numerous times when he was making the book is that how cool is it? Because you're talking about, like, you know, you missed the opportunity with Ness, right? Yeah. All these guys, like you said, are 70, 80 years old. You know, they've worked on this project 30 years ago, 30, or more than 30 years ago. 40 years ago is when yeah. it started. Yeah. And he's catching them at most of them. You know what? They've got maybe 10 years left in life. I mean, if Nick didn't come around, most of these stories would, would never have yeah. gotten out, you know? Like, I just thought about that a lot, the timing of it, that almost all of these guys that he's tried to find were alive. You know, they were all together in the head and stuff, able to remember all this stuff, have yeah. a solid conversation. And I just feel like we're, we're all very fortunate that this got recorded when it did. Because, yeah. like I said, if Nick didn't do it and someone tried to 10, 15 years from now, it'd be a lot harder to find guys who worked on it 40 yeah. years ago. Yeah, for absolutely. Sure. And, there, uh, and that wasn't the case with everyone. There was someone where I, I thought was a key player in all of this, and I couldn't get a hold of them. They denied me, whatever, so-and-so's people were like, no, that's not going to happen. So I was super bummed about that, but at the same time, moving forward, like, I still think that I was able to portray and um, tell the story as, yeah. you know, the best I could. So yeah, It's always one of those things, like, I'll, I've always thought, like, the first time I ever try something or do a paint job, if I got a chance to do that same exact paint job over again, I'd do a much better job. And sometimes I feel like the thing that sucks about conversation is, are, is that you can't have the same conversation twice a lot because it doesn't feel real. Right. You know what I mean? Well, the same thing with that paint job. Like, yeah. if you could do that paint job again, you would do it differently. But I the would, thing I is... Naturally, yeah, I would. But the this thing motherfucker is, is, that, is ki- pissing me <laughs> off, dude. But the thing is, is that if you were to look at that paint job, 
and you're like, oh, I would do this differently. Well, if you did it differently the first time, you, then you wouldn't be reflecting on the things yeah. that you did, either that you want to improve on mm-hmm. or that you didn't, you know, that you exactly. want to change in general, you know? And that's that's kind of the hard, that's a, that's why, like, it, you know, in this podcast space, it's a very fine line of, uh, of uh, I, I like to look at it like this, like, the opportunities I've been getting lately, I think they're coming at the right time. Like, I, I'm glad I didn't get to do a Nest podcast two months into it when I was yeah. talking about trading buttholes oh, on totally. Craigslist, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah for sure. Like, no doubt. Yeah, it, and it's like it's like the universe is like unfolding opportunities as I get or, or it just this becomes a more familiar place to to do it, you know what yeah. I mean? And um it's weird, man. And I, think I mean, you guys have all been I mean, Mike was one of the proponents of helping create this thing. Oh yeah. You know, and and you've been a listener since a long time yeah. ago. Day and one. um it's fucking weird dude yeah yeah <laughs> it's, it's like a weird place to be man like yeah for sure and i feel like it's kind of like everything's you know coming together and everyone keeps keeps their head down and it keeps marching forward and you know keeps yeah. trying to progress at what they're doing and um in reality it's all for you know the motorcycle community you know what i mean like we're yeah. all we're all here for the same reason well, I, I mean I, I think i made a post about it once it's crazy to me how like when I met you, mm-hmm. you were a painter, just kind of getting into Dinah's, hadn't yeah. messed with FXRs yet, hadn't camped before. And now look, I mean, what you're building all, I mean, you're doing all the Dyna FXR bagger stuff. Like, you know, yeah. with, you know, anyone who rides any of those knows who Jace is, mm-hmm. putting on a huge camp out, you know, done all, you know, got this podcast, didn't even know what a podcast yeah. was, I don't think, when we met. Now you've got what you said in the top 10 automotive podcasts. And then Congrats, you got Nick by the way, dude, Thank you. strong work. Nick just put out a book, runs a huge page, all this stuff. Yeah. That how, like, you know, Carlos, do it, you know, he was racing, on, you know, in the X Games. Yeah. You know, to, since I've met him, Dan's got his podcast. I'm like, it, for me, it's so cool to see so many people, like, yeah, just going, yeah. like, it's just, it seems crazy to me. So many people I know so well just going out there and just, like, dominating on such big levels. It, it's just wild to me to watch. What I what I love the most about it, and I, I was I, I've actually been saying this to quite a few of my friends, you know, in the industry. I'm like, you know, like I'm enjoying this right now, but man, I can't wait to enjoy this with you in 20 years. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I'm almost 40, you know, so I'm thinking I'm still I'm hoping I can still be involved at um, you know almost 60, and I'm like, what's that conversation going to be like? You know what I mean? What's it going to be like to sit here and think about? you know, the last 20 years. I mean, we're talking about the last four years, basically, yeah. at this mm-hmm. point. I mean, know? think of all well, the hamsters, dude. Yeah. Think of all those guys that were, like, like you said, not necessarily, I mean, they were innovating, God, you know, everything, pretty much, yeah. you know? Um, and homies, you know, like, they'd all come together at one time, like, oh, what, what's your, you know, what do you got going on with your bike, you know? And, you mm-hmm. know, changing, uh, sharing, you know, stories or tactics on how to tackle something or whatever, you know? Dude's on one, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somebody respond to him. <laughs> Shout out to Zachary. Hello. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's the only listener right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, like, those dudes were, you know, basically feeding off of each other the entire yeah. time. You know what I mean? Going yeah. back and forth, trying to one-up each other, I'm sure. You know, they, they all seem but pretty competitive. It's they, they are exactly what we are now. We just have this, like, tool to kind of reach more people across yep. the country. They used to have to, you know, do a cold call, like you said, or catch the next magazine or catch them at the Daytona, the, the Sturgis or the Laconia or, yeah. you know, Laughlin or whatever the fuck. You know what I mean? It's like, like I said, we have a fucking grand opportunity if we use it. Yep. And we say yes and we show up to things. You know what I'm saying? Totally. Well, and like Nick said, pro- use it to promote good things. Like what he does yeah. with his giveaways and stuff. Dude, and like yeah, using dude. these platforms to push positivity. Yeah. You know? I mean, well, that's that, that kind of, you know, to that exact note is the same way. The reason why, like, I'm, I understand why chopper dudes didn't want choppers to get mainstream. Mm-hmm. I understand that now because now with performance baggers going kind of mainstream, I see the. I see the vultures fucking starting to swoop down. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm like, fuck, here it comes. I've been around. I've seen it. I wasn't this aware in the last couple scenes I've been uh, been around in, but now having so much invested into this and, and like enjoying these bikes and, and trying to keep the bullshit away as, as much as possible by not giving them the platform or, yeah. or not showing any kind of light to these dudes that are just fucking toxic or these brands that are toxic. Right. 
now that it's becoming this big mainstream thing, like I see these people like finding another angle to get in. Well, and you have the voice. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you, you have the voice. You're, I mean, um, you have a way to number one reach people. Number two, tell them how you feel about either the the platform or you know community or what have you. You know what I mean? Like, and I feel like there is, there is somewhat of a responsibility with that. You know what I mean? And it's tough because like for me, the page, dude, I'm private now. Like mm -hmm. I don't. It, it's only private. Everyone is screened now because yeah. fucking scammers like they come in and now like they're even going off like in search of posts, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll be like, hey, this dude's looking for an in search of gas tank, right? Well, fucking scammer number one will come over and be like, hey, I have that gas tank, you know, and then um, here's a picture of fucking someone else's gas tank, right? They mm -hmm. don't even have the gas tank. They're trying to fucking scam. So yeah, everyone's fucking screened now. So on that note, if anyone wants to follow um, or get a post or anything like that, you have to have someone either vouch for you or, um, you know, be a member of the community, have a previous sale on Instagram, yeah. a previous customer or any, anything like that. So Like some kind of validation, but yeah. yeah. But, but I mean, like, going back to, like, having the responsibility of, you know, you create this platform and now you have kind of responsibility to, like, either, I guess, keep it moving forward in the right direction um, or you know, keep it positive, you know, yeah. instead of, like you said, having vultures come in and yeah, it, and it, kind of ruin it, it just sucks because sometimes the vultures don't know their vultures, yeah. right? Because oh, sure. I think most of the time they don't. Yeah. yeah. It's like, they don't, they don't understand because they think that like they're, you know, cause I'm put like this. I do benefit. Like I, I've never promoted my paint work on this podcast. 200 and fuck. I mean, we have recorded 212 episodes right now. I've never once been, hey, guys, if you guys need a paint job, you come to me. Right. I've yeah. never done that. Yeah. And, like, when, so, to me, this this platform is about exposing everybody else or, or showing the world these other people, these other painters, these other other things, right? For sure. Because they don't always, I get the opportunity to talk to this motherfucker every, every day that I have it, right? Yeah. But they don't. So, it's, you know, it's like, it's weird. So, when these people, these, these brands come in, they're looking at like, oh shit, that's cool now. It wasn't cool to me two years ago, right? But now it's cool, and I think I can make parts for this and make money. And so let me just jump in it yep. and make some money. And it's like make them as cheap as possible and sell them for as much as possible. Yeah, like, yeah, dude, I I completely understand. And I and see don't it. support anything else. Don't yeah. support anybody that's doing anything. It's just like, hey, we got known in this scene. Now that scene's dead because apparently they weren't a good ambassador for that scene, right? You know, well, like I, I, ne I, I, I tell people like, look, I did ride big wheels. I was nobody in a big wheel world. I wasn't. Mm -hmm. I, I painted a couple bikes. I never really got any kind of traction with it. Right. Um, and and I fell into this world, and it all kind of came together. Like knowing Mike, knowing the NorCal dudes that I used to do big wheel stuff with, and seeing all this come together, I was at the right age, the right skill level, and the right exposure to so much other things to have a voice have a podcast because yeah. of Mike, you know what I mean? To try to uh, steer this new genre of bikes into the most positive direction and away from as much bullshit as, you know. Oh, totally. Yeah, and and for, like, the the bigger brands, like, if you are supporting, so I come from, like, I rode BMX when I was, uh, like, younger. So yeah. Um, started riding up again, and I listened to another podcast um, about BMX, mm -hmm. and one of the guys is sponsored by Mongoose, right? And I'm like, fucking Mongoose? Like, what the fuck? Why is this guy sponsored by Mongoose? Like, I, I, for me, in my generation, like, yeah, I started riding on a Mongoose, you know what I mean? Yeah. But afterwards, like, you didn't fucking get a Mongoose because you could buy them at Target or whatever, you know, like yeah. Toys R Us. But the one thing about Mongoose that he explained is like, dude, Mongoose has been supporting the events for 30 years. Mm, All of these big events, point. right? So, like, yeah, they may be profiting, but at the same time, they're still putting on all these even lower class competitions for yeah. kids, you know, or um, novices to continue growing, right? To con continue growing their skills, to continue the the whole fucking community, right? Yeah, that's so, a great that, point. Yeah, I, f I feel like the comparison with motorcycles is almost built well, you could say, because they catch yeah. so much shit, because a lot, I mean, their parts are made overseas, the they're kind of entry-level stuff, but they I've... They copied I've Simpson. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, but I mean, they were a pretty established company before that. 
But, I mean, I've been to chopper shows with like 30 people that they sponsor and give away. You know, they would send a handful, a few hundred dollars worth of products for a show with like 20, 30 people. You know, just a little camp out. People would reach out, hey, Bill, will we sponsor? Yeah, we'll we'll send you, you know, a handful of bars, risers, whatever. And they, I mean, try and find a flyer that doesn't have a Biltwell name on it, you know? It's like, yeah, same thing. Maybe they sell Target kind of parts, you know? But they are every. They price. always yeah. go back into the community. The guys who do, you know, who run it, they ride motorcycles. They yep. go to these events. Yep. I mean, it's. Well, that's, I, that's I feel a great like it's point, the same man. thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. it, with these, what happens is with uh, a lot of these companies is that like we're all in this rat race trying to survive and and enjoy motorcycle culture and life and pay our bills. But you know, you have to put back into it, man. Like you have to think about our motorcycle industry, like this table. And if you want to eat on it, you got to fucking put a dish down, dude. But at you the same I mean? time, if you want to put a dish down, there also has to be people cooking the food. There has to be people, be people to clean up the dishes afterwards. You know, like, yeah. there's there's people that fit into all of these parts, I feel like. They do, yeah. And, you know what I mean? Someone who built the table, you can't eat at a table that wasn't built, right? So, like, there's all of these little people. Yeah, the table's built by all the all the... The 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 Nesses and yeah, the yeah. Perowitz and right. the Harley, the OG Harley dude. The dudes table that's there to sit at. Yeah. You know so I mean? like we now have the opportunity because of their legwork and at some point the work that we put in will be this next layer on that table. You right. know what I'm saying? Yep. But it, it's stressful because it, it's just like when we have a bad dude come into the scene that we all know is bad, but he does nice parts, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody's like, Yeah, but hey, makes nice shit though. I'm like, oh, that's the wrong attitude, man. Right. We need to be able to stand together and be like, look, no, you need to care about this industry, right. not just care about what you make off of it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because those dudes are going to leave. They're going to find when this stuff dries up, and this happened with Big Wheel Baggers. That's why I know I understand this because dudes came into Big Wheel Baggers because it was a profitable market to get into. Yep. They they obviously enjoyed motorcycles. You're talking about the companies, not the actual. Yeah, like, not the riders. Yeah. But the problem is the riders um, – the riders are inspired by the companies, in my opinion, because the companies set the trends. You know, there's no we don't have movies of like, you know, Brian Bosworth riding a fucking Harley through the, to inspire us to get a bike anymore. Jax Teller's not on TV anymore, dude. Right. So yeah. what are we going to do? Yeah. We're going to lean towards these brands that we all know and love that look like they're living a badass life, riding bikes and doing shit that I want to do. Or I you mean, know? in reality, let's let's be honest. It's influencers now. You know what I mean? It's the people that yeah. that take you know all the photos, you know, quality photos, post them all the time. Like that's that's kind of the the way that life is nowadays. It, yes, you know? it's the way it's swinging, and it's it's weird, but it's uh it's weird because you don't like. I didn't realize that you know. In my opinion, I look at Mike like an influencer to me, right? Yeah. So to me, I'm like, fuck, man. Like, what's Mike doing? Like, you know, like. Because that influences the way I feel and think. Because I value his his sight, his opinion, his um, view. His view, yeah. Same thing with Dan. You know, Dan's somebody I look up to because I wouldn't be in a podcast without Dan. You know what I mean? And so when he's doing something, like it really rep- re- resonates with me. Yep. Um, but then there's this like past me. There's people that look at what we do, or I do, or what Saxon is doing. Help all the shit, and you're like. Okay, like this is, it's just a, it, it's like a chain, man. It's like, oh, you yeah. know, and I don't know, man. I don't know where I'm going with that, but it's like. <laughs> well, yeah, and it's, it's strange because, like, I mean, you could look at it just like you did, you know, like it's kind of, I guess, surface level. And then there's another, like, um, I listen to Joe Rogan a little bit, yeah. too, and he has, like, the I love the scientific ones, right? So he had this recent guy, um, I think his last name is Green. Yeah, um, I haven't heard it, but I know what you're talking about. Okay, so he's talking about, like, quantum physics, which is fucking completely past me. Yeah. But what I love about Rogan is that he ties it in where he um, he asks the normal person's question yeah. to the quantum physicist where he could actually get an understanding of what the fuck he means, right? So yeah. there's this um, theory where something, an electron in New York can affect an electron in fucking California, mm-hmm. like that, right? And so I feel like all of these things are tied together. They're all like one thing over here leads to the next over yeah. here. You know what I mean? And so, I mean, if, if there is something that, you know, is influenced, I think that especially now with the 
the capacity, the social media, the instantaneous, like we can post a picture here and have it affect people all the way across yeah. the world. You know exactly. what I mean? Like, um, I guess that's kind of where I was going with the. Like, yeah, I mean, that's exactly that. It's, uh, you know, it's weird. I think uh, one of our, you know, the Anthony, one of my old customers and friends, you know, from years and years ago, sport bike days, was in here yesterday, and I just finished up a flame job that's going to France. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, I was, you know, I stopped marketing to my local market years ago because I realized that the power of social media, you can find a lot of rich people across the world and oh, yeah, just sell sure. shit yeah. to them. But the the craziest thing about it, and I, I, I don't want to sound, sound the bad way, but like the things that we've been trying to create this kind of like bond and connectivity and friendships that, that with uh, the camp outs and, and it's not just the camp outs. It's like the camp out is a part of it, but like our homie, big trouble out of Jacksonville, Florida, you know, he's a, <laughs> he's a dude, he's a dude that's uh that has the ability to do more. He can, he can provide a lot of things for the table. And so he does. Yeah. So, so he gets a house in, um you know, uh, for the V Twin Visionary Tour, and all the performance bagger dudes crashed at this dude's house. I hate I missed it, but yeah. then he's got he now all these dudes I know, and now he's friends with them, and it's like this like chain of friendships that kind of been forming through these events totally. and these parties through acquaintances, acquaintances, and, yeah. yeah. And all the people I've met just through you, Josh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Mark, Jamie, Greg. I mean, a lot of these guys are people I talk to every day now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and met them through you. Yeah, I mean. It, it, it's, it's all it is. It's like we all create these little local markets, and then we connect to each other, and then they become regional, totally. and then you know and national, like, and and like even through the page, I'm there's no doubt in my mind that guys know who the guys looking for '90s parts are, or the guy who's building an RT. And when a post, you know, a parts parts get post, yeah, posted, like, hey, dude, here's your RT fairing that you're looking for. You know, like. Boom, right Like, away. you kind of know, you remember he, the people yeah, that are looking exactly. for certain things. Yeah. Um, and other people are doing it, too, because, yeah. like, dude, I can't follow everyone. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, I, I really try. People are like, yeah. hey, dude, let me know when this comes up. And I'm like, fuck, dude. Like, <laughs> there's, like, 30 posts a day, and yeah. there's no way that I'm going to remember yeah. that at all. Like, it's so difficult. It's I can't tough. even keep up with, like, the comments now on the page. or it, I can't even keep up. Like, if it's not on a tag or you didn't DM me, I may miss it. Like... It, I miss the way that him. It's, it, it's his baby, though. I, I, I throw that out there. Like, he does it all himself because, like, even one time he needed a break. Me and Dusty are like, dude, we'll, we'll run it. Just take a week off, you know. We won't yeah. comment on stuff. We'll just repost it. But it's like a child to him, yeah. that page. I mean, the book's a child. The page yeah. is a child. He's got a lot of kids going right now. Right. And I know like, he's I like, know I, can't, I, I, I can't give it For up. For the record, every day. You one, know what? At, you least, know at least one post every day. To, to that to that point, I understand. I understand it because when you create something and you're very critical of every detail about it, like it's not that you don't trust the people to t- kind of take it over. It's just that like you just that's a weird place to be. Like you, you know what I mean? Like you feel like to you expect. owe it. To, you, you feel like you owe it. At least I do. Like I know that I'm gonna do it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like that's that's shit. I'm just I'm I'm gonna do it. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that's. My mentality, anyway, you know. Can we pause for a second, though? Because Chandler Evans said that he's hitting the triple crown. Yeah, I so hit, I yep. want to call him out on that. Yep. And he should drop his Instagram if he's still listening, so we can all follow. Yep. And him, see hold him to us through with this because it's a big task. Yeah, and um, FXR four. Yeah, yeah. Um, he told me he was doing it yeah, too. Yeah, he's doing it too. There's probably like three or four guys that are. If um, you're doing it, drop it up there. Drop your Instagram so yeah. you got a little accountability the, uh, going what's on. What's the date on the uh, the East Coast? The uh, usually it's the I first week of June. Yep. And if you first check, weekend of June, I might be able to be there, dude. This I don't is think right. I the West Coast one, though. but I think you got to do it on an FX. Oh man, fuck that! <laughs> <laughs> hey, you said that thing's a freaking old faithful, dude. It always runs. It is. That's but why you're bringing extra fluids, dude. That, <laughs> if it's leaking everything, even air, dude, you could get air at a gas station. The craziest leaking. thing about it is like it leaks everything, but it's still full of everything. Yeah. It's like, I don't it's know like what a, it's leaking. It's well, like I mean, you can have a big puddle, and it's not actually that much oil. Yeah. I, yeah. I've, learned, I've learned this. A puddle is very deceiving. It's like a Volkswagen. <laughs> if it's not leaking, that means you're out of whatever it is. That, he's in the Volkswagen, too. <laughs> is, that the, is that the obscure things you were talking about? That you uh, that's his. Them. We've all got our own. Yeah. Yeah, that's his. That's, yeah. that's one of them. Um, I, I was looking up something just now. I forgot. But for the dates, um, 
for those listening, you can go on my story. Um, there's a thing, a uh, little story highlight with um, on FXR Bazaar on Instagram. Um, and there's um, a highlight that says Triple Crown. You can find all the dates, all the events, um, all that stuff on there. So mm-hmm. um, for those who either are up to the challenge or want to follow or whatever. And then also any companies that want to sponsor um, some prizes for it, um, reach out. DM me. That's one thing I really want to get into. I, I don't really have anything to offer people for, like... Swag or, like... Yeah, yeah. like, dude, I, so badly, like, you know, because we were at our camp out in uh, a couple companies, Lexan, Simpson, mm-hmm. uh, they uh, Speed Kings yeah. uh, Cycle. Uh, they all offered up things to give away to people and shit like that. I'm like, fuck, man. I, I was like, I'm just not in a position to just give away a full fucking custom painted helmet yet, yeah. but I want to so fucking bad. I really do. Yeah. Like... <clears throat> that feeling of of being able to help out causes. I mean, I get hit up constantly, uh, like, "Hey, man, uh, we're doing this benefit. Do you have you want to donate things?" I'm like, I wish I had something to donate. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I mean, for me, like, and I'm not saying that you know this is uh, feasible for you, but like for me, the the first one I guess that I did, um, a buddy uh, um, died, mm. and his lady was on the bike with him. And um, I had just done a shirt, the original um, FXR Bazaar shirt with the bike coming through the triangle or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I hit up my shirt guy. I was like, hey, man, um, is it cool if, like, I do a limited run of shirts and, you know, this special colorway and all that money. Like, I donated the, yeah. sh- the cost of the printing and the shirts or whatever, and then all that money went to um, Jade, his lady. You know? Yeah. Um, and so it's stuff like that where I guess you like just getting creative with whatever you have to offer or whatever. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, We're going to kill him. No, I know. Was, yeah. <laughs> I didn't time. get him though. We got time. Um, but yeah, just getting creative with like stuff either giving away or benefiting. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. So, and I'm sure that like, we're working on apparel right now. And that's one of the things yeah. that, uh, you know, we've been going through. We did the camp out shirt. There's a couple things I want to change about the quality. Mm-hmm. And um, are you using like a, here's the thing. So tri blend or like standard cotton? I don't know <laughs> shit. I don't know shit about it, man. Honestly, kind of like, I, I mean, my Mike's, favorite shirts. We my both fa- know Mike and Mike's a little, like, kind of a little bitch. So he <laughs> wants a really soft shirt. I do know? like soft shirts. But I love soft shirts too in the summertime. But I also want something that like lasts and feels like yeah. The, the 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 there's a there's a reason why like uh I'm I'm an awkward size right so I'm like I'm in between XL and two XL. It depends on the shirt. It depends on a lot of things it's a lot like that. Easier to gain some weight than lose it. Just yeah, it is. that out there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but even two XL sometimes are kind of weird. So it's yeah. like I see shirts come out of time. I'm like man, like I don't want to spend the money on that, and then it's just hanging out in my fucking garage. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah, totally. I I. I I do want to, but I don't. You know what I mean? Because yep. there's so many brands that I would love to fuck with. And when it comes to, like, our shirts, like, I really wanted to, um, to uh, I want to make a nice product. I want, you know, because we haven't had a shirt yet yeah, in quite a few years. And I want, like, I feel like that first shirt, a lot of people is going to buy it. Mm-hmm. And I don't want them to be disappointed. I got with, one of those real first shirts. You got one of those old G's with still the still bagger wear. on it? Yeah. Or no, you got the Fast no, Life across. Yeah. 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 Um, so I don't know if, like, I sell a lot of shirts. Like, yeah, yeah. I get. The, I mean, they're badass. I mean, Conrad does the art, right? Yeah, yeah. Super so he's dope. exclusively done the art, um, and I mean, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't. He's badass. Yeah. I mean, he's the one that did our campout shirt. Yep. And so, so um, say I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have it's to be a on. Net. A, it's not you a have mosquito. to be on an FXR to do the FXR triple crown. <coughs> So if you're interested and you don't have an FXR, go get one. They're for sale on FXR Bazaar. Yeah, FXR Bazaar. <laughs> um, no, but and I don't know if I don't know if guys buy the shirts just in general to Extra support belly. to support the page. <laughs> <laughs> Is this distracting or not? <laughs> it's funny though. Uh, yeah. I like it. Yeah. So I don't know if they um, <laughs> buy the shirts because they're cool. Like yeah. They're I, I fucking say, super cool. I always say this to my wife. I'm like, dude, like, I got fucking style. Look at me. Like, all these people like what I fucking do. You yeah. know, like, um, but I don't know if it's just that, like, they're just trying to support the page or support me for what I do or whatever. No, the, I think the, it's a two-part. Like, 
Yeah, the, it the might shirts be. are dope. I mean, like, yeah. dude, you did the eagle one recently, yeah. or, and I was like, fuck, that's me. That's my shit, dude. Yeah, that live to ride stuff. If I could make a shirt that was literally that old school live to ride, but like revamped into some modern style artwork, <laughs> totally. some Daisy action. Nick is gangster when it comes to killing mosquitoes. That's Hola, true. Hola, Daisy. Yeah. So, well, he's not being gangster right now. So I don't think it's a net. It's a net. Yeah, it's yeah. a net. It's, it's, it's Texas mosquito. bugs. He's not used to that. Yeah. yeah. California the, bugs they're are They're bigger easy. here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, like the eagle one. So, yeah. um, and it really, like, when I have a vision, I really try to, like, whoever's working with me, I try to drive it home. Like, this is my vision. Like, yes. I understand that you could do this. But like this is my vision over here, and so never paint something for him. I'm gonna just give oh, you, I'm, I'm gonna give you I'm that heads up it. right yeah. now. Yeah. And if so he asks you to paint something, I've heard of him. <laughs> yeah. Get something back and be like, can can you change this one line? I just right. I, this is I'm not, of, I'm not feeling that line. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm super particular. So, anyways, I you know I told um, with that one, I was like, dude, I know that like I know your style of art. Can you do this? If not, like no worries. Mm-hmm. I just have this vision like. I can go, you know, somewhere else. He's like, dude, I could, I could do it. Mm. So fucking comes back and it was legit, like, you know, better than I even expected. Yeah. You know? yeah. And I was like, fuck, I'm stoked. So, um, yeah, that one. And then, um, like the windbreakers, I just branched out. Mm. I've been wanting to do a windbreaker forever. And then, um, but you can only do one color on a windbreaker. Yes. Yeah. Cause they're double layered. So you can only do one color. Otherwise when you go to do the second color, it'll, Move, move a little bit, yeah. Okay, so yeah, I know that. But it's all like the learning mm-hmm. curves, dude. It's like I had nothing. I had no. Too, too <laughs> um, I had no idea about any of this stuff. Yeah. Up until like you do it, right? Mm-hmm. Like, um, it's like building a house. You don't know how to build a house till you do it. You know. Yeah, exactly. Um, all the intricacies and all that shit. So just building like an online store, building like that. You know, trying to utilize this group or this amount of people that we've we've kind of accumulated through uh, social media and stuff. It's uh, you know, it, it's just tough with shirts, man. Because on one hand, I create, I've I've designed every logo I've ever had, yeah. but those logos weren't like I sat down one night and just bam. It was like I sat down one night and I did a sketch and yep. I liked it, and then a couple weeks later I sat down again and I modified it, and modified it, and then eventually I got something that I you know whether it was a time like I had to have it done now or whatever, but then it it happens. I'm like, I I dig this. I like it. Right. And then now taking those same logos and trying to make them look like something I would want to wear on a t-shirt. It's completely different. Yeah. So that's why I've been like wanting to reach out to other artists and give them the opportunity to, to do their thing because dude, I was like, I'm, I'm trying to do like a really small, small run of shirts and I'm trying to get it to the printer the next week so I can have them for my main trip. Um, but, like, I'm, I'm so, I, dude, I had, I had a, I felt like I had a cat on my back. Yep. On the computer trying to do this and, like, it wasn't looking the way I, I envision it, which I don't even know what the fuck my envision is. I just know yeah. it's not that. Right. And I'm, like, getting stressed out and I hit my wife and was like, hey, let's do bike night. I need a fucking, I need a drink. Right. <laughs> because the drink, literally, this is bad, but I, like, being creative, like, or trying to be creative it creates a lot of fucking static in your head. Oh, totally. You know what I mean? If you're thinking about being creative, you're already fucked up. Yeah. You know and what so, I mean? Like, you, you just got to let it flow when when it's coming or whatever. There's this, like, window of opportunity between one and four beers where things happen. Mm-hmm. You know? After four, you start thinking about shit that doesn't... Uh, I'm not creative. I'm right. yeah, okay. <laughs> this, I have <laughs> yeah, passed yeah, the no, limit you, of creativity. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I just, like... I was, like, fucking... And what happens is with that static, that anxiety that I get when I'm trying to create something, is I start doubting everything I do. Yep. Why the fuck do I do a podcast? Let's, I sound like a dumbass on this motherfucker. You know, like, right, right. I start getting very insecure about everything that I put my fucking hands on. And critical, yeah. Yeah, until I have a beer. Yeah. <laughs> I feel good and again. Like, oh, like, I'm yeah, this back. Is, hey, this ain't so bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's the creative That's the creative place that, uh, that I think that a lot of people, I mean... It's not always been that way. It's only gotten that way when you feel like you have a reputation to uphold. And that's sure. when the stress of if not have, just creating it, but is it good enough? Yeah. Right. If that's have, why I've been building another FXR, dude. Like yeah. not the best FXR in the world when it came out, but now that it doesn't necessarily exist, mm-hmm. 
I get so many people reaching out to me all the time, like, dude, like, your FXR was, like, the shit. Right. Blah, blah, blah. Love it, love it. And to me, I'm like, fuck, man. Like, I don't know how to top that, at least from my camp. You know right. what I mean? And I especially can't top it with a non-fairing skinny bike. It's it, No, you can't. You just got to be – yeah, you just got to be creative, dude. Yeah, how do you be creative on something with, like, a narrow – Well, I'll tell you. It's one to four beers. Okay. <laughs> no, fairings are out, man. You just said skinny it. Skinny bikes are in. Yeah. For real. Skinny bikes are 2021, 20, dude. Get with Fairing it. bikes are done. They've, yeah. all, they've been done to death. Yeah, I'm, I'm – I'm over. I love the RT fairing, but I'm over painting them. I, if I never painted yeah. another one again for the rest of my life, no complaints. Yeah, you know Especially what I mean. Especially when they're going on like road kings. Or I mean, look, I got a I got a fairing downstairs for uh, Jason Lawson. Did oh he yeah, yeah, do this. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he, yeah. Jason he did. Lawson, shout out, shout out to uh, Jason for doing the artwork on yep. the front there. Yeah, he did. He did the artwork for me. Yeah, good dude. Tattoo artist um, out of the East Bay. Um, but yeah, I, and I feel like when you're saying like, if you have nothing to lose at all, yeah, you're really like you're ahead of the game already. Yeah. Like, if you have nothing to lose, you're going into it. Like imagine if you're around people that you'll never see again, you could care less what they think at the end of the day, yeah. right? You could go out there and do whatever the fuck you want. You could say whatever you want, be however you want. If they receive it well, they receive it well. Maybe take a note, do it again yeah. the next time. Um, if not, oh well, scrap that idea, right? Yep. Um, but the Evans. yeah, Just at um, so Chris or sorry, Chandler Evans yeah. is at T H E E E three E's three E's um, V A N S. Yeah. So Who's follow him. Hard, not yeah. Going home. Miyagi shout out. Yeah, Miyagi, go harder, go home. So, um, but yeah, I feel like that's kind of the mentality. Like if you if. Obviously, like you building an FXR, you have your standard, right? Mm -hmm. Other people are holding you to a standard, right? But if you are creative and you can make things flow as, you know, obviously as a painter, you have you have full control. Yeah. Like for me, I'm relying on someone else to be like, hey, man, can you, uh, could you do this? And like, I don't mean to sound like a pain in the ass, but I really want it to be like this and then like this. And I know it's another layer of candy, but... Um, I'm the opposite. Yeah, I was just like, I like these colors. Go yeah. with it. Yeah, yeah. I, I have never no idea what I'm getting. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's but, a um, like I feel like at least you have the vision. You have um, you know the capacity to play with lines. You know, yeah, fudge the lines. Be like, okay, I don't want, I don't like this line on an FXR, but I do like this line over here. Yeah. So accentuate. You know, yeah, I probably you know like to Mike's thing with like how you're like, ah, I was envisioning this. Like me and you would argue, be like, well, here's the deal. I set all these parts down, and I sat here for three hours. Nick would be like, I don't give a fuck. I'm like, just <laughs> trust me. It three fucking, hours? It huh. comes. I remember my first beer. <laughs> you know, like, I've been sitting at this thing, looking at this thing for months, dude. You know? Exactly. It's one of those deals. Like, I, I uh, you know, when I was telling you, like, earlier, like, when I get into a project, like, I need the mental space to be 100% into it. Like, I have a hard time dabbling in four projects at once. Like, fortunately, I got three flame jobs downstairs that yeah. I was able to do all at once, but... Those are flame jobs, right? Right. You know, they're they're very simple for me. You right. know what I mean? But when it comes to like a design where you're making this, like you're you're creating something different. It's one off. It hasn't been yep. done before, and you know that's and where having to flow to the next tin piece, right? Yeah. And for the simple, like for the listeners that don't know, like when you say simple, it means the fender doesn't have to match the tank in the sense of flowing, right? Imagine or than trying to flow a paint job on a bagger. Where you got to flow the paint job and the parts don't even flow because they put an RT fairing on it. <laughs> How it's difficult worst, is that? <laughs> no, I that that's oh, been a thing. Like when I did Aaron's bike, <laughs> yeah. uh, Aaron's bike was really tough because that one so did come out good though. Aaron's Aaron yeah. Midwest Grinder, his his uh, R Road King with the RT fairing uh, and the lowers on it, and my bagger with the uh, lowers that came out with the Harleys through designs for a loop because you have this fairing and then you have this very very narrow. You have this almost two foot wide fairing. Then you have this like one foot to six inch wide lower fairing yeah. where you need to tie it together to flow to the rest of the bike. And you know, it is fucking complicated. And right now in the performance bagger world, like I think paint jobs are just starting to, uh, and I'm not trying to talk shit or anything, but there's a couple of dudes that's done some really nice jobs, but yeah. I think the, the majority of people. Instagram and Kyle, I like his shit. Yeah. Yeah. I think the majority of the, Bikes that have been painted in the performance bagger scene, they they need to paint a couple more to to really 
get into the groove of how to flow the bikes. Yeah. You know what and, I mean? I mean, flow, like, I, I know I've talked to you about it. But yeah. The flat bottom, um, like, boats, you know, speed yeah. boats, uh, jet boats, those have a style of their own completely. Yeah. When you look at when you look at a paint job or a boat, you're like, wow, that thing looks amazing, you know. Um, and so, I lost it. So he's okay. like, he's cu- he's <laughs> he's just teasing for death right now. Oh, really? Yeah. Anansi, yeah, start swatting at him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, um, and I feel like, like for the bagger racing stuff like that, um, those things should like should be like fucking NASCAR, dude. Yeah. Like. Look at all the sport bikes. Look at all the race sport bikes. They all have that's what it is. badass paint jobs, graphics, I mean, whatever. Like that is exactly what I'm talking about. Like, <laughs> <let's> ignore <laughs> it, man. Ignore so you know, like I, I've been painting since like uh, I've been in a custom paint world since 2004. Right. And I feel like I didn't get my own style or my own voice in it until I started doing these Simpson helmets, and that was when like I forced myself to learn how to do the panels thing, and. I had tribal and flames and fire and Mm -hmm. skulls and affliction shit down like to the T I could do that shit with my eyes closed, but blending like low riders race graphics from like the NASCARs and and sport bikes and panel jobs together created me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I didn't know I was doing that. I didn't know I was creating my style, but when you see my helmets, you know, which like I'm a huge fan of Poland designs. He's an amazing painter. Yeah. And uh, I always kind of, pit my work against his in, in like a, just a, a, a friendly competitive nature. Like I feel like I want to be on his level very, sure. very bad. But then I realized like, Oh, now I see the differences in my style and his, mm-hmm. even though I'm very influenced by him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I feel like, I mean, everyone has their own influences. Everything, everyone has the things that they like, whether it be like, I grew up, you know, as a kid watching NASCAR mm-hmm. and knowing all of those colors matching them to the racers yeah right like Like nationalities no (laughs) like like the fucking the car colors right okay yeah because they're really white right (laughs) (laughs) oh fuck yeah i remember the jackets the pins oils and shit yeah Yeah. Uh, mike's so fucking black that that was that was got him that was super no i didn't fuck dude i slapped so hard i thought he was that's that's as far as i know about nascar even to this day all right. Well, um, anyways, you have you have these um, kind of signature colors, signature team colors. Oh yeah, yeah. Like you, Benzo was always the yellow and yeah, black and exactly red. And so yeah, exactly. And so what I'm saying is like, how cool would it be to have like not necessarily the whole commercialist um, or commercialized, you know, sponsored, you know, big billboards racing on the track, but have you know signature colors or fucking yeah, cool yeah. paint jobs. You know what I mean? Like that's a good just point. Shoot paint like that like they were doing with cars back when i was in high school like yeah. early 2000s like, like donks and- like skittles and starburst yeah <laughs> that's his style dude that's his donk He's that's his funkiness dude i'm gonna get some more beer yeah be right back sounds good that would be <laughs> dude, you we'll should be do it you should do a bagger like no that. we're good oh, i think yeah, we're yeah, good. we got we got 18 pack oh yeah no, we're good um <laughs> yeah that's your donkiness coming out dude <laughs> you have a gold wing jacket don't you i got a gold jacket yeah, yeah. it's kind of similar a Is little it? bit yeah. okay. without numbers on it uh what's on our list have we um, i think you got business model or did you talk about that um i'm not sure what you're talking about what you meant by that i don't even remember anymore it's been a long day but how about um do you want to share um i know this gets asked anytime you ask for questions but today because i know it changes also which FXR, if you could have, of any FXR that was made? I know that's a common one that always gets asked when you throw up your little question thing. Yeah. What 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 is it today? Well, it's a, okay. If you could just pick one, it's still yeah. A um, little bit of a spoiler, spoiler alert. But um, let's see here in the book. I honestly forget what's in the book because it's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> I should have reread it. I know exactly where it's at. Um, so in 1992, which is the last year of the FXRT, um, generally speaking, yeah, the a little fact for them, so yeah, they know what they're going to get. A little here. teaser: the known colors, generally speaking, are 
Um, a vivid black with red and orange pinstripes. Um, the lesser known um, option is a two-tone light and dark um, candy re ruby red, um, which for those, there was 95 in the um, first half of the year produced and 13 in the second half of the year. But on page 89, if you look at the third one down where there's one Soul. unit, um, you see that? Yeah. You want to go ahead and read that color, Mike? No color on board. No, or no, 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 above that. Above vivid, that. vivid black no, with stripes. Keep going. Keep going. The oh, no, that's why, sorry. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. I'm color code is zero. Two-tone <laughs> two -tone light and dark sapphire sun glue. That's it right there. And how many were made? One. One of one. One Jeez. of one. So 1992, last Why year. Why is Dusty calling us right now? Oh, he's a dummy. Yeah, he is. He's Dusty. got the most beautiful blue eyes. I was about, I was just about to say the same <laughs> thing. But, but yeah. He's not the brightest. No. He gets by on looks. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's but why yeah. Jess have hired him. But, yeah, so that's the answer to my question is um, if there was one FXR 1992, last year FXRT, and um, light and dark sapphire sun glow, one of one made. So today, does anybody know where today. that one is? Negative. No, it's a one of one. Probably repainted, but yeah, probably. Mm, it's same. probably been fucking. I mean, the odds of it being survived, they wow. probably didn't know it was a one of one. Yeah, and everyone took off the fairings and fucking Two bags. Anyway. Or it could have been wrecked. There's so many. Yeah, so many. Like what I say, one third. Yeah. Well, you would think a one of one would be something that they would just keep. Well, they might not know it was a one-on-one. Yeah. -on -one. Or they sold to no, somebody I mean, else like they didn't know. Bishop? The brand would keep oh. it. Oh, Harley no, would no, keep no, it. no, 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 no. Because Bishop just got one. Um, uh, he hit me. That that green Did one, right? he hit me up? I can't remember how it worked out. But, um, yeah, it's a green. I believe it's a 92, right? Or three? Yeah, 92 or three um, convertible. Mm -hmm. um, and it popped up, I think, on Facebook. And I was like, hey, dude, are you looking to buy that? Like, it's Bishop always has the cleanest, yeah. baddest bikes. See? And it didn't look super clean in the Facebook post. But he knows how to clean them up. I know he does. He's and like a Nielsen. Like, he you knows. know what? This is, this is number, this is one of one. Yeah. So, like, go for it, dude. I've already confirmed with the VIN number and everything else. So, He was the right guy for that. No, that's cool, man. I, I it, It's fascinating to know, like, like how how would anybody have ever known there's an actually real one of one other than like the Nova or whichever okay, so, that is? You so know? here's the thing: you could you can call like if you had like your FXR downstairs. Yeah. Um, you could call Harley Davidson, give them your VIN number, and say, "Hey, what was the original color? How many were made?" And they'll tell you, 323 were made, right, in that color. Um, you would have to have a one of one yeah. and have the want to call Harley Davidson mm. and say, hey, how many were made? And they would give you that one of one, right? Yeah. Um, What's going to break hearts in here, though, is like when I called on my RP when I first got it, is for some reason people see an RP and they're like, oh, unicorn. That's a good question. You and see yeah. it, That's right. RPs are the furthest thing from a unicorn, probably like the most common bike because they didn't really change as far as looks go over the years. And for some reason, they're like the most desirable, but definitely far from yeah. anything rare um, or special. Unless you have a 1990 CHP, which is the lowest production yeah. number. Well, One, only 29 were made in oh 1990. Shit. And that's Damn. the bike I'm building now. I found a 1990. So one of 29 that were made. So that's yeah. rare. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, uh, Bishop said it's an 87 SP. We were way off. Damn, I wasn't way off. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I thought it was um, Brandon Bytel. Yeah, Brandon. Um, Bytel. Let's call it Bytel. Yeah, he says, um, were the old guys Nick contacted uh, the same dudes that developed the Nova, or was that a separate team of guys for the FXR? Yeah. So um, go into the. Just, why don't you just start with what the Nova is? Because I'm sure yeah. non FXR yeah. people probably don't know. Yeah. So quick the, rundown. The all right. So the Nova was a. They actually have. I believe it was three different uh, powertrains, or mm -hmm. three different motors, um, a V-twin, a four-cylinder, and a six-cylinder, mm -hmm. water-cooled, um, and that's what the RT fairing um, yeah. was designed for. So those fairing vents 
were actually designed to go back to the radiator that was underneath the tank. Yeah. <coughs> um, so to answer his question, um, that, well, that project got disbanded. Um, it just was too much money. Um, mm-hmm. And then at that the change was with of Porsche. Yep. Um, Porsche, well, how yeah. you say it. Yeah. And the, they had the motor to, was. Yeah, I know from the research I was doing is they had to basically decide to move forward with that or the Evo. They didn't have enough money at the time. It was right after the buyback. They didn't have enough money to go forward with both of them, and they felt the Evo was more promising. So they had just well, basically – they had like – I forget how – do you remember how much money they had in the Nova? It was a lot of it was money. A, yeah, it, was a, that it time, seemed like yeah. a lot of money for sure. Um, but especially they had to pull the plug on have one. either yep. one of you been to the museum yet? No, Dude, I haven't. It's, I was, it's sitting so right there on the floor. You can we touch actually, it. Yeah, we actually have a, a buddy that works at Harley Davidson that was going nice. to give us, like, I guess you can, if you have a certain. No, yeah, I got that tour. So, yeah. like, uh, there's a dude, uh, I think his name's Rob, I believe so. But he actually curates, or he works, like, so, it, it's so fascinating. I did a podcast with him when I was out there. I, I yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm familiar. And that one, you know, when he was just like, he literally goes through all this stuff that gets sent in that are third-party companies that were branded with Harley-Davidson products, restores bikes that they yep. find, and and uh, got that private tour from him. But then seeing the Nova, I did kill it. Fuck yeah. Uh, seeing that Nova, I was, like, fascinated because, like, you see so many of the, you obviously see all the all the yeah. similarities into the uh, FXR. Sure. But just looking at how different this whole thing would have been if they wouldn't have gone with the V-twin motor. Well, where would they be if they didn't have the Evo? They might not have even made it. Yep. Because, like I said, they only had money to dump into one. It wasn't like they just disbanded that and it could have been alongside the Evo. If they would have done the Evo, I don't think they would have been a company anymore. Well, that's, I mean, maybe, but it would probably re- be a different yeah. company because yeah. way the Evo yeah. went into the twin camera. Twin, it's still that same look and design. They might, re, cool. you know, V-twins just might not be a thing today. If they true, had gone with true. it, Harley might still be around, but they might. It wouldn't be all probably It'd almost be a metric bike. company. Yeah, to where like no, they're still building bikes that Maybe look Indian. like originals. Yep. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, re- realistically, yeah, yeah, for sure, they might have still survived. But it is interesting that I mean, they had to make that tough call. To, they had like millions into each project, and they had to make the call to cancel one of them. Mm. And they decided the Evo was the way to go. It's so funny how like decisions are being made in a corporate office up there years and years and years that literally affect like guys like us, our lives so much, not in a bad or good way, but just like our involvement in life. Like yeah. what if this FXR never would have been a bike? Like there's so many things like this wouldn't be happening, obviously, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's like the butterfly effect. I don't yeah. Know yeah. Doing. Fuck. Yeah. Ashton yeah. Kutcher, baby. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Chandler <laughs> Evans real quick before I forget. Yeah. You'll be fine. I'd say with, if you don't have rooms at any of the FXR jams, yeah. and oh, my yeah. experience, yeah. usually you'll meet people. And oh yeah, there's somebody at least offer you a floor, if yeah. not a bed. Usually, people even have a double, <laughs> yeah. you know, two beds, or you know, maybe they're friendly. How the and fuck are you y'all not having to pee yet? I've already peed twice. Yeah, I, we're I, men. My back teeth are floating, but I'm I'm okay with it. <laughs> um, uh, sorry to get back to Bytel's um, question. So, uh, Bob Leroy, who his baby on the FXR team was actually the FXLR mm-hmm. and the um, FXRD. Which would be the low rider and what is the D The low rider for? custom and mm-hmm. then the FXRD for dresser, essentially. Yeah. Um, or the I just say because not everyone's FXR. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so he ended up working on that, but he was cool. on the original um, uh, Nova project. When did the and Nova so project start originally? Because it was... 70s, right? Yeah, it, it'd be in my notes at home. Um, I took notes on all that stuff. But um, I don't think it was 70. I think it was more like, s- um, let's see, 79. I'd say s- probably 76 or 77. Yeah, because, I mean, you got to think, like, even even then, with the lower production Maybe things they did it. compared to now, yeah. it still had to take time yep. to develop. And, and the reason goes into the whole the hating on M- AMF thing. Which would be a whole other topic, so I'm not going to start it, but like, you know, how they're the ones who pushed forward on both those projects, and yep. people hate on that era, especially the guys who were around at that time, but where would we be now if yeah, without, if, it, if yeah. it weren't for AMF? They're the ones who had the money to dump into that. When Harley bought it back, is that, that's when they had to decide which one to cut. Most definitely. But, you know, we probably wouldn't even have the Evo without that. Mm-hmm. Mm. But back to so, your... Um, yeah. So the... Um, you know, Bob Leroy. 
Yeah, so Bob Leroy, um, he got basically put off of that project, then put on the FXR team. From there, um, he worked with, um, on the LR, it was him. Um, I can't remember the other guy's name right now. He was basically just like kind of a liaison between yeah. um, design and engineering. But um, yeah, uh, some of the interviews include Bob Leroy, um, Eric Buell, Rip Booth, um, and Steve Birch. Didn't you Birch, say you got yeah. to have a conversation with Eric Buell? Yeah. That's yeah. awesome, man. Yeah, for sure. And all, like I said, all those dudes, like as soon as, <clears throat> I mean, Buell is a fucking busy guy. Yeah, like, still. Still. Yeah. He's got um, a new electric motorcycle company, you know, that is fucking uh, apparently doing really well. Um, and he's still very passionate, you know, about motorcycling in general. Um and, you know, a couple emails, and he's like, hey, like, this is when I have time. So um, having those conversations with him was, like, it was crazy. Like, yeah, dude. That, that's got to be amazing to talk to someone so historical in this brand. You yeah. know what I mean? For sure. And I really feel like, you know, there's a lot of guys that had the passion back then, and I'm sure it wasn't just on the FXR team. There's other guys that, you know, had the passion um, yeah, I think the soft tail came out the same time, dude. And yeah. think about how revolutionary. I mean, right now we look at soft tail as a soft. Yeah. But you got to think at the time how rev. I mean, that was the number one selling. Having a rigid looking, you know, yeah. suspension bike with an Evo that's with reliable. Evo. I mean, think about how that changed Harley's game. Like yeah, I said, I mean, did. we look at it as like a low tier bike now because it doesn't handle, and that's what people care about. Mm -hmm. But at the time, you know that that was a pretty big deal. Totally. Yeah. I mean, trust me, I, I want one. I want an old. 80s shovel, I mean, not shovel, but an Evo. Soft tail. You know, soft tail. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's an, I feel like that's, that's a super iconic bike. It's like yeah. a 83 FXRT or something, you know. Yeah. I mean, like that the time period, those are some of Yeah, the original performance bagger. Yeah, yeah. 83 RT. <laughs> Grand Touring. <laughs> um, no, that's cool, man. Like, I, uh, I don't know. There's a lot of Harleys I want. I mean, I am a little bit more, um, what do you call it, uh, I think we all get into these pockets with bikes, right? I mean, go Goldwing Mike over here is in another world right yeah. now. But <laughs> the only reason why he answered that question is because he said, "I'm planning on winging it." <laughs> it's like, oh, I saw winging, so I'm gonna answer it. Yeah, but you know, like, uh, I I literally have a love for all different types of bikes. I do love FXRs. They're very close to the bagger shit that I'm in love with right now. But then, I love a Vikla mm -hmm. style you know, soft tail or even a bagger like that. Like, I like these different looks. It's just that I'm not – if I was a very, very rich man that I could have all these different bikes, I, I would have 14 different styles of motorcycles in the garage. For sure. You know, but I think that sometimes when you have that those many options, you can never really fall in love with one. And that's what's cool about being in our shoes is that we really get to enjoy everything that, that one style of bike offers. Yeah. And you get to go deeper into the roots of the bike – into the uh, scene of the bike and find like-minded people. And it, it's like, that's how you create friends. If like one day, cause like I, I only have a performance bagger in FXR. So I'd like soft tails, but I don't have one. So right. if I meet a bunch of rad dudes that ride soft tails, but all I have is a bagger and they can only do 80 miles on the highway. And I'm used to doing 95, hundred, then mm -hmm. we have problems, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Like, for sure. <laughs> yeah. And not only that also, you know, finding the intricacies of the specific bike, right? I mean, FXRs, for example, I'm sure you've had FXRs where you're like, dude, this thing, I don't know what it is, but I can't fucking kill this thing. Like, you know, like, yeah. it, I'm waiting for this motor to blow up so I can throw a new motor in it, but it's not blowing up. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's, you have some like that, you have some with starting issues, you have some with charging issues, you know, like, all that type of stuff. Um, speaking of that, like, I went to go to the grocery store the other day in my hometown. And there is the rattiest fucking FXR I've ever seen. Like, n hasn't been washed probably for like 10 years. Okay. All flat black. Yeah. The rear fender has been lowered um, just by drilling new bolt, new, <laughs> new holes, yeah. and then lowering it down. And I walk over, I'm like checking this thing out, and there's this guy sitting outside of Togo's eating a sandwich. And I was like, hey, what's up, dude? Is this your bike? He was like, yep, that's my bike. And this thing was, it didn't even have mid controls or forward controls or floorboards. What it had was floorboard mounts with pegs bolted to them with the shifting position and the brake in the normal position. Mm. 
which makes zero sense to me. I was like, dude, how are you riding this thing? Yeah. You know? And he's like, um, you know, I've had this thing. It had 80,000 miles in it. It was an FXRP. Um, turns out that that was um, an FXRP out of the same place that I got my um, CHP from. Um, long story, but... Um, Did you he, just get he his got number and run it for him? No. It out? <laughs> no. He got it memorized. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he had, um, but he had, he got it with 80,000 miles, and he's like, dude, right when I got it, I was like, you know, I had some money, and I was like, hey, you know, maybe I'll fix this thing up. I brought it to the local um, motor guy, and he's like, dude, this thing looks awesome, man. Like, it looks great. Just run it. Yeah. And he's gone through three speedometers um, just from, you know, failing or whatever. He's like, I have, I have at least, you know, 160,000 miles on it now, mm. and it's, I can't fucking kill it. You know, That's like, awesome. there's nothing that I don't, I don't do anything. You could see I don't wash it. Um, I do an oil change maybe every 10,000 miles, and that's it. Yeah, Evo, they're Damn. resilient, man. Yeah. It, it, they it might not make the most die. power, but they're resilient yeah. motors. He's like, I'm, I'm a chopper dude. This is my workhorse. This is my daily driver. And I was like, well, cool, man. Like, tell him about FX Harbor Zara and stuff. And he's like, I don't have I'm a phone. I'm not buying shit. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, I don't have a phone, man. Yeah. I was like... Like, no phone? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I don't have a phone, man. I don't know. Like, I work at this shop. You could hit him up because I told him about the jam. I was like, man, there's this whole, you don't even know, man. There's this whole fucking world. And um, It's like that that uh, alien guy where his hair's like this. Like, <laughs> so, let yeah. me tell you about this let life. Let me tell you something. Yeah. Fucking ancient aliens. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I was like, yeah, man. So I sent him his, uh, his boss, essentially, the link for the FXR jam. That's, that's cool. Yeah. On the topic of fucking killing, you know, can't can't kill bikes and intricacies and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, uh, that that's what's kind of, like I said, that's kind of tough about it because, um, you know, you know, you ever meet people that, like, they come around, like, we're, we're all inviting, like, hey, dude, ride whatever you want to the camp out. Right. It doesn't matter. Like, we've had dudes come on Springer Softails mm -hmm. to, you know, anything you can think of. As long as they're not Can-Ams, I'm okay with it. Right. Um, but – Whatever, like I'd rather you just drive. Don't don't drive that. Just yeah. drive your car, not a can am. So. Right. <laughs> but most of the time, it's like if people really resonate with the 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 scene, the vibe, they're like, you know what? I think I want that bike. Like, yeah. I I want to be a part of that. You know what I mean? I, I it sounds super lame to say that, but come on, man, we're all like oh, that. You know what I mean? Totally. Like it. Yeah, no, it sounds lame at all, man. A bike's a bike. I feel like you kind of just get in where where you fit in, you know, like as far as the scene, the people go, yeah, yep. more so than the bike. And, and I feel like as kind of an ambassador, like you have the the camp out, you throw it, you know what I mean. You have this podcast. If people were interested, and let's say they are on a whatever, you know, yeah. what I mean? uh, whatever bike, fill in the blank. If they come on that bike, and you guys are like, eh, fucking gay bike, and then yeah. you guys are over here, like. Do you, do we really think that we're doing that guy and the community the justice that guy could be a fucking a one machinist mm -hmm. you know that just like didn't really machines he wasn't d he was doing those weird kind of like yeah you know, I don't know what the fuck he was doing hand built dude. show kind of bikes you know which yeah. not my style I like choppers but, but uh, yeah. I recognize yeah. his clean work but look he got yeah. into FXRs and yeah. baggers and look at all the cool parts. But what if he showed up on one of his little XS 650s so or whatever he was there, doing? This is a good, this is a good point like, to this, this right? Dude. It's like, I want people to show up on whatever, right? But what I don't, what, what I'm just, I, I, I draw the line is me having to accept your bullshit online, mm -hmm. right? Oh, well, you know, like, I want to be with you guys and I want to party with you and I, my bike is this. And it's like, no, your bike's not that, dude. Mm -hmm. But if you want to ride it to the camp out and come party with us, cool. Just don't make me identify or don't tell me I have to accept your bike as what it isn't. Right. You know what I mean? And that's yeah, and that's I, been a con well, you know me and Jessup's conversation. I think uh, you know for for lack of a better term, like Jessup's point is perfect. Like, look, I just want everybody to ride bikes and be happy, and I do too. But mm -hmm. as an ambassador for something, I see how things have been going where. You know, everything's a performance bagger now. Everything's this bike and everything's this. And it's like, you know, you, you have to draw the line somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's not as cut and dry as an FXR because an FXR is like one platform. Yeah. That was made between this year and this year. A bagger is so fucking vast, mm -hmm. right? And there's so many different versions of baggers. So you get in this like, this like weird bubble of like, 
well, I was going to go big will, but I didn't get the money in time, and now performance baggers are great, and I already have a cam, so I guess I'm already in. You right. know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, let them be in. I mean, for someone I like it. for someone outside of the circle or someone out of this place, I get it. Why? Why do you care, Jace? I was like, yeah, I want you to be in, but I also want you to be in because you're 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 seeing what everybody else is doing, the style of bikes, and you're coming in and trying to get to that point or bring something new to the table. And trust me, your fucking cam is not bringing nothing new to the table. And your get back whip, <laughs> not happening. Bro. But if you come in and you really are an innovator in some kind of form or fashion, like a TPJ or something like that, then, yeah, I'm open-minded to your version of what this is. But laziness or brokenness does not equate to... I feel attacked when you're talking about brokenness, man. Yeah, hey, you know, Some of us are working with what we got here. <laughs> yeah, well, good thing. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm, so let's just say, let's just say, and I have no stake in that. Oh uh, yeah, but I, I think I the really perspective don't. is is fair yeah. though. Um, <laughs> let's say that homeboy with the what you call them get backs. The well, get no, backs no, no, it's like cam. stock cam handlebars, but they, they can't know. afford anything, so they buy a leather whip that. They don't so, have get back whips in California, do you? Okay. So what they do is, uh, so they they we have this thing anyway. where they they clip them on like your. Uh, the your lever. lever. Okay. And if a car cuts you off, uh-huh. then you pull this big whip oh, off okay. gotcha. and you just like pull yeah, yeah. on it and then you beat the car up and then that never ends. Uh, it never we'll goes back. Okay. <laughs> so let's just say homeboy with um, that bike you're riding and he fucking blows your doors off. Yeah. Let's, cool. just, let's just say like hypothetically. So that, this is the difference. What I'm trying to say is when you show up to do shit, uh-huh. like he just said right there. Donnie Hill, I was on a gay bike at the camp out and got nothing but love. If you show up, nobody gives a fuck what you ride up on. But when you're online and you're on a Facebook chat room or an Instagram chat room and you're, like, expecting people to, to like. See, I'm, I'm at a bit of a disagreement for the simple fact. I'm going to go back to earlier in our conversation here when you're talking about how kind of blending styles and stuff different artists and stuff you're talking about finally (laughs) talking about 90s bikes and everything with the fxrs i mean that was almost yeah an fxr is just the platform right yeah but in today's age an fxr if you want to get love for it it's got t-bars probably a thunder header you know maybe like you know there's a couple other exhausts you can run but it's a two into one yeah tall shocks you know there's 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 a kit. Th- yeah. There, yeah, there's a way to do it. You're probably going to put a full fairing on, some RT bags or some RP bags, and stock paint job or, like, a panel paint job. Like, there's very strict rules. Got to be a Makuni, you know, fuck dual yeah. disc. Fuck, yeah. You know, nine spokes or Not 13 dual disc, spokes. fuck, yeah, on the Makuni. You know, but th- there's this very no, I mean strict SNS. criteria. I mean, SNS. <laughs> <laughs> Just the motors, though, right? Not the carbs. Just, I mean, <laughs> SNS. <laughs> This podcast is Cut brought to out. you by SNS <laughs> carburetors. Yeah, better than McCooney. but but no, I mean that was you talking about like you know like rejecting that guy because his things are different. But that was like that last bike I built. That was my whole goal was to try and use as little stuff that is known as cool and try and make an FXR that at least I thought was cool without using any of those specific parts. Like, kind of 90s inspired, but still somewhat now inspired, too, because, you know, mm-hmm. like, one inch taller, not, like, jacked way up on the front, you know, like, 13-inch shocks in the rear, so it's not super low. But kind of just blending some 90s feel with, some, you know, some newer performance as well and not following some strict rule to where I feel like with the performance baggers, how that translates is if you're talking about, like, they got to have this, they got to have T-bars, got to have so this, the difference. and that's... But I'm just saying, like, you don't know. Maybe that dude right now, okay, yeah, he's just got a cam. He's not really. But maybe he's got this plan, and he's not going to follow your strict rules. But it's going to be like, holy shit, that yeah. actually came out. Like I said, his his Show diamond cut. I'm like, dude, diamond cut down. is the dumbest thing. That's what I told him. I said, yeah. he's like, I think I'm going to do diamond. I'm like, dude, that I hate diamond cut. But I'm like, this could work out awesome. And you got people got to take those risks, though. But if you're putting these strict rules on performance baggers, Where's the growth going to come from? Yes, we know T-bars perform, but there's dudes you can ride without them. True. So maybe yeah. somebody's going to come out there with a different kind of so, bar 
and really let just me, put it down, and then you start digging the looks of it too. So let me paint a, a quick picture of a difference between. You're gonna paint it to Nick because I'm gonna go piss. Now. Oh, now you got to piss. Fuck. I mean, yeah, he opened. I wanted it to sting to you. We're kind of we're kind of connected like that, so. <laughs> well, know, he opened it. And I'll talk loud enough so you can hear me. I hear uh, you. No, but Diamond what? Cut hates you too, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I told you I got faith in you. Mm-hmm. I disagree, but I got faith in you. Okay. Um, no, the uh, fuck. It sucks because like he just he just he yeah. did the ultimate fucking win. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, yeah. We'll go this, this and this. I'm gonna go piss. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm, I'm gonna like forget this. everything. I was like, you know, like you're in an argument with somebody. Like, just fucking stop talking for a second. So hey, I can you don't jump say in. that. Yeah, she's a nice lady. <laughs> <laughs> Mother's a saint. But um, no, I. It, it sucks. Be, you know what? I think what people look at with uh, these different trends within bikes and what they don't, with the difference about an FXR to a performance bagger, this is the difference. FXR is an entire platform. Yeah. Performance sure. bagger is a, is like a sliver of an, a platform. Yep. So when you say uh, FXR, club style FXR, or, you know, fucking pro street pro street yeah. fxr og fxr whatever you have you can that look at it becomes like, the performance bagger of the bagger right big wheel bagger performance bagger pro street bagger totally fucking hell yeah brother bagger there's all these different like versions of it so the the analogy is there which i get what he's saying and and like we want people to come into it but we don't want it to water down and everything becomes this next thing you know like uh Performance baggers, while I've already said, like, you know, dudes in NorCal were doing this shit almost uh, over 20 years ago. Yeah. Like, so, on, but, my, on my probably first poker run in 03 in Frisco, um, there, I remember dudes on baggers with T-bars, yeah. Thunderheaders, fucking just like bikes like this, maybe, you know, not the... You know, the stainless pipes and all that shit. They have yeah. thunderheaders. But they were fucking wheeling blocks, dude. You know, like, yeah. they were they were ripping, had fucking badass paint jobs. Good point, Jace. <laughs> <laughs> badass paint. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So for me, I, like, I guess my difficulty is um, distinguishing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. okay, this is different than this. Because, like, for me, like I said, like, that's just what either you had a sewing machine Mm-hmm. That was just a stock fucking bike from Harley, and it happened to be a bagger. Or it was someone's bike that they fucking fixed up, and that's what a yeah. fixed up bagger looked like to me. Well, you know I mean, I mean, also in the Bay Area, you got the uh, the like the East Bay Dragons. You got that that whole club set of Holy baggers yeah. that are fucking fast as fuck. Yeah, and it's been a topic of conversation on here. And they're like, well, are those performance baggers? I'm like, man, like. They're kind of their own thing. It's a different style of bike than the style of bike that we're riding, right? So it's almost like when I would tell people, like, look, you know, like, you guys are talking about this style of bike, like this style of FXR, and then you're equating it to, like, our bagger thing, but then you're saying that these people should also be in it. Not that they're not in the baggers. I'm not saying they're not in the baggers, but they're not in performance baggers. They might be... That section, like you might be into that club style FXR, which looks like that, mm-hmm. or you might be in the OG FXR shit, which looks like whatever. Name your name your dude like J- John yeah. Jessup's bike, you know, or you might be into the '90s style, which is like what you have and what you're building, right? But it's almost like what it feels like whenever I get kind of like riled up. It's like when I have a club style bike and I come up to you and go, hey, man, check out my 90 style FXR. And you're like, no, it doesn't have any of the 90s vibe. Yeah. And and I hear you. And maybe I'm just not like. And then everybody's like, no, nah, dude, he's he wants to be in your fucking style of bike. You need to let him in. And I'm like, dude, like. He doesn't have the same fucking vibe of bike. It's not yeah. the same and thing. I, okay, and I and I feel I'm close. waiting for this. Yeah, <laughs> <And> I, <laughs> yeah he's got it. Fucking, he's got it out for you because you fucking dropped a bomb in the yeah, dude. Yeah. I, I, I could even have one you. question. What, what I will what? say, what I will say is that right. for for me, I really like. I'll check out the fucking clapped out. I I talked to that dude for like 35 minutes. Yeah. In a fucking Togo's par- in front of a Togo's. Yeah. With his you sandwich. Had no idea he was talking to the FXR God. 
That's what fun after while well, everyone's arguing about who's the king. Did you say, dude, do you know who I am? don't really care about oh, who the king did, you, did can... you turn your hat around and go like, I mean, you know, I just fucking no. dabble. No, 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 but, no. but you know how that works, no. right? But yes. I did. Every, I did. Everyone arguing about the king. And did, do, do gods care about who the king is? I, I don't know. Man. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what happened with him? <laughs> um, all I'm saying is that, like, <clears throat> for me, I checked out that dude. Spike, yeah. just as much as I check out any good spike. I do the same thing for anybody I see. And yeah. I I guess I'm not necessarily distinguishing. I'm not, like, um, categorizing. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, I can appreciate all of them. And I understand that, like, you have obviously have the passion because I can hear it in your voice about, you know, what your niche is. And that's completely yeah. fine. And it's fucking necessary. Like I said, everyone needs to have a fucking place. Everyone needs to have a part. Um that they do for the dinner to happen, right? To yeah. sit at the table, fucking clean the forks, uh, you're serving the champagne, like whatever it is, you know what I mean? Um, but I really try to, <clears throat> when that happens to me, or if I have that feeling, I take, try to take a step back and be like, okay, you're necessary, you're necessary, you're necessary. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, And I really like, we're all here for the same fucking reason. We all love these bikes. We're all fucking riding and that's it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So I can't, I can't really like, uh, no, no, I get what you're saying because w- what it looks like or what it sounds like if you just if you just listen to this podcast, you don't come to the events that we we host, then you probably think I'm a Nazi, like the, it's this or fuck off, and it's not. But when it comes to the 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 classification of things, blah blah blah, this that and the other, like I'm trying to keep things pure. <laughs> it's a Nazi, right? <laughs> I just feel like we just need to keep everything pure. Right. We don't need people coming in we don't like. Oh my god! You know, yeah, yeah. Keep Either it's gotta Fuck look this me. way. We don't or want it's not okay. Tainted. Yeah. No, I, I just. But I'm not a Nazi. Just throwing that out there. Yeah. Jace is also working on his quads with all that back stepping, back yeah. pedaling. <laughs> oh yeah, my question, Jace. Okay, go ahead, because I didn't fuck my whole point up. Yeah. <laughs> um. Is Kyle's bike a performance bagger? Yeah, definitely. So it doesn't have to be a Harley. No, I I think that uh, you know here's the deal with mm, okay okay because he put T bars on an Indian. Does that make no it a no? So I I or think is it the that, paint job. I think it's no. I, it, the paint really doesn't matter because most performance baggers aren't painted. You know what I mean? Um, I I look at like uh, I, I don't I don't think this is widely accepted. That's why I don't push it that much. But I look at like the I look at that as that's a performance bagger. I would look at any bike that is literally a bag, you know, has a no, has bags and touring is a performance bagger. But I think that like what it boils down to is how they set it up. Does it have the vibe, the style of of that setup, that performance bagger style? And if it does, then I'm I'm willing to I'm willing to call it what it, what it is, you know. But you know, you know, Kyle, what he's been doing with the Indians, like you know. I love the feud that we have, but people, I think most people know that we're fucking with each other, right? Like, I'm not a huge fan of the Indian, but his bike's badass. The Barnstorm one is badass. I think it's cool. I think it's cool that the new bike's coming on and, and these guys are um, being innovative to it. That's what I dig about. I dig about the fact that, like, I guess those are the only two I've seen, and you have no one else's to go off of. It's not Mind like- you. They're the two that bought the bikes, and the bikes that got given to people were fucking jokes. Yeah. Uh, not the people that got them. The bikes that got built that were given away are like joke ass. I'm but, not, if I say it, then it fucking incriminates me. But, but I, I just I scroll did, back I dig on the Instagram. fact that neither one of those guys had like a formula that they could just follow. Because I mean, as you know, like building a bike isn't the hardest thing. Like to build a real, a, a nice bike. Okay. Yeah. To build like, you know, a super nice one. Maybe yeah, you got to do some innovative stuff, you know, to really yeah. get s- noticed in today's day. But for them, like they had nothing to go off. Of. Yeah, it's like no, you're starting. Nothing. Okay. How, you know, you got no paint. Like when they're painting sure. it, like, you know, okay, well, how would somebody else do this line? Like, I'm sure that's probably how you, oh, you yeah, might definitely. look at it. You know, it's nothing, you know, it's like you, everything you got to come up with on your own. Yeah. I I'm and hoping going back to the forums, like, you could you could search any forum, you know, yeah. at least back in the day. And now it's like Instagram or Facebook, and just say, "Hey, what's the recipe for um, let's see, uh, performance bagger?" And you open it up, and okay, T bars, okay, order that, and then oh, what cam is the best to run? Okay, order that. But I will say that like the Indian dudes, like that's a new platform. They're fucking like 
They're yeah. innovating. Innovating. Yeah, so it's a I, bold move. And I'm not and I'm not super keen on like or um, up to date on all the bagger racing league. I do think it's fucking cool for the sport. I do think it's cool for the community. The biggest thing that I think is cool is that Harley Davidson and Indian are, are back at it. Are back at it. Yeah, and they're actually supporting it. Yeah. Instead of being like, oh, what are you guys doing? Oh, that's cool. Can we uh, put up some banners over there? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, they actually yeah. have a fucking factory a team. team. Yeah. Like, coming from, like I said, BMX, motocross, you know, like, all that shit. They were factory race teams. And that's how you fucking support the actual scene. Mm-hmm. Support. You know what I mean? Like, actually be there. You know, like if you look at if you look at NASCAR, like there's fucking Chevy all over. Like, you know what I mean? Like those things aren't even really Chevys. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It doesn't They're look tubes. like a, Yeah. Oh, what car is that? Oh, well, it, it says fucking Chevy. Lumino it's an Impala, you know, like, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it, it's like it's the support in whatever your scene is. You yeah. know what I mean? So um, I will say that, like, I, I really appreciate the, you know, all the work that's going into the whole. Um, I think it's V Twin Race League, or yeah, is it it's just Bagger. Because no, I know well, no, it's, it's V Twin Bikes. Yeah. So there's well, the Dyna problem and FXR as well too, right? So the BRL, which is the back, the, dude. There's you want to talk about a soap opera? Okay, like that would be a great one. But yeah. but the Bagger Racing League is is separate from the Moto America King of the Baggers. Okay, right? Okay. King of the Baggers is just Baggers to my knowledge, okay. but BRL is kind of like uh, Baggers. Hooligan, uh-huh. every everything under the sun. Like there's a class for just about everything, and um, like I know the FXR dudes that have been racing, and like there's some in Japan, there's some, uh, you know, in the states here that they're yeah. f- they're fucking getting yeah, it, dude. In Japan with the I can't wait to see. Speed? Yeah, yeah, Joy Speed, yeah, Joy Speed, yeah. That's and true. so I was listening to your guys's podcast. I can't remember Tony Shreds, maybe you yeah. guys are talking about the primary, like. I completely understand the where it comes into play, right? Yeah. Where it, it actually hits. How, and maybe this is just me fucking a couple beers in, but how hard would it be to literally shift over the drivetrain, keep it in line? Maybe even an inch would gain you three inches fucking lean angle. You probably wouldn't need to turn it, even move it that much. You know what I honestly think they could do to fix that? Is to raise the transmission. And just build a whole new primary with a higher transmission. That way, the actual clutch is higher on the bike. So, like, yeah. think about think about an FXR, right? So you got the in the transmission sits. Or that, that's what they used to do with yeah. choppers back in the day. Yeah. Is raise yeah. the transmission. Yeah. So, I mean, so yeah, I think the the tranny, the motor sits on the tranny, right? On the FXR, right? Yeah. So let's just say in a bagger. So on the newer twin cams and the M8s, they it's like four bolts that it. it marries together yep but other than oil other than oil passages like you could literally build a plate and raise the Offset transmission it. the the hardest part i mean i can't do swing it. arm right I, yeah, yeah. no no, no i, I, I is, think yeah. i think you know i'll stay down there i think that the, i can't do it but the thing is that like you're talking about building raising transmission probably building a new transmission case mm-hmm. taking the primary and making a whole new inner and outer setup that way it's going up yeah and then down and I, I think that it can be done that way. It can all be worked out, but it's the same thing. Like more better people than us. Yeah. No. So sure. what, what, yeah, the, I'm, what the I'm argument is? I'm just thinking. Like I remember listening to the podcast, thinking to myself, "What is a solution for that?" You know yeah. what I mean? Like, and I heard, you know, like you're gonna run out of tire before you hit that. And dude, I would love to fucking race. I'd love to, you know, at least learn how to, you know, race. Yeah. Open primary is. I, I actually yeah. like I mentioned it on something like that. Yeah. But you know that that's the point. But another, I was talking with uh, the guys that own Mad Monkey Motorsports, and they just raced in the recent race mm-hmm. uh, this past weekend for uh, Moto America. And he said, "You know what, man? <laughs> we showed up to a fucking like he's like we brought a fucking street bike to a goddamn drag race, dude. Like these dudes out here. He's talking about like the S and S bike, uh, the the Harley, Indian backed S and S backed, you know, Rolling Sands, the Harley bike." These dudes came out fucking swinging with hundred thousand dollar bikes, right? And these dudes are like, you know, not talking. This isn't a shit talk. It's just yeah, like yeah, no. these dudes showed up with a bike that they fucking rode on the street, and I think they came in last place. But the thing is, like, man, like he said that when we were coming around the track, like there's dudes, mind you, it's fucking Georgia. I think there's like dudes like holding a beer, like fuck yeah, like rooting the guys that are just like them. 
You yeah. know what I mean? And so I think that what's going to happen with this bag of racing and all this racing shit is that you have these teams that are going to make us make it so hyper competitive that I'm I'm down for. I'm stoked to see, but at the end of the day, like we all we're, we up, all have brands, right? We all have the normal, these normal we all have these brands that like, a, dude, if my machinist is out there ripping on the track, like fuck yeah, Justin's out there, like like it becomes that's your team, that's who you're rooting for. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and I feel like there, I mean, in any sport, there's levels to it, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, and like obviously, like motocross. If you look at motocross, just because it's also a motorcycle, you know, factory based. Mm-hmm. Um, you have, you know, the what are known as like no name guys, right? The yeah. B level guys that are trying to, you know, they're qualifying, trying to qualify for the main event. You know, like you have the last chance qualifier and all that yeah, stuff. And yeah. then, you know, when one of those guys who doesn't have a full factory race sponsor, you know, like makes it to the final, then you're rooting for him. You're like, yeah. fuck yeah. Like, I mean, granted, at a motocross race, you're fucking drunk. You know, like you're drinking <laughs> beers. You're like, yeah, I'm this fucking guy, let's go, dude. You know, like, but it's something to be said for like the underdog. You know what I mean? Like you want to yeah. root for the underdog. And um, I really feel like, I mean, I think it's, like I said, it's great that they're doing factory stuff too, but all these other guys, they should fucking go it's hard at it It's fucking dope, man. That, that's know? the only reason why I'm like super stoked about going to the Salt Lake deal and seeing that race is like, man, I just want to see fucking, I just want to see racing, dude. Like, yeah. Isn't it funny how like we, we got these, or at least I say we, like baggers, right? Big right. fucking heavy bikes. And it's like, when has racing ever been this exciting, in my opinion? Like, yeah. Like seeing these huge bikes that aren't supposed to do this go around a track and just bring crowds to t- it's almost like these all these bikes that are built to race, they they get so perfected that like the differences are, are we're not accustomed to the understanding why this is better than that because they're so minute. Mm-hmm. It's a second difference here and there when we see these baggers and we're like, fuck, man, like that looks badass. Like one thing that, yeah, one thing that I will say is kind of, it, at least from this um, angle of not being, you know, super proficient in all the bikes and specifications yeah, yeah. and stuff. <clears throat> but if you look at any other type of racing, they're all, they all look pretty much exactly the same. Yeah. They all have, you know, certain specs that they have to follow. They all, you know, X amount of travel, X amount of, you know, CCs. X amount, like they're all essentially the same motorcycle. So it just you, comes you down know to that the racing. you know that a lot of that has di- dictated why certain bikes are built from like Suzuki's and Kawasaki's. Oh, yeah. They come from the factory with certain products yep. that in the Harley world we would kill for, yep. but they do that so that factory racing is possible because it has to be factory. Yep, exactly. you know what I mean. In some aspects. Yep. And so what I think is going to hopefully happen is if the sport here's the deal: the sport's going to grow, and eventually it will come to what you're saying, like mm-hmm. where you can't distinguish the difference between these things because they're so, like, fine-tuned. Yep. But the next five years, if this thing sticks, we're going to see bikes coming from Harley with with performance and with technology that we've been wishing for, yeah. to be honest with you. And uh, I think it's going to make it pretty fucking interesting. With yeah. a big price tag, though. Uh, mm. Maybe. They're already a big price tag, but fuck, yeah. man. I think you can find these things for eight years now. Tight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sign me up. Thirty year note on this Harley? Fuck yeah. Yeah. Hundred and fifty a month. Love Tell it. me you wouldn't yeah. do it. What's the dude the dude that got uh second place on the Screaming Eagle? He had a one thirty one R in his Yeah. In well the thing life. is about the uh you know, I, I I don't know this is off the FXR topic, but no, that's okay. um everybody was like <laughs> I say everybody. Uh, Facebook groups where I'm scrolling down looking for my grandmother's post, you know, because right. that's the only reason I get on Facebook. Um, they're like, so you mean to tell me these stock Indian motors just beat the 131 in ha- in Harleys? I'm like, dude, they're not fucking, they're far from stock. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're water-cooled motors, so you can make a lot more power with those things, higher revving motors. Mm-hmm. Um, and apparently some of these, buy- some the two Indians have like hundreds of thousands of dollars in them you know what i mean don't get me wrong like i love it like i'm i'm not saying yeah the competitive sport is i mean that's what it is i mean i beat an indian yeah (laughs) (laughs) i did i raced uh instead of kyle at the camp out and uh, i did beat him okay 
But, you know, I just want to make sure everybody knows that. Yeah. For the They're record. got bass motors, right? Yeah, my shit stuck. It came no. from Harley that way. Yeah. Factory. You didn't you didn't buy it after you didn't buy it from Harley special? I did buy it from Harley. Yeah. Um I mean, it's the one that Mike. came in your bike? Mike, what's the plan for the I mean, LR? What are you what are you getting at, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> what's the plan for the LR, Mike? My plan for the LR? Yeah. A lot of stuff. I mean For the record, Mike has a um a ninety four? Ninety four. Ninety four FXLR. That um, he bought semi customized probably what two years ago, mm-hmm. yeah. year and a half ago. It was um, done up like early, the, late nineties, maybe yeah. early two thousands. Sat in 90s. a warehouse. Most Fucking of the sexy year. bike though. Like the I think you made a post a couple of days ago about it. Yeah, and uh, it's one of those bikes that like when it when you brought it out and started posting it, like you could see the trend changing towards that that chrome. And black, you know, yeah. just the flame. I mean, Mike's yeah. always been a flame guy, but just that whole thing, it just, right. I can see the trend moving towards that style of bike. To the yeah. point where I saw a couple other bikes, I'm like, which one came first? Right, right. <laughs> you know I mean? Oh, Will's definitely came. Yeah, Will's, 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 Will's yeah. would influence me for sure. And then Damien's was first too. Okay. Which yeah. I kind of tried to combine, like yeah. you're talking about taking from different people. Right. Will's bike, when he finished his Mm -hmm. like i remember i saw when i first met him he had the rc comps on it yeah but it was like all black this was like six maybe seven years ago that's when i first met him when i first got my first fxr he had a shop out here and i remember thinking i was like the fuck are these stupid ass billet wheels and stuff i was like i thought it i was like this is dumb but i was like will's cool so i was like whatever you know and i thought it was super dumb but then he rebuilt the entire bike and I had grown. I guess I learned more. You know, Will, he bought that bike brand new when he was 16 years old. It's all in the book, by the way. The yeah, his story is in there. Yeah, his story is in there. It's a fucking amazing It's story. probably the best part of it. But, and I don't know, maybe it's, I'm biased because I know Shout him. Shout out to Will. I, fe- I, Will I felt like that was the best part. But, yeah, and so I didn't quite understand that, but I was new to FXRs, and he had been in it. And like I said, he's a cool dude. So I was like, whatever. I don't care. Like, I didn't know anything about FXRs anyway. I just thought the wheels were silly. I like 90 wheels. But then he redid it all and everything. I grew. I learned to appreciate different things. And he he finished that one. It just, it blew my mind when I saw his bike. Yeah. And then when I went to the West Coast Jam, I saw Damien's. And then his blew my mind. And I didn't know who he was. He's on Instagram and stuff, but I didn't follow him or anything. So I'd never seen it. And then, so that, as soon as I left the West Coast Jam, I was just like, I got to build a bike with, like, both of these in my head. I'm like, this kind of direction here. Mm-hmm. And that one popped up with the paint already and the wheels. And I was like, all right, well, that's all I cared about. I was like, it had, I love blue and purple, and I love flames. So I was like, I- I'm there on that. And then Will got me sold on those RC comps. And the rest was just making parts, collecting parts, trying to make more than collecting. Like, there's definitely a few parts I collected, but... Like, on the redo, I'm trying to make even more. Just a lot of little things, like, like I made the kickstand on that one. Just a lot of little things that I guess don't show up so much in pictures, like turning yeah. down the lowers and stuff, putting grooves in them. Just trying to do, like, that, I mean, I saw, like, you know, they used to do that in the 90s. I came across in different magazines and stuff, different bike, people doing that on their bikes. So I didn't come up with that. But just trying to implement different things in it's just it's fun collecting parts and i get that like i i dig that too but i like to try and put like a little bit of your own style on it too like you're talking yeah. about my machine is just he does that all the time he makes a lot of he's one of the few guys i can just think of off the top of my head who in whether it's fxrs or baggers who really puts his own thing like he's making yeah, parts you know into it, yeah mm-hmm. and that's what i dig like when i see a bike like it's cool okay yeah it's got it's full of all these hard to find parts that's cool but I really nerd out. There's two things I nerd out on is like just custom parts, like things like you made yourself. Mm-hmm. What you know, it could be little things like I've seen on Moose's bikes, just little things yeah. to hold the oil lines in place. Like I'm like, dude, that's cool. Like you can't buy that. Like and it, you spend all this time to make just a little part that's gonna hold your holder. oil line in place. Yeah. You know, and that's really cool to me. And then just super sanitary bikes. Or that that was like Will's bike and Damien's even yeah. to where like everything is very well thought out. So that's what I was trying to go with that. Like, that was kind of like a, 
it wasn't a full frame up build because they didn't take it apart. So there's a few things I wasn't super stoked on, but we'll see uh, on this next one. This one's gonna yeah. be a lot further along. Like Gary's painting it. He's got the paint right now. Mm. I got some stuff about to go to Chrome. I still got to make a handful of parts, but I don't know. Trying to step it up. It's going to be in the same style as that one, but trying to step it up to another, mm. just the next ring up, you know? We got a good opportunity to redo that bike. I mean, I, I say good opportunity, but it came out of, you know, shitty opportunity or shitty yeah. situation. Well, it would have been a lot easier yeah. if in the usual method of my experience, most of the experience, you wreck a bike easy to rebuild because you get a fat payout from the insurance company, which I got the opposite of a fat payout from the insurance mm -hmm. company. So, you know, but that that's said and done is what hey, it why is. You tell so, Gary to do my podcast for me. Who? I don't think he will. I know Gary. he won't. <laughs> yeah. Other side, Gary. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he will. Yeah. Just, just, just my guess. <laughs> he but should try. I'll tell him. <laughs> yeah. Tell I him. No problem telling him. Yeah. Well, see, that dude's always working. Every time I've been to his shop is like the middle of a day on a Sunday. He's like, yeah, man, just swing by a day. I'm like, it's like 2 o'clock on Sunday, dude. He's like, yeah, I'm working. Yeah, he's, I'm like, <laughs> his work ethic is, uh, I'm is like, very You inspiring. ever not working? Yeah. <laughs> but no, like, um, you know what's crazy? Is like, uh, so I'm, I am I was born in 82, so I bought all the 82 FX or uh, Easy Rider magazines. Yeah. And so there's 82 FXR ads in those things. Yeah. It's like super synth wave. You know what synth wave is? Like it's like that Tron style yeah, yeah. advertising. Fucking cloud and like yeah. it only shows you just the peak of like the. There's a bunch. Every, every every mag every uh every you know of the twelve magazines I got. Everyone has like an FXR ad in it. Yeah. In the in the back cover or something like that. Yep. It's pretty awesome. Which is which is really cool, um, especially because back then they're trying to push a new. A new yeah. platform completely, yeah. right? And with them being, with FXR as being not necessarily cookie cutter or yeah. what the community or FXR or. Uh, Which sorry, was the first Harley. bike with the uh, the Evo? Was it a bagger? It was Tour Glide? The 83 came, or 84, sorry, came, it was in both rubber mounted platforms the, the bagger and the um, FXR. Okay. And then the soft tail came later. Soft tail came, well. yeah, 80, 85. Sorry, I've been drinking. I, I, 80, 83 in the FXR as well. Yeah. What? Evos? Oh, no, don't start with that bullshit. You got your numbers. I haven't seen proof. I mean, yeah, no, I, I've seen the numbers. We've seen, we seen the fucking guys on Facebook say, hey. I've seen one, but they can't ever back it up. No. They said there was like 30 of them. They were test FX oh, ours. that one, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm going to no, go, I'm gonna go are, to the bathroom now. Don't start, <laughs> don't start <laughs> off on that Guy, bullshit. Dude. You'll have everyone talking about, I've got an 83 FXR, and you ask them to post the VINs, and they don't uh, fucking match, because yeah. that's always what happens. Well, well, it was only fucking however many made, 35 but, made or whatever. Well, I mean, that would make it a rare FXR if you can get your hands Absolutely. on it. Absolutely. Yeah. But, but everyone with an, an Evo in an 83 swears it's an 83 FXR with an Evo, and but the VINs never match. Oh, okay. And that's I'm like, that doesn't matter. Like, that's just because you bought it that way doesn't mean it's one of those. And that is true. And I've seen that until, too many times. Until the... Yeah, find one. Okay, I will. It's my mission. Well... We do got to start wrapping this up because we are fucking three and balls and deep. All right. Was, it, was there anything Three and a half hours. You but you know what? I, would, I do want to say, like, have you? So yeah. in, in people are going to be able to go to get this windshield on, like, uh, do you have a website yet? I, I do, but it's um, – I'm not really using it for sales. I'm still doing stuff through DMs. Yeah. So um, I just got another shipment of um, tall and short – Clear and dark um, shields, and so I'll probably put that up. Have you thought about trying to? Uh, I, I, you know, I'm just drinking and talking here, but have you reached out to Ness about like setting up a deal to sell the fairing and the thing together? No, I haven't. Um, I did. That's a, a great idea. I have thought of it, but um, yeah, I don't. I, I'm not sure. Like, I'm. I'm still, dude. I haven't had a business before. Yeah. The business is just like legit accidentally started this yeah. week. Yeah. Everyone's like, trying to break into 
selling motorcycle stuff. You know, everyone's I, trying, coming up with all these things, and Nick accidentally fell into having yeah, a motorcycle well, business. Being yeah. a trusted brand is very important these days, man. Yeah, and so. um, and so I'm still working out like business models. I, mm. I really don't even like calling it a business because I'm not here to like get rich or j- die trying, mm. like Fifty Cent. Okay, <laughs> but um, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. But yeah, I feel you. I know this I'm guy a big Fifty Cent. Yeah. <laughs> he just moved to Texas, by the way. Yeah, Houston. did he? Yeah, Houston. Yeah, yeah. everyone's coming. Okay, okay. he should come we down. Got here. Everyone, man. Yeah, so you can be cocky. Everyone's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Might not come for me, but you'll come for Fifty, right? No. <laughs> um. I think but, Joe's coming too. All right, um, but um, anyways, I I'm still working it out. So um, as for right now, I'm the only one distributing this. Um, have had a couple guys reach out, um, uh, you know, distributors and stuff, saying that they want to distribute it. Um, and I don't know if I'm necessarily there yet. I still like having like having the contact of the guys like. DM me and say, hey, like, what do you think? Like, I'm running it at this, you know, whatever. Yeah. I, I just still like talking to the guys. The personal, know? like, yeah. yeah. I dig it, it. Right now, that's the same thing it is for me. But if, you know, we are working on our online store and all that shit, and eventually we'll be able to have people buy helmets, not painted ones, but just helmets. And uh, <coughs> not having that same, like, hey, man, what do you need? You know, that, that small dialogue before a transaction is made. You know, it, it, it is kind of a weird place because when you have that dialogue, then you feel like people are much more receptive to if there's an issue with something. Right. As opposed to if they just hit click and buy and there's a problem with it, then like, they're like, yeah. you know, like, hey, dude, like, what the fuck, man? I'm, like, right. I'm sorry, man. Like, I, you know, yep. what, what happened? <laughs> oh, you for know? me, I want like full, if you have an issue with anything that I either put out, a shirt, a fucking book, windshield, whatever, if you have an issue with it, Dude, let me know. I'll fucking make it right, man. Like, I I really, um, one thing that I really feel like has gone to the wayside these days is customer service. And, like, I worked in yeah. a grocery store for fucking eight years, and they pounded that shit into us. Um, and then since then, I've had numerous experiences, day-to-day shit. Hey, like, this is broken. Like, oh, yeah, it's broken? Go fuck off. Click. You know, like, it, it's like that. Like, people are like that. It is that. like that, yeah. And, um, for example, like, I just started this business. So I opened up a Chase business account. It's getting into the weeds a little bit. But the fucking worst experience ever. I fucking closed the account. They I, even, hey, um, we're trying to fix this for you. Would you like to take the survey at the end? Absolutely. I want to take the survey. I never fucking take a survey. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm fucking pissed. I want to take the survey. Um, okay, sir, um, let me transfer you. And I was like, don't forget, I want to take the survey. They fucking hang up on me. Yeah. And I'm like, you motherfucker. I'm not going to call you back and wait 40 minutes on fucking hold again, but know that fucking I'm going to go on the Fast Life podcast and fucking call Talk you shit, out. fuck Chase, <laughs> you know right? Yeah, yeah, fuck yeah, Chase. Chase is not a sponsor, right? Yeah, no, not yet. <laughs> Probably <laughs> not now. If they were a sponsor, <laughs> Chase would be like, whoa, edit that out, edit that out. <laughs> but I'm just saying, <laughs> mute. Um, but I'm just saying like customer service has gone to the wayside and I really feel like co- companies, the, the easiest thing that you could do is customer service. You're already putting out a product, like fucking stand by it, stand behind it and fucking believe in what you sell. Yeah. But cu- you know, the concept of customer service is like so many other aspects, like customer service is like me. Let, let's say that these are sold out. Totally. I reach out to you and go, Hey man, I, I want one of those books and yep. go, well, you explain. Yep. To someone that didn't listen to this podcast, doesn't sure. understand the story, I'm sorry, but we don't sell those anymore. He goes, what the fuck, man? Like, you sell a product, and you have a product, and I want it, and you don't make it anymore? Like, why? Well, the correction is that I sold a product. Exactly. I don't sell a product. I sold so, a product. This product is now sold out. Like, but, I, dude, I, I mean. But then that guy's like, you're not telling him what he wants to hear. And people think customer service is about compliance between a brand and a consumer. Totally. And customer service is about education between the two yep and sometimes that customer service might be hey i sold a product or i i sh- sent you a product that was subpar and now i need to fix it that's a one form of customer service and there is the other form where yeah no, you're out of your fucking I, mind and i completely agree <laughs> the entitlement like yeah i don't know if it's 
the new It's Burger generation. King. They generation fucked everybody up. Have yeah. it your way. Yeah. Calm the fuck down, Burger King. You don't even have good food. I agree. I Nobody agree. even talks about Burger King in the burger joint fucking game. Like, it's Whataburger, I guess, in and out if you're fucking from that side of the country. And then Better. take that motherfucker with you. Waterburger? Is that what it's called? What a burger. It's right, it's, it's if right you're from here, you call it Waterburger. It's right here. If I'll take try. you over there. I'll no, buy he, you he some went, food. He, he's had Waterburger. I know. I'm just fucking with him. It's the best. <laughs> you ain't had Waterburger. <laughs> hey, you want to have breakfast at In-N-Out tomorrow? <laughs> do oh, it. wait. Can you? We need a fucking shake and fries. We pregnant? Yeah, let's do it. Trapplebees? Trapplebees? No, nah, man, but, um, but uh, there I, is that, that fine line that, totally. you know. And I really try to, like, you know, the... I get asked fucking questions all the time. Random questions. Like, fucking, hey, man, you know the bolt size of this? Fuck, man, like... We'll sit on a diner. If I'm home, if I'm home, <laughs> if I'm home, yeah. and I have the fucking manual out, you know, like, I'll go fucking... If he's at the firehouse, I get a text. Go to, yeah. <laughs> go to the garage, open up a fucking manual, fucking look at it, yeah, and give you the answer. Or at least point you in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Fucking... DM Mike, you know, like, I don't know what to fucking tell you, <laughs> but at least I, like, I put forth the effort yeah. and really try to like put that best foot forward and try to, um, try to do the, <laughs> for eyes, <laughs> blue, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Trevor Marsh says, what's your favorite color? And for eyes, it's, it's dusty blue, right? It's brown. Cause that's my wife's. Hi, babe. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> it's, we ca- know. it's caca brown. Um, <laughs> no. um, but I try to put my best foot forward and yeah. try to um, help out because we didn't all start at knowing everything. You yeah. know what I mean? We didn't all start there. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're a fucking master, whatever. You didn't fucking start there. Mm-mm. You learn. You start at the bottom, and you had to ask someone questions, and someone was nice enough to fucking answer your questions. True, hundred percent. Shout out back to Will. He's answered a bunch of dumb questions for me. Yeah. That was my go-to. Like, this is too dumb for Facebook. I'm asking Will. <laughs> I'm, gonna I'm, I'm not DM. publicly asking yeah. this one. I'm going to text Will. I well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that, like, with the popularity of all these things, like, it becomes the, hey, man, what fairing, what bars, what this, what that. Yeah. The, the quick response. But it's the fact that, like, you know, I was fortunate because, like, you know, you know, meeting Mike, I was able to uh, – I was able to, you know, like have somebody to bounce ideas on and actually dirtbag cycles up in uh, in Martinez. Mm-hmm. When I first got into this shit, that was a dude that had already built twin cam FXRs, uh, done a bunch of dynas, and I'm like, hey, man, like, where did I get a fairing at? <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Yeah. What fairing? Like, I asked that question, but I was – I was established enough with, like, brands to or, or, or companies to you go, hey. someone to reach out to. Yeah. And – so if you don't have someone to reach out to, keep in mind that there's still guys right now that are like, oh, damn, that's a cool bike on some fucking influencers or a fucking explore page on Instagram. Yeah. And they're like, oh, what kind of bike is that? They reach out to that person like, oh, it's a fucking FXR or it's whatever. Yeah, it's FXR, dude. What's fr- what the fuck's fuck? wrong with you? But yeah. You don't know everything. I've been learning but that. Getting into new shit. You find yeah. out how little... You might know everything about your shit, and then you get into something new, and you're like, "Dude, I just hope I'm people one of fuck those it. people." I hope the the going community treats Mike the way he treats everybody else, <laughs> with kindness and respect. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. That's what I'm talking about, dude. If you knew the amount of questions I answer, it's a lot of questions, dude. It's a lot. I, said, I know. I know I said I've a asked lot a million dudes. questions. Man, ask yeah. ask Corey how in depth it goes. Sometimes I'm like, dude, like. I think this dude might be getting annoyed with my answer because I just don't stop. Like, oh well, l- l- let me go further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're probably like, okay, dude. I just wanted but to know wait, a simple question. There's oh, more. Wait, there's more. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, uh, so for right now, to get the windshield, they got to go to the FXR Bazaar and get accepted in. Yeah. You need to fucking DM have me. a yeah. You uh, have an invite only. Um, you could DM me. I could still yeah. get like if you're not and then the book or whatever. Um, uh, you're kind of fucked unless you're not, right? Yeah. So, okay. So for the books, if you commented on the original post for the fucking orange background, with um, you know stating that I was selling a book, mm-hmm. um, I'm gonna work through that first with pre-orders, and then after that, I'll put up another post. Hey, here's some extras, and then whoever is on that list, I'll fulfill those orders. So you need for for all of this, you need to be following FXR Bazaar <coughs> on Instagram. Um, Yes, or DM me. Like, yeah. I, I still get, you know, um, 
requests or what DM requests. The screening's just more for, like you said, the scamming and yeah. getting people like that. So if yeah. anyone, you know, he'll check the yep. non-friends messages, you know, that you get that little block up there that mm, you yep. kind of yeah. ignore. He checks them. Yep. So. And then um, in on if you're not on Instagram, on Facebook, um, I put up a post there. It's like an interest post, so I'll go through work through that. So does and the then, FXR Bazaar have an actual Facebook? Um, no, it's... Just Nick on the Kenzo. Alpha page and the Cali page. Um, Nick Kenzo. Yeah. Nick Kenzo. Yeah. Okay. And, um, but there is fxrbazaar.com. You can um, hit ask a question on there. Mm-hmm. Um, I do have some uh, products up, but it says coming soon because I haven't That's set cool. up the big cartel. Um, but all those emails um, get sent straight to me, and I respond to every single one of them. 100%. Okay. <laughs> dude, that's not just, easy. No, like, dude, dude, I just fucking ignored four fucking emails for helmet. <laughs> fucking He'll send like a screenshot right of something. He's got like 23 messages yeah, up dude. there. It's, yeah. Yeah. The great thing about the internet is the reach, but at the same time, it's like. It's the reach. That's the fucking worst thing, too. It's the worst, man. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm so stoked that people reach out for helmets, but when you tell. We can only do X amount of helmets a year. Mm-hmm. And so we can do about 40 to 50 maybe helmets, right? And you get, after I post a picture of a helmet, I'll get 40 helmets requested a day for like a week. It's yeah, like, it's a ton. So many people are getting told no. For sure. You know, or the it doesn't work out with yeah. finances or they're yeah. what they want. But it's like, fuck, man. That's where the customer service I was talking about. It's like, you can only do so much. I was like, man, yeah. like, you know, I'm trying to make this manageable. <laughs> you know, like, this is a, a handmade product. You know totally. what I mean? So, I get it, man. These books, man. I'm I'm stoked. I'm I'm proud of you. Yeah, thanks. You know, man. I, I really didn't appreciate it. You kind of dropped it on me on the last podcast we did, where you were like, "I'm writing a book." I'm like, "The fuck?" The fuck? You know, what? What? Yeah. <laughs> like, and then like to see it yeah, actually happen now. Yeah. Like, this is the way it comes to drop new shit. So you go from yeah. books to struts. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I'm saying it, I hope other companies are paying attention. This is where this is where you drop new products. Yeah. Oh yeah, for and, sure, man. I, I I thank you for bringing these things in yeah. and talking about it. And I truly it, appreciate like the podcast and everything because i mean especially with the video stuff like this it's fucking cool like Mm -hmm. i i tune in all the time um i used to listen all the time when i was driving because there wasn't a video but now when i'm stationary fucking chilling i'll put it on tv or whatever i appreciate it man Um, and i really wanted to bring the struts too obviously it didn't work out but um i'm stoked to be able to show these items off on your page too so well that's cool man i appreciate it like it's uh you know without you know even though like i've kind of transitioned is the word to like more performance bagger stuff right now. Like this podcast wouldn't be shit without the FXR community hands down. I mean, between Mike, Joe, uh, you know, fucking John Jessup, you, you know, so many FXR guys over the, over the last three and a half years have helped make this podcast what it is. And, uh, thank you guys. Yeah. You know, Honestly, no, we're, we're stoked for it too. Cause like, not you. <laughs> in, in, in reality, it all, fucking, it all helps the stoke, right? Yeah. So the stoke is something that, like, I know when I go to sleep, I'm still thinking about fucking motorcycles. You yeah. know, I'm still thinking about FXRs. I know when you go to sleep, you're like, hmm, what about that paint job? Or what if I did this on the next build or whatever? Like, we're all thinking about that shit. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> I'm into it. Um, we've all had to think about yeah, it a- yeah. at some point, you know what I mean? Or we've thought about it. Yeah. And, um, you know, I know on my drive to work, it's fucking early morning, and I'm like, okay, let's see what let's see what's going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you want to hear the latest, greatest fucking from the people that you look up to or inspire you or yeah. either, you know, even people that you don't like, those still those people still inspire you. you yeah, I mean? yeah, they Everyone, have something. Everyone's yeah. an example, right? If, if it's someone who you either want to be like or you don't want to be like, that's an example, right? So mm-hmm. you take the best and move forward, you know? Positive singing, positive mentality. Right, Mike? Positive Mike. I've been trying to get this guy. He's like, <laughs> He oh, changed his fucking Instagram name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, positive Mike. No, they keep posting up like a shitty day, and I'll be like, I'll spin it. Like, do some gymnastics and spin it into something positive. And be like, yeah. positive Mike. Yeah, positive Mike. Put on a real shirt. Not I think, uh, wh- what was it not too recently? Like, because I'm so used to calling you FXR Mike that I think I slipped up and called you FXR Mike one day. I was like, sorry, I misgendered Mike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did catch that. <laughs> that was pretty funny. That was good. I missed that one. Oh, yeah. really? You got to actually listen to my podcast. Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah. Dang. I get it. Um, You're too cool. Yeah. Um, 
And then let's see uh, jam shirts, West Coast yeah. jam shirts. I just, I just saw out. the. Uh, I thought I saw. I don't know if I saw your post, but I saw uh, Conrad's post okay. with the yeah. uh, the slot machine. Yeah. Yeah, it's badass. Yeah. yeah. Like the, the chicks thing, on like, there. I was like, you know what? There's fuck. It's at a fucking lodge casino. Like this is what I want. Send them, dude. I'm not an artist, right? Yeah. You know that. Um, okay. There's, You're there's an a, artiste. There's a there's a gift <laughs> with a fucking dolphin holding a paintbrush in its mouth and on an easel and I always send that. <laughs> <laughs> Do that again it's, for the camera. It's, it's the most used gift in our group yeah. chat. Yeah. It's come up at least a hundred times. Anyways, so um, I text or you know just scribbled up something and then sent it to Conrad and he fucking works his magic, dude. Um, anyways, those are for sale too. You don't have to go to the gym, and here's the reason why. I heard your your yeah, nationality. <laughs> Um, I heard your or your uh, rationality yeah. for you know going to the gym, but at the same time, like it costs money to get the artwork done. It does, and we've and we're figured it that out. Money real quick. To <laughs> print the shirts, yeah, and it still has an FX on the shirt. And if you want to support, I'm fucking more than happy. Well, having sold shirts at an event, having to bring them to the event, yeah, that's we're that actually fun either. That's so the biggest one. The way we ever. decided to do this shirt is uh, so we're gonna take off the four on the camp out, which is not a much, but that yeah. four and that way the people that showed up to the camp out and got a shirt will get the one that says the four. fast life camp out four mm-hmm. and then we're gonna do another run of them x amount of shirts and then after that'll be done yeah that'll just be the fast life camp out yeah and perfect. then until the next design which conrad will do again yeah for and next in reality year. it's all about making do with what you got like yeah. we're i mean i guess i'm a small business you're a small business right like Mm-hmm. We gotta support each other, you know. Yeah, like for sure. There's and you gotta make do with what you got. So like, for me, if I do shirts, I'll do maybe two different colorways, you know, like kind of stretch it out a little bit, mm-hmm. and you know, switch it up enough so that way the person that bought the first shirt wants to buy the second shirt, whatever. Space yep. it out. Um, but you know, it's all about supporting each other, you know. And if you're if you're not a small business and you want to support, fucking buy a shirt, buy you know whatever. Or, yeah, or help promote it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, or the other. So. so. Cool. I'm, uh, I'm on my third piss break. So. All right. Yeah. Thank you guys. Cool. Thank, Thank you for you. flying here, man. It yeah. really means a lot to me. I appreciate it. So. Not even here for 24 hours either. Yeah. That's fine. He leaves in tomorrow. Show afternoon. people. I hope. Yeah. I, he literally flew in for us. We came from the airport here. Go home, sleep, breakfast, leave. You gotta check out that caddy, dude. Yeah. Check out that back seat, boy. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go out tonight. <laughs> Where yeah, you gonna go? Halton City. Cruising dudes Friday night in fucking Texas, bro. We don't do any of that. It's a big I'll state. Be. Bye. All right. Bye. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thanks for coming out, man. Yeah, thank you, dude. Tell that dude there is no FXR5. <laughs> yeah, I know what the fuck he's talking about. Damn it, Zach.